In 2017, one of my good friends lived in Portland, Oregon. He was offered a job in Long Island, New York, and took it. He asked me to fly out so I could road trip with him across the country so he wouldn't be alone. Of course, I agreed and flew out from JFK to PDX. We have many stories from this road trip, but none stranger than what happened to us in Ohio. After a few days on the road, we had entered Ohio. I wish I remember exactly where this took place, but I honestly don't recall. All I know is that it was past Zanesville, heading east, where we had stayed the night before. My buddy was driving as I was reaching toward the ground, trying to grab my phone that I had dropped. He suddenly said, this old lady next to us keeps pointing at me. I think she wants me to pull over. I, always paranoid, said, F that dude, keep driving. But he pulled over. A black Escalade with plates from Alaska pulled in front of us. Out hopped a woman, no younger than 60, and said, I'm glad I got to you boys when I did. Your tires are smoking. It's important to note that we were towing his Camry with the U-Haul we were in. Side note, what happened in Zanesville was that we got stuck in the parking lot, couldn't back up, so we had to rehitch his car. We realized later he had left the emergency brakes on. Anyway, after she said this, we looked at each other, completely puzzled, and immediately at the tires. They were absolutely smoking, looking like they had bullet holes in them. This is where it gets strange. Not even a few seconds after we kneeled down to inspect the tires, she was gone. No goodbye, no sound of a car pulling off, just gone. The whole interaction from her getting out of the car to her vanishing couldn't have been more than 15 seconds in duration. I didn't have a doubt in my mind that she had literally vanished. My friend looked at me pale as a ghost, confirming exactly what I was thinking. I don't know for sure what would have happened if we hadn't stopped. I don't know if the car would have caught fire or anything else. But I do know that, real or not, to us she was an angel. I've tried to look into stories like this, but haven't had any luck finding anything. What do you think? I've had several experiences all around the same location within months of each other. The first one happened when I had just adopted my puppy. He was 11 weeks old and loved everyone. He would run up to anyone and everyone, tail wagging, the friendliest thing. One day, we were out on a walk in a large open cow field behind where I lived at the time. It was dusk, and there wasn't really anybody else around, except for this hiker in the distance walking toward us. My dog saw him and stopped in his tracks, got down low to the ground, and just started growling. The hiker was still too far away for me to even make out his face, but my puppy was freaking out. As he got closer, I started to become seriously unnerved. He was pacing toward us like a robot. That's the only way I can describe it. Or like the way military people walk. He was pale white and had these dead eyes that seemed not to see us at all. There was no acknowledgement of us whatsoever. He just did this robo speed walk straight in our direction. The dog was going crazy, growling, whining. I had never heard him make those sounds before. When the hiker walked past me, I just felt this sense of dread hit me in the gut. It felt like evil. It was the single most terrifying encounter I've ever had. As he passed us, his eyes didn't move. It was as if he didn't even see us, even though the dog was growling at him. He just power walked past us and continued on. It was strange too, the direction he was going in, because all there was that way was just a giant hill and it was getting dark. Anyway, as soon as he was past us, the dog and I just broke into a run as if we were both running for our lives. We ran all the way home. The next encounter happened in the same field. Again, I was walking the dog a couple of months after the first encounter. Again, I'm just reiterating the point that he is the friendliest dog ever, especially as a pup. All he wanted was to run up to every stranger for pets. 
So anyway, we're in this field and there's a load of hikers with backpacks, all stopped and checking their maps. Puppy is checking them out, tail wagging, when he zeroes in on this one hiker lady who's standing still, just observing a tree. He dropped to the ground, started growling and whining, just like last time. And like last time, she didn't acknowledge us. She just stared at this tree with her dead eyes, and again, she was super pale. When I caught a glimpse of her face properly, I felt the same sense of dread that I did the last time. She looked fairly normal, except that she had almost no nose. I know this sounds kind of insane, but she had slits. Like somebody who's done too much coke and had their nose fall off, or like Voldemort. I don't think the dog could have been growling at her appearance, though, because her back was turned to us when the growling began. The third one freaked me out the most. A friend and I were just leaving my house to walk the dog, again, when we realized that we'd forgotten something inside. Where I live, there's no car access, and it's considered the safest area ever, so the dog is usually free to roam outside, saying hello to people on the path, and so on. We left him outside for a second while we went back in, and when I came out, there was a man in a business suit, standing completely still, staring at my dog, and my dog was staring back at him. Not growling this time, just very still. It was so weird. He wasn't looking at the dog like he was afraid of it, more like he'd never seen one before. It was a look of curiosity, as though he was genuinely intrigued by my dog. Also, the fact that he was wearing a suit was freaking weird, because I lived on a boat on the river. It's muddy and there are cows and dogs and stuff all over. It was just such a strange outfit to see somebody in that location wearing. Almost as if somebody was trying to play human and got it a bit wrong. Anyway, so this stare-off went on for a good minute or so, while my friend and I just kind of observed from the doorway. Then he walked on, past a gate, and into the field where the other two encounters occurred. We followed behind him because we happened to be going in the same direction. We followed him through the gate, into the field, and watched him veer off to follow a path to our left, toward the hill that the first hiker was marching toward. We continued on straight with the dog, heading for the pub on the other side of the field. You can tell I'm from England, right? When I realized that I had forgotten my purse. I turned around to go back, but now the suit guy was back at the gate that we'd all just come through. He was just standing there, staring at the gate, occasionally lifting the latch on it, as though he was inspecting it. It was super weird and creepy. I mean, what was he doing? He was just walking away and then turned around and came back to what, check the gate mechanism? I decided not to go back for my purse because honestly, I didn't want to have to walk past him again. The fourth experience happened in the same field another couple of months after that, on a dog walk, yet again. My boyfriend was with me, but he told me to go ahead into the field while he finished getting ready and that he would meet me there. So the pup and I went out into the field and immediately spotted a hiker, robo power walking toward us, as if he'd just come down from that hill. It wasn't the same guy as before, but it was the same kind of unsettling energy. I felt it in my gut. It was just unease and wrong. And he was walking the exact same way. I pretended to chase my dog in the opposite direction and waited for him to pass through the gate before I got back onto the path. I watched him walk through it and disappear past the gate and down the path. Puppy and I carried on walking when about two minutes later, I felt like I needed to turn around. So I did. And there he was again, power walking toward us with those dead eyes. I literally felt my blood run cold. I've never been so terrified. He was going so fast and with such intensity that the dog and I just started running out of instinct. I fumbled for my phone and tried to call my boyfriend, who didn't answer, and I veered off the path, cutting through the long grass and circling back to the gate in a giant arc. Creepy alien dude continues power walking up the path he'd just come down, as if he's going back up the hill. Sweating and out of breath, I spotted my boyfriend finally walking up to join us. I ran up to him babbling about the weirdo hiker with the bad energy. He says, where? And as I turn to point him out, we both realize that he's now power walking backwards, 
with his eyes locked on us, still heading back up the hill, but backwards so that he could face us. We were both seriously freaked out. These all happened in the summer. Come autumn, I was living alone on the boat with the dog while my boyfriend was away for work. One night at around midnight, the dog and I were walking home from a pub quiz. It's always super dark on these country paths, and my phone had died, so I had no light. I was literally crashing into hedges and trees, trying to basically feel my way home by moonlight. And the moon and stars were super, super bright that night. Anyway, to get to my boat, I have to cross over the river on a bridge. As I'm walking over this bridge, I was looking up at the stars, since they were the only source of light. I ended up observing what I thought was a plane because it was moving steadily in my direction over that hill in that field where everything happened. As I'm watching it, it seemed to suddenly look at me. I don't really know how to describe that. It's as if it suddenly realized that it was being observed, and I felt us connect. And it shot off to the left super fast and just blinked out of existence. Obviously, in my mind, that's a UFO, and it's hovering over the hill where all the creepy alien crap kept happening. So now, I was terrified. I ran all the way home, crashing into bushes like a crazy person because I couldn't see. I locked the door and hid under the covers like a kid. A month or so after that, Pup woke me up at like 4 a.m. because he had to pee. Half asleep, I went to open the door for him to let him outside. I want to just paint a picture so you understand how weird this is. I live on a boat on the river. Where my boat was moored was the middle of the countryside. There are no lights on at night. Not much light pollution at all. No street lights. It's pitch dark apart from the lights of the stars and the moon. So when I stuck my head out of the boat to call the dog back, I found myself blinded by a white light. So of course I was very confused. I looked up at the sky and I couldn't even open my eyes fully because it was so bright. It was like this giant white mass really low in the sky. So low and bright that I couldn't see anything else if I looked up. The dog came running back in and I slammed the door shut, locked it, and went back to sleep. It was almost like a you didn't see anything moment. I didn't even think anything of it at the time. But looking back, it makes no sense. I even went back to the spot recently to make sure that there were no other lights that I might have missed, like a new lamp post or something. But there's nothing. Anyway, I don't know what all of these encounters mean, but I moved back onto land and away from that hill and field, and they stopped happening. I actually walked up to the top of that hill one morning to check it out, and it's just a really pretty picnic spot. No alien headquarters that I could find. If anyone has any ideas, let me know. I have never really told anyone about this memory. It has stayed with me since it happened, somewhere close to a decade ago. I was probably nine. It was a completely normal day, and then I went to sleep. I woke up in the middle of the night, despite normally being a very heavy sleeper. I don't know why, but I immediately decided moving even an inch would be a terrible idea. So I stay still and shut my eyes. I don't know why I'm doing any of this, I just do. But then I feel something. You know how you can feel what's happening around you, even if you're not looking, as long as you're paying close enough attention? Imagine that feeling, but amplify it by about 400%. I could feel two presences in my room. Not near my door, no, but right next to my window, on the opposite side of the room. I kept my eyes shut tight, but it wouldn't have mattered because it was as dark as dark could be anyway. After remaining near my window for however long, I began to feel like they, whoever they were, knew that I was awake. Then they started moving over to me. 
I can see their exact path that they took through my room in my mind, based only on what I felt. Almost comparable to how you might imagine Tov could see an avatar. Adrenaline-fueled heightened senses, I suppose. They both stand right in front of my bed. I'm laying on my side, facing toward them. The one closer to my head bends down and gets near my face. I don't hear anything. I can only feel them. They stay like this for another short while while I'm internally panicking beyond belief, concentrating on keeping my mind in check so that I can stay alive. At that moment, I prayed to God that they would go away. And then, peace. They were gone. I have no idea what happened after that. I don't even remember waking up, despite this memory of the encounter and the peace that followed praying, all of which was extremely vivid. I had ruled it off as demons, as that falls in line with my beliefs, but after reading a few encounters, I don't know what to think. I wouldn't believe in aliens if not for this experience. Well, this one and the next ones. That same year, within about five months of this, I was taking out the trash, and once I got to the end of my driveway and dropped off the cans, we had a long driveway. I looked up to search for the two dippers, like I always do. I didn't expect to see five shapes in the air. One, which took up maybe a twelfth of the circumference of the sky, was composed of four bright lights, assembling what was perhaps a trapezoid-esque shape. It was emitting what appeared to be similar to a headlight on a car, except huge, of course. It was stationary, and revealed no stars behind it. To the right, there were two big, bright stationary lights. Seemed more like individual... ships? Much larger than stars. Between them was a moving assembly of three red lights forming a perfect triangle. Heading up, I guess. Almost looked like it was following the fifth entity, which I think was just one of our satellites. It was small, fast, and zipping on by. I would have thought the triangle could have been an airplane, of course, but it looked way too big for how it was moving, and how far away it appeared to be. I have seen this triangular ship two other times as well. Once I was even with other people, though it was too fast for anyone else to see it. We were in a moving car, and it went out of view. I have no explanation for these events. Only the vivid memories and assurance that I did not dream them. On top of these experiences, I also noticed another similarity between myself and people who claim to have been abducted. A strange fascination, almost obsession, with aliens when they were younger, which suddenly stopped, at least for a while. I've also felt that odd sensation that many others have expressed when certain things are shown or brought up. You begin shaking, quivering, tearing up. You don't know why, but you know you have to get away from what triggered it. Which, in my case, 100% every time, is anything related to aliens being shown or discussed in media. It doesn't happen every time aliens are brought up. But when it happens, that's why. Am I blowing this all out of proportion? Does anybody know what's going on? Please let me know because I feel kooky. I work a pretty easygoing office job, and I consistently listen to podcasts while I do my work. That being said, I've always had an interest in the paranormal and the unexplained, so that's typically what I listen to. I was listening to an interview by Astonishing Legends with Terry Lovelace about the things he encountered, and what he experienced from a camping trip in Devil's Den back in the 70s. To sum it up, he touched on what happened to him and a couple of things stood out to me. It reminded me of something that happened to me as a kid that I always chalked up to sleep paralysis. But now, it has me second-guessing myself. 
I must have been in about the third or fourth grade. At the time, we lived kind of on the edge of a bunch of farmland and woods. Our backyard opened up to our neighbors who owned acres upon acres of land, and to the left of that was just endless farmland and forest. We lived a few miles away from a really popular dairy farm, but we were also a mile or two out from the main road that leads into town. I guess the point I'm getting at here is that we were kind of secluded, but not totally isolated. The Midwest is like that at times, I guess. My room at the time was in the basement, and the stairs that led down to it was right in front of our back door. I slept with my bed right in front of my bedroom door as well. It was summer break, and after I finally decided that I was tired, I went to lay down in bed. My memories go in and out at this point, and there are still missing spots in between, because I think as soon as I laid down, I just blacked out. I remember I had just woke up, right after passing out, and I'm not sure how much time had passed between these two points in time. I immediately looked at the foot of my bed, and the door to my room is wide open. There's this blinding light outside my room. I remember seeing this figure right in the doorway to my room. I couldn't make out any distinct features because of the light coming from behind it, so it was backlit. All I got was a silhouette, an outline, and the shape of how it looked. It must have been not that much shorter than me, and I was a kid at the time, maybe around four feet. It had a huge bulbous head and a tiny body. In retrospect, it was shaped like a gray, but I don't know if that's too cliché to say. I just remember this utmost primal sense of fear, and I couldn't move. I've never experienced that level of horror before, and I haven't felt that feeling since. I was laying on my back in my bed, and all I could do was stare at it. I was trying to scream, but nothing could come out. I couldn't get up to run or anything. I was completely paralyzed to that spot. I blacked out again and came to again, and it was closer, right at the end of my bed. At that point, I tried screaming again, but still, nothing would come out. At that point, I blacked out again. I came to that morning, on the opposite side of my room, flopped across this little couch I had. It's hard to explain it, too, because there's nothing in between these points of time. It's just a blank spot. I tried to explain all of this to my mom, but she chalked it up as sleepwalking and a nightmare because I had stayed up too late. Something to that effect. For a while, I was completely horrified to watch any form of alien movie, or even just anything in TV that resembled that shape. I would have a full-blown panic attack and start to hyperventilate. I've gotten past that. It doesn't really get to me anymore. However, to this day, I cannot sleep with my bed in front of my door or with my door open. I don't even like sleeping near the door. I need to be as far away from it as possible. Even during the day, if I'm doing something in a room, the door has to be closed. Having it open just sends this massive feeling of discomfort and anxiety through me, and I can't do it. I've experienced weird things throughout my life, but this particular instance I eventually just chalked up to sleep paralysis. But now, I'm not so sure. Can anyone offer any insight? Or at least tell me I'm crazy? Or not? Trying to explain it or even think about it just makes me feel like I'm losing my mind. Last night, I had a really weird experience, but at least somehow, it has a positive ending. It was like 2.20 a.m. To be honest, nothing felt wrong until I opened my eyes. I was half asleep, but I could clearly see the typical gray alien head behind a chair that's close to my bed. Well, nearly all of its face. I couldn't move at all. 
In fact, I tried so hard to move that my right leg started to shake because of my effort. It looked kind of ghostly. It wasn't fully defined, and it was whitish, but the face was basically an alien. I couldn't see the body. The head, which was huge by the way, was at my bed's height, so it was probably crawling or something? I don't know. The moment I opened my eyes, I wanted to do something. Battle it, get rid of it, something. I used all of my strength to move. I could see this thing because I often sleep with my lamp on. If I turn it off, I start to imagine them all around me. I don't know why. Without that lamp, I never would have seen a thing. I simply could not move. My body would not respond. So I started to pray, saying, Jesus Christ protects me. Jesus Christ sets me free. Don't let it take me. All of a sudden it vanished and I could move. After that I stood awake for a while, but I didn't get out of my bed. I was too exhausted from trying to fight this thing. I just kept thinking about it and looking at the same spot while I was spooked out. I'm not even a Christian, nor do I practice any religion, but I do know that Jesus' name freed me from this thing. You could probably consider me an atheist, but what happened, happened. So I am open to the fact that spiritual things exist. From what I've read from a few reports on the internet, several people have been set free from abductions, alien encounters, and so on, praying to God. I really don't know what to think about that, but it happened to me too. Before this encounter, the last two days, there have been two full power cuts throughout the neighborhood, one each day. A short one during the first day around 11 a.m., and a fairly long one the other day at like 2 a.m. Has anybody else experienced anything like this? All I know is I hope to never experience it again. Something is wrong. I'm staying with some family in a very rural area. The closest stores are super far away. Hours, actually. We got here late Friday and we're leaving late Monday. Today, my cousin and brother happened to see a drone that was following them on the land that we have here. It's about 200 acres. Everyone was a little bit confused and didn't really like it because it's creepy, and an invasion of privacy on our private property, but we disregarded it, figuring that somebody on their land nearby was just bored and didn't realize they were on ours. It's now 2.25 a.m. on Monday, and my parents are together outside relaxing near the house on this swing chair thing, just listening to the nighttime sounds. I was inside with my grandparents in bed with my cousin and two siblings, when I got a sudden phone call. Seeing as it was 2 a.m., I was very confused and didn't think that anybody would be calling me right now. I grabbed my phone, realizing it was my mom, so I immediately answered, making sure everything was okay outside. There are plenty of weird insects, poisonous things, snakes, coyotes, wolves, things like that around here, and my mom gets scared very easily. She says in a concerned voice, Dad and I just saw something flash over our heads, really low down on us. We don't know what's happening. So I told my cousin and my brother and sister and everyone seemed pretty freaked out because that's very unusual. We all run out to the trees by our house and get to my parents, who are staring up at the sky and a bit far away, panicking. As everyone was outside staring around at the sky, we managed to point out multiple drones or something strange in the sky, flashing getting farther away and then closer. We saw one, then another, but then we saw up to five and some were disappearing. For a moment we thought, oh, stars, but why would my parents have something shining on them and why would they hear whirring sounds if it was just a star? 
We drove what we call a donkey. I don't know what it's actually called. It's a small vehicle like a golf cart, but not. Anyway, we drove that into the field that it was closest by. We shined a spotlight on where it was, right above the trees. It started coming towards us, and then I saw something weird by it that suddenly went fast towards it, then stopped and fell into the woods. So we started driving away and went back home. But then my dad drove over there with my cousin and siblings and my mom, and then my grandma came out on the porch. We were waiting for them to come back while they looked for drones in the sky themselves. I went inside because I was getting bugs all over me, and I hated that. I start hearing this weird noise from outside the house, and then I hear a yell. The dog started barking and howling. Then I heard my mom tell my grandma that she had just heard my sister scream, and that something's up with the cows that my grandparents own. After a bit, my family all came back, and they're all still outside, but my sister came in to explain what was up. With tears in her eyes and fear on her face, she said they went out there, and everything was absolutely fine. But then the cow has started acting weird. And then, she heard it. A loud woman, screaming. The UFO was getting closer, flashing green and red, so they drove really fast back to us. Everyone is so confused and freaked out. We have no idea what's happening. Why these things are watching us. Why there are so many. I'm interested to know what anybody else might think it is because I am definitely freaked out. My first sighting was when I was 10. It was a massive floating ship shaped like a huge manta ray. When I saw it, I felt like I had been on it for a while, but I shook off that feeling and ran home. The memory surfaces periodically. Sometimes I think I can remember what the inside of that ship looks like, and I remember not being alone there, but I have little idea who I was with. Much later, I saw a craft landing in the cow pasture at my parents' house in a rural country. I feel compelled to go inside the house, and it's like I forgot what I had seen. I lost a few hours of time that day. I always assumed I must have watched TV, but later I realized I literally have no memory of the next few hours. Later, I began seeing lights in the sky, and I would ask aloud, Are you here for me? The light would bob and weave up and down, left to right, or it would flash brighter for a moment. Again, I would go inside, and soon after, I would lose memory of what I was doing for the next few hours. This happens often, still to this day. I have a lot of theories, and sometimes I remember parts of conversations with people about my life, my personal feelings, my aspirations, good conversations about how I can improve my life, but I can't remember any faces of the people I talk to. I do benefit, though, as my life has steadily improved over the past 10 years, so I'm not fearful about the encounters. I'm aware that they are taking place. I just don't know if I'm ready to remember more yet. When I was around eight years old, around 1995, I went to visit a friend's house just up a path and through a courtyard from my house, about a minute away. On the courtyard is a set of flats which creates an archway that you have to walk through. As I walked back home and through the archway, I heard a low humming noise, and I looked over my shoulder to see a typical film-like shaped spacecraft. The round, disc-like shape with the dome on top and the circular lighting. The lights didn't shine as such as it was daytime, but I can now only explain them as looking like LED lights, which is why they were so noticeable in the day. The UFO is small, no bigger than about three feet and a foot and a half high. I think it's coming for me. 
At this point, I'm so scared I start running for home. I'm about 30 seconds away, but the corner to the path is coming up. I'm still trying to watch this thing chase me, and as I get to the corner, it's just behind me, and the low humming is deafening. I can feel it within me. I have to take my eyes off of it for a second to turn the corner, and as I do round the corner, the light, whether it was natural sunlight or the LED type lights, went really bright and sounded like a jet plane thundering overhead. I look up as I round the corner. It's above my head, so close that the wind it created whipped up my hair. And then, just as suddenly as it had appeared, it vanished. No visual sign of it, but I heard that jet plane noise and low humming noise move away from me. I get home and tell my mom and dad. They don't believe me and say I must have mistaken a bird. I told my friend the next day, and she rolled on the floor laughing. I stopped telling people after that, but I can still remember it like it was yesterday, and I still can't shake the feeling that it was coming for me, even though it was so small that there's no way I would have fit in it. I just can't explain the fear. I was six or so, I think it was 1998. My grandparents and I were heading to Southern California to see family. It was dark, but not late, so it had to be winter. I get car sick, so they drug me up, and when I wake up, I see a tall hill. On top of the hill, I see a saucer with a spotlight. It scares me, but I just go back to sleep from fear and Dramamine. Next time, it was 1999. I was playing on the computer, and I looked out the window at about 11 p.m. I see a craft above a house outside my apartment complex, spotlight on the roof. I watch it for a while and decide to go to bed just before the ball drops. In 2001, I got a stuffed cat for my birthday. I left it outside, and my mom got mad at me and told me to go get it. I go outside and look for it. I look up and across the street, and I see a huge ship. Two football fields across at least. Bright orange lights, flat back and round. I don't know why I keep seeing these things, and maybe I don't want to. About two years ago, my family and I were sound asleep at home in South Georgia. There was a bad storm passing through that night. Anyway, I wake up at about 2 a.m. to a really weird sound. The only way I can describe it is like the sound of the alien machines in War of the Worlds. I know it sounds ridiculous, but it was freaking terrifying. It was so loud that it shook the house. Also, at the same time that the noise sounded, the sky outside turned green. And I mean green. Such a bright green that it looked like daytime. I get up to investigate, basically to see if anybody else in my family had heard the noise or seen the light. When I walk out into the living room, my mom and brother are already standing there at the window, looking outside. They ask me if I had heard the noise and seen the sky. I said, heck yeah, that's why I'm up. We all stayed around the window, discussing what we thought it might be. Weird lightning, an electrical transformer malfunctioning, a nearby nuclear plant. About every two minutes, the sound would start and the sky would turn the bright green color. We were freaked out, but there was nothing we could do about it. So eventually, after we'd watched it several times, we decided to go back to bed. Expecting to be able to read about it or hear something about it on the news the next day, we decided the best we could do was just go to sleep. The next day, there were no reports on it. 
We asked neighbors, and nobody else had any idea what we were talking about. Obviously, it makes you feel crazy. Like, did I dream that? But it's something that my mom, my brother, and I all saw at the same time. We still wonder about it today. We couldn't have had some kind of collective dream, so I have no doubt that it really happened. But I have no clue as to what it could have been. My sister and I were sleeping one night, and I was woken up. I don't know by what. But I was able to wake my sister up as well. The room was dark, but I distinctly remember seeing two soldier-like decorated generals at the side of our beds, similar to drawings of Pleiadian aliens. Once I woke my sister up, a portal opened up on my side of the bed, along with a vessel. We both got into the vessel and noticed that it was on a track. My sister and I both woke up, remembering this experience, and we still do to this day. I can remember it all. She says she remembers them being extremely kind and saying things like, let's go have fun. Just really warm, inviting, and all the nice things. We went into this vessel, which was like a ride. I just remember it being like the Peter Pan ride, or It's a Small World. And then it was over, and I don't remember much more. I always used to look down at the ground in amusement park rides to know if they were real. I don't know why I did that, but I remember looking down at the ground, and it was so real and detailed. I can't remember much about the ride, but it was bright and vivid with flowers. I also live very close to NASA, for what it's worth. I've never had any more experiences like that afterward, but yeah, I thought I would see what you guys thought. I have two encounters. The first one happened roughly 10 years ago. My father, two brothers, and I were on our back porch in Georgia. We lived in the country and literally had no neighbors for two miles in any direction, so we were out there. We were looking at the stars on a clear night, and we noticed a very bright star. After looking at it for a few minutes, it shot across the sky, stopped, and shot straight up. Stopped again, and then shot to the right stopped one more time and then went up diagonally and disappeared. Every time it shot across the sky, it was moving a good five to six inches as far as we can see in the sky, so it was easily moving hundreds of miles. I don't know if it was aliens or the government testing something, but it was amazing. The second encounter was my father, brother, and I driving down the road near our house. This happened five years ago so about five years after the last encounter. It was nighttime, and again, we live in the middle of nowhere on backcountry roads. We saw in the mirrors, and by turning around, a red rectangular light heading down the road from behind us, heading our way. It was going slightly faster than us. It passed overhead, and it was completely silent. Obviously, we stopped at this point, and it continues on down the road. Once the road ended, it went above the tree line and literally shot away, at a very high rate of speed, into the sky. We never saw it again, and couldn't make out what was causing the light. There was just this rectangular looking light coming from it. It was also very large, much larger than the car, approximately the size of two school buses if they were welded together side by side. If you have any idea what this could have been, let me know. This happened to me back in 2013. I was 18 at the time. I was a healthy, normal woman by all accounts, and lived in a suburb of South Florida. 
Just at that juncture in my life, I was moving up north to UF, which is in Gainesville. Aside from the university, it's a very boring town, mostly nothing up there. I had noticed that before moving there and during my time there, once a month, always on the same night, I think the first Sunday of every month, I wouldn't be able to sleep. Without fail, I couldn't sleep. I would toss and turn all night. Sometimes after those nights, I would wake up with something strange on my body. Once on my lower spine, right on the spinal cord, I woke up with a large red bump, perfectly centered. It wasn't itchy like a bug bite, and it was unlike a pimple. Another time, I awoke with a scar across my lower abdomen. It was long and unlike a scratch. It was brown, like it had been cauterized. But it left my body within a day or two, like a scratch might have. On one such Sunday, my boyfriend happened to be spending the night. It was my parents' rule that he would sleep in a separate bedroom, but before he went off to his room, he laid next to me in my bed for a little while and we talked. He was saying something when, suddenly, he went quiet and looked behind him. I asked him what was the matter, but he shrugged it off. He went to his room and we both tried to sleep. However, like usual on these nights, I tossed and turned, unable to sleep. A feeling of dread prevented me from sleeping. I got restless and decided to go sleep in the room with my boyfriend, hoping that I might be able to relax with him there. But still I couldn't sleep. I would nearly doze off, only to awake in a fright, which was really uncharacteristic of me. I gave up and went back to my own room until I suddenly gave in and fell asleep. When I woke up the next morning, I told my boyfriend that I couldn't sleep all night and that I felt like something was coming to get me. He told me at that moment, the previous night when he suddenly fell silent mid-conversation, it was because he thought he saw something outside of my window. He said that for whatever reason, the first thing that came to his mind was aliens and that it froze him with fear. He also told me that shortly after I had returned to my own room in the middle of the night, he was disturbed by a loud static noise and felt vibrations in the air. After a few months, these routine, monthly sleepless nights stopped, and they never returned. I still don't know what it was all about, or if it was even anything at all. But that night put both of us on edge. It started when I was very young. To this day, my parents remember me always screaming in the night for them to come to me. The first encounter I can remember was when I was a kid. I remember getting ready for my first day of school. At the time, we were living on post at Fort Sam. I remember waking up at 5 a.m. to get dressed for school, and I heard this loud, strange humming noise coming from outside my window. When I opened the window, I saw this large silver UFO. I can remember this very vividly till this day. It was so large that it covered the whole window. The only thing I could see of it was the silver aluminum from the ship. It had white lights on top and these light blue lights at the underside of the ship. It freaked me out. I slammed my blinds shut and screamed for my dad. When he came in, I told him what I had seen. He laughed and opened the blinds and of course nothing was there. From that day on I had constant nightmares, nightmares that felt like real life. I could never understand anything they said, but they could understand me. I remember in one dream I would try and scream for help before they took me with them and I would be paralyzed and unable to scream for help. I wouldn't be able to get my parents attention when they took me. They would put me on this examination table and just look at me as they were studying me. They never did me harm, they just observed. I remember being in my early teens, still having these same dreams. I finally built up the courage to speak with them. I remember the first time I was 12. They took me as usual, but this time I just let them. I had a strange, calm feeling this time when they put me on the table. I asked them exactly what they were trying to do. 
The one alien told me they were trying to figure out how to make humans live forever. They then asked if I felt safe, and I told them that I did. I asked if they would mind showing me around their ship. I don't remember many details, but the ones I do remember is seeing other people, human beings, examined. One was undergoing surgery. They then took me to the command center, which had a lot of big monitors with strange writings. And underneath the floor, it was like glass so you could see through it. I was so amazed because I could see Earth, and it looked so beautiful. They could read my mind and tell that I was pleased, and I told them that they were free to let me come with them, as I wanted to learn more about them. For a while I would go back, and instead of being examined, they would just take me around the ship. I met a few different aliens, three to be exact. Their faces were slim, and they were bright green in color, very skinny and long arms and legs. They wore nothing, and they seemed to really grow on me. We started to develop a friendship of sorts. I was able to start understanding what they were telling me clearly, but it wasn't speech. It was telepathic communication, with me speaking out loud to them. One time, they took me into a big green field that was like a maze. It was not on Earth. I'm not sure where it was exactly, but it was very peaceful. Nothing was there but hedges and fields of grass. We talked there two times, and the third time we talked there, they told me that they would now have to leave me for a while, and that I would only see them one more time after this. The last time I would encounter them was very, very strange. They picked me up that night. I was laying in bed, and this time I was back on the examination table. I saw one of my friends, and I asked him what was going on. He told me not to be scared, but that they wanted to test something on me and if I was okay with it, they would be unable to see me ever again. I was very sad and told him that I didn't want to lose them as we were very close. He told me that this was very important to them and that they could really use my help, and that it could change the future of their research. I was 14 by this time. I agreed, and then another alien that I didn't know had me follow him to this pod. It was egg-shaped and silver and had bright red lights around it, and had a chair inside the glass that would normally cover it was open. I sat in the chair. I was scared. There were large, sharp objects hanging from inside. They looked like drills and saws. I asked him for my friend, and two of my friends showed up. They held my hand and promised me that I would be safe. The other friend behind him reassured me that his words were true. The alien had a long needle in his hand, which was about the size of a large medical syringe. It was maybe two inches long, and there was this neon green fluid inside of the syringe. I asked if it was going to hurt, and they told me that yes, but to remember that I was helping them. I asked them what it was, and they said they would tell me after they were done. So I was ready, and they could tell, so they injected the fluid into my left arm. It hurt a lot. I was crying, and they could tell that I was in pain, but shortly after, it subsided. I noticed three big green fluid-filled blisters on my arm, and then he told me. What they had injected into me was the serum that would make you live for eternity. They told me that I shouldn't tell anybody what they did, because it was very secret. My two friends gave me a last hug goodbye, and the one that had given me the shot waved goodbye as they sent me back home, where I woke up in bed. When I woke up, I rolled over and looked at my arm. And I kid you not, there were three green welts on my arm. When I put my finger on it, it popped, and green fluid came out onto my bed sheets. I popped all three. I was kind of scared, and I yelled for my dad, and he ran in and saw my arm and rushed me to the ER. I didn't want to tell the doctors what had really happened out of fear of them thinking I was crazy, so I just said I had no idea what happened, that I had woken up with them on my arm and popped them. The doctors took samples and prescribed me some chemical burn cream to put on them. I still have three circular scars on my left arm, and they're very faint now, but they stayed visible for years. I always wanted to share this. I have no idea why they were so nice to me, and why they chose me for this experiment. I never saw them again after that, and everything stopped. I just thought it was strange. In a weird way, I missed them too. 
I wish them well, and I would like to think that maybe I did do something to help mankind in the future. But whatever it was, I was glad I could help them at all. When I was in probably the fifth grade, I was staying up and watching YouTube on my iPad, and I decided that I should probably get to sleep. I think it was either 1.30 or 11.30. I can't remember. I just remember 1s and 30 being on the clock. I remember laying in bed and suddenly I heard something. It sounded like the little hovercraft things with blades on them that you see in the movie The Incredibles. But yeah, I heard that and I just froze and sat there not knowing what to do. So I climbed out of bed and looked out the window. I saw this little light moving in the sky, and then it stopped for a minute. And then, after a bit, it kept moving forward. But there was still this little light that kept flashing random colors, from red to yellow to green to blue, and back to red again. I know this is going to sound weird, but it was almost hypnotizing to watch. Not only did it change colors, but it changed shape as well. After every flash of color, it would change shapes. And then, the next morning when we woke up, our satellite was gone. I'm not shitting you. There were no storms that night, or any strong winds at all, and no reason why it should have been missing. I work a pretty easygoing office job and I consistently listen to podcasts while I do my work. That being said, I've always had an interest in the paranormal and the unexplained, so that's typically what I listen to. I was listening to an interview by Astonishing Legends with Terry Lovelace about the things that he encountered and what he experienced from a camping trip in Devil's Den back in the 70s. To sum it up, he touched on what happened to him and a couple of things stood out to me. It reminded me of something that happened to me as a kid that I always chalked up to sleep paralysis, but now it has me second guessing myself. I must have been in about the third or fourth grade. At the time, we lived kind of on the edge of a bunch of farmland and woods. Our backyard opened up to our neighbors who owned acres upon acres of land. And to the left of that was just endless farmland and forest. We lived a few miles away from a really popular dairy farm, but we were also a mile or two out from a main road that leads into town. I guess the point I'm getting at is that we were pretty secluded, but not totally isolated. The Midwest is like that at times, I suppose. My room at the time was in the basement, and the stairs that led down to it was right in front of our back door. I slept with my bed right in front of my bedroom door as well. It was summer break, and after I finally decided that I was tired, I went to lay down in my bed. My memory goes in and out at that point, and there are some missing spots in between, because I think as soon as I laid down, I just blacked out. I remember that I woke up right after passing out, and I'm not sure how much time had passed between those two points in time. To me, it felt instantaneous, but I immediately looked at the foot of my bed and the door to my room was wide open. There was this blinding light outside my room. I remember seeing this figure right in the doorway to my room. I couldn't make out any distinct features because of the light coming from behind it. All I got was a silhouette and the shape of how it looked. It must have been not that much shorter than me as I was a kid at the time, probably about four feet tall, I think. It had a huge bulbous head and a tiny body. In retrospect, it was shaped a little bit like a gray. I just remember this utmost primal sense of fear, and I couldn't move. I've never experienced that level of horror before, and I haven't felt that feeling since. I was laying on my back in my bed, and all I could do was stare at it. I was trying to scream, but nothing came out of my lungs, and I couldn't get up to run or anything because I was completely paralyzed to that spot. I blacked out again, came to, and this time it was closer, right at the end of my bed. 
At that point, I tried screaming again, but still nothing would come out. And yet again, I blacked out. I came to that morning at the opposite side of my room, flopped across this little couch that I had. It's hard to explain it too because there's just nothing in between these points of time. It's like a blank spot. I tried to explain to my mom what happened, but of course she just chalked it up to sleepwalking and a nightmare because I stayed up too late or something to that effect. For a while after that, I was horrified to watch any form of alien movie or even just anything on TV that resembled what that thing was shaped like. I would have a full-blown panic attack and start to hyperventilate. I've gotten past that and it doesn't really get to me anymore. However, to this day I can't sleep with my bed in front of my door or with my door open. I don't even like sleeping near the door. I need to be as far away from it as possible. Even during the day if I'm doing something in a room, I have to close the door. Having it open just sends this massive feeling of discomfort and anxiety over me and I can't do it. I've experienced weird things throughout my entire life, but after a while, I just chalked it up to sleep paralysis. But now, I'm not so sure anymore. I hope that somebody has answers, or can at least tell me if I'm crazy or not, because even attempting to try to explain it, or even just thinking about it, makes me feel like I'm nuts. So before I tell you the story, let's get one thing straight. My dad is a stubborn, no bullshit type of old guy. He thinks aliens and ghosts are all a load of crap, and he wouldn't make something like this up. We're from England, and we live in the Midlands. And one night during the late 80s, my dad and his friend are out making hay in the tractor in a field, when all of a sudden, a bright flash of light appears right in front of them, and there's a giant ship hovering in front of them. He's always ever told me it looks just like you'd imagine a spaceship, disc-shaped, with lights spinning around the edge. He and his friend had only just taken in what they were seeing, before it darted off in the opposite direction toward the next village. So my dad gets on his CB radio, because, you know, if you didn't have one of those in the 80s, and who even were you? And he radios another farmer friend in that village, and he sees it too. He even radios his wife, who then wakes up the kids, and they all see it too, before it darts away into the night. I always remember my dad telling me the story when I was a kid, although out of character for him to do so. I just thought it was some cool story he made up. But a couple of years ago, his friend comes over, the one who was in the tractor with him. And I just happened to mention it in kind of a, oh, you know that old story dad used to tell me kind of way. And his friend remembers instantly and begins to describe it exactly how my dad did, which really makes me believe that it was true. My dad still doesn't believe in aliens. He believes it was a spacecraft made by the government to spy on us and that they made it to look like a typical alien spaceship so people wouldn't think it was the government. God knows. All I know is I believe it happened and it's cool as hell. I just went out for a walk before bed. I saw what I thought were very close shooting stars a couple of times. The third or fourth time I saw it, I gasped because I noticed that there were different colored lights coming from some kind of flying object. Then I saw it zoom off, leaving the very bright shooting star kind of trail behind it. It was there for a split second, but I saw it. Very bright, it quickly descended from the sky right by my house. I rushed inside and looked out a window, and I saw it zoom off again away from me. The things I'm seeing lately, it's getting harder to deny their presence. I know it's not the longest story, but I've been seeing strange things a lot, and I'm pretty sure they're aliens.
So I'm in my bed, covered in sweat, shaking and scared. This is my second experience with them. The first time they watched me, we weren't in the same room, but I could feel them watching me, and I saw their light from the space in the door frame. It was greenish yellow. Time distortion happens when they initiate contact. Also, I don't remember hearing any sound at all during either encounter. This time was horrifying. I woke up and saw faces on my ceiling. They weren't detailed, but they looked human. Their features were outlined with a pink light. They're interdimensional and are invisible to my knowledge. I felt two of them grab my arms. I struggled physically. I think they were really latching onto my consciousness, but our auras are human shaped, so really they were grabbing the energy in my arms. I could feel their grip and their strength. They're smaller and weaker than us, but they have large hands and long fingers and I could feel them pulling me. Although I got out of bed and struggled physically, pulling and jerking my arms out of their grip in a spasm of defensive flailing, it dawned on me that they were trying to separate my consciousness from my body. So in reality, my physical struggle made no difference. After the struggle, it seemed like about a minute or so long. They let go. I'm not on drugs, although mentally, physically, and spiritually, I am exhausted. I believe they come for us when we are vulnerable. I survived my encounter and was able to share it, but now I wonder, when people die or have heart attacks or strokes or just collapse, were they victims of some kind of alien abduction? Are their corpses just hollow vessels left behind by interdimensional soul thieves? I don't know. All I know is that I've been experiencing unexplained phenomenon and I believe them to be alien. I don't know anything else beyond that. My first ever encounter was when I was around seven and my family was all around the table. I will never forget the order we sat in, nor what happened. My mother sat in front of me while my sister was beside me. Father was next to mom and my back was turned to the kitchen. My brother sat next to my mom in front of my sister, a family of five. We were eating and then the window straight across from my dad at the right of my direction shone with a very bright light. Everyone seemed frozen, but my mom and I. My mom told me to run, run and hide. My mind was blanked out and I didn't think at all. I just got up and ran to my mother's room where I felt my mind was telling me would be the safest place. Once I entered my mom's room, I went straight to her king size bed with a huge light underneath. There was nothing under my mom's bed because she kept everything in bins at the foot of her bed and closet. The foot of my mother's bed was facing the door while the head was against a wall next to two big windows. Then it was her closet across from where you were laying so you could see it. Then the bathroom was right next to that. Once I got under the bed, I saw that the light was still on. I looked through the cracks and it was quiet. And then I saw about six sets of feet that were not human. Then I felt them start to surround me. One almost touched me by getting on the bed and reaching down through the crack. There were two through the crack, three in front, not showing their faces, but trying to reach further under. One was at the foot of the bed. Then I looked near me and saw a face that was gray and had huge eyes. I felt like I couldn't move, but when I looked closer, I saw a whole galaxy in its eyes. It was so pretty how the colors merged like a sunset, and for a second I almost forgot it was an eye. Then it moved or flinched and I came to my senses. I looked around and they were still moving to get me while the one that I looked at was staying still and looking at the closet. Then I heard the closet door opened and I saw Nega. Nega was my childhood imaginary friend that taught me the greater lessons than what is now being slowly forgotten. After seeing her, I relaxed and I saw them try to fight. 
and then the tall, gray-like humanoids were gone. I looked at Nega, and then I looked at the bathroom to see another creature that had orange eyes that I know commonly stays in my mother's bathroom. Nega hushed me, and then I seemed to have forgotten what had happened until I turned 14. After this, I just carried on with life. I never saw my imaginary friend again, but old friend still lingers from time to time in my memories. Growing up, I had seizures every now and then when I would fall asleep. I wasn't diagnosed with epilepsy, but for some time, I was having them until I finally grew out of my late teens. Due to being able to choke and hurt myself when I would have an episode, my parents placed a baby monitor in my room. Also, my room was connected to my brothers through our bathroom. It was basically a short hallway, and we can see each other's beds from each other's rooms. Both of our doors were always open when we would go to sleep, just in case if my brother needed to be there for me. Now, on another side note, I saw the movie Dark Skies, so you guys can have a better understanding of this alien that I encountered. The movie alien species, I believe, are supposed to represent the greys. They're a species of alien that are known to have telepathic powers, and even be to the point where they can alter people's memories of certain incidents. In the movie, the alien is causing the family's son to have horrible nightmares. In a sense, to break the family down emotionally, maybe so that the abduction would be easier. Anyway, I don't think this encounter had to do with an abduction, but more in the sense to just torment. So, I'm probably around 12 or 13 years old when this took place. My brother was about 16 or 17. One night, probably about an hour before my brother and I would have to wake up for school, I woke up to my brother walking down the bathroom hallway into my room. I remember just randomly waking up to him walking toward me. When he got into my room and there was more light from my nightlight, I saw that he was crying. He told me that he had a dream that he found me dead in my bed from having a seizure. He said that it was so vivid and surreal that he had to come and see me to make sure I was okay. Now at that point, I'm a little freaked out, and I call into my baby monitor to get my parents upstairs. When my parents come upstairs to see what was going on, they decided that him and my mom would go downstairs and get ready for school early. Now for some reason, I remember that we ended up in my brother's room, my dad and I, because there was still an hour to sleep before the day started, and my brother's bed was a real-sized mattress that could fit both my dad and I comfortably, and he wanted to stay with me. At some point, my dad falls asleep, but I stayed up for a little bit longer before I completely passed out. Before I fell asleep, I swear I saw a long, gray, ET-looking hand coming from the bottom of my brother's bed. I remember seeing the hand come from underneath the bed, and whatever it was placed it so quietly at the side of my bed, literally a few feet away from me. I don't know if I'm describing this well, but imagine someone laying underneath the bed and they bring around the arm on the side. I remember that when I saw it, I was filled with dread and I was beyond scared, way too scared to touch it to see if it was real. Then suddenly I woke to having to go to school, even though I don't recall falling asleep. For some reason, I never gave a thought about that specific part, about the hand, until I saw dark skies and I had kind of a eureka moment. I don't know if that thing was tormenting my brother with these nightmares or what happened. I don't even know if it's real sometimes, but it was real to me. Has anyone else ever had a similar experience? What do you think it was? So two nights ago, I was laying in bed, scrolling Reddit, looking for something to read so I could fall asleep. My dog was asleep next to me and my fiance was playing Xbox, but sitting on the couch and on the other side of the room. I wasn't sure what time it was when I felt him crawl into bed, but I instantly fell back asleep after he did. 
Again, I'm woken up, not sure what time it is, and my dog was up, moving on the bed, I guess trying to get comfortable. My eyes are completely wide open while I'm looking around the room for a half-filled water bottle when I see a bright flash go off literally right in front of me. Thinking my fiancé was messing with me, I waited to see what his reaction would be when he asks me if I saw something. I tell him how bright the flash was, and he said, yeah, I know, it was bright enough to wake me from my sleep. He thought he was dreaming. We started asking each other different questions, like if the TV was on. We have some beer neon lights on the wall behind our bed, so we thought maybe the plug was moved, but the whole extension cord we have them connected to was disconnected and nowhere close to the outlet. We quickly felt weird vibes, like we weren't alone in our room, and we both jumped to each other to hide under the blankets. My dog is the biggest chicken, so she was already under there. We woke up around the same time in the morning, and it was the first thing we talked about. My fiancé thought he'd been having some kind of dream, and we always feel weird when we bring it up. I know this sounds silly, but has anyone else seen any random flashes or had some similar experience? What do you think it was? When I was around eight years old in approximately 1995, I went to visit a friend's house just up a path and through a court from my house, about a minute away. On the court is a set of flats, which creates an archway that you have to walk through. As I walked back home and through the archway, I heard a low humming noise. I looked over my shoulder to see a typical movie-like shaped spaceship the round disc shape with the dome on top and the circular lighting. The lights didn't shine as such as it was daytime, but I can only now explain them as looking like LED lights, which is why they were so noticeable in the daylight. The UFO was small, no bigger than about three feet wide and maybe a foot and a half high. At that point, I think it's coming for me, so I'm so scared I just start running for home. I'm about 30 seconds away, but the corner to the path is coming up. I'm still trying to watch this thing chase me, and as I get to the corner, it's just behind me. The low hum is deafening. I mean, I can feel it within me. I have to take my eyes off of it for just a second to turn the corner, and as I do round the corner, the light, whether it was natural sunlight or the LED-type lights, went really bright and sounded like a jet plane thundering overhead. I look up as I round the corner and it's right above my head, so close that the breeze it created whipped up my hair. Then, just as it had appeared, it disappeared, suddenly, no visual sign of it. But I heard that jet plane noise and low humming noise move away from me. I get home and I tell my mom and dad, they don't believe me, or they say I must have mistaken a bird. I told my friend the next day, and she rolled on the floor laughing. I stopped telling people after that, but I can still remember it like it was yesterday, and still can't shake the feeling that it was coming for me, even though it was so small that I wouldn't have even fit in it. I don't know that that matters, though. I still don't want to know what would have happened if I hadn't made it home. My first sighting was when I was 10. It was a massive floating ship, shaped like a huge manta ray. When I saw it, I felt like I had been on it for a while, but I shook off that feeling and ran home. The memory surfaces periodically, and sometimes I think I can remember what the inside of that ship looks like, and I remember not being alone in the ship, but I have little idea who I was with. Much later, I saw a craft landing in the cow pasture at my parents' house in a rural country. I feel compelled to go inside the house, and it was like I had forgotten what I had seen. I lost a few hours of time that day. 
I always assumed that I must have watched TV, but later I realized I literally have no memory of the next few hours. Later, I began seeing lights in the sky, and I would ask out loud, are you here for me? And the light would bob and weave up and down, or left to right, or it would flash brighter for a moment, like it was communicating. Again, I would go inside, and soon after, I would lose memory of what I was doing for the next several hours. This happens often, still to this day. I have a lot of theories, and sometimes I remember parts of conversations with people about my life, my personal feelings, my aspirations, good conversations about how I could improve my life, but I can't remember any faces of the people that I talk to. I do benefit, though, as my life has steadily improved over the past 10 years, so I'm not fearful about the encounters. I'm just aware that they're taking place, and I don't know if I'm ready to remember more yet. I'll cut to the chase and tell you what I experienced and saw when I was in a dreaming state, but was nonetheless very real to me. It's hard to explain, so I'm going to do my best to sum it up. This may be long, but please hear me out. My identical twin and I have had a sleeping disorder known as sleep paralysis as long as we can remember. Them being severe, we would experience false awakenings, believing we have actually awoken, just to realize that we were still dreaming. It happened during a false awakening but I immediately knew something was wrong, unlike other times, where it takes me a bit to realize I'm dreaming. I'm laying horizontal, almost against a hard surface, and there's something, a light maybe, blocking my main view. I'm frightened, and out of my peripheral, I focus in on the walls. Remembering what I saw after is what sometimes bothers me at night, right before I go to bed. The walls didn't ever seem to meet. There were no corners. Smooth, metallic, no edges. Everything was curved, making your perception confused. I couldn't tell if I was in a small room or a very large space. The walls almost seemed to move in a very unnatural way, but still were completely solid. The word kaleidoscope comes to mind, but it's not quite right. It was like no other place I have ever been or seen, completely alien in design. If you have severe sleep paralysis, sometimes you can feel yourself come back. I had that feeling before I actually woke up in real life. I'm not looking to discuss whether or not my experience was fake seeing as I was in a dream state, although because it felt and still feels so real to me, it leaves me with questions. Has anyone experienced or heard of anyone who's been abducted and could visually explain the inside of the craft? Does anyone know of information connecting geometric shapes with extraterrestrial beings? I would be grateful for any help on the theories on ET craft designs, or any information on some similar experiences to mine. Six years ago, my boyfriend at the time, husband now, woke me up sweating and shaking in absolute fear. I asked him what was wrong and he began stuttering and telling me that I would never believe him. He went on to tell me that he was woken up around midnight to this person standing at the end of the bed. Yes, my first thought was sleep paralysis as well, but he sat up and was ready to attack if he needed to. In his head, he heard a voice that wasn't him, telling him that it was okay and that they weren't there for any bad reasons. He said he felt immediately calm from that. He also noted that he was shocked with what a light sleeper I was and that his movements hadn't woken me. This being was unnaturally tall and had to crouch a little due to its height 
and us having been asleep in the basement. He said that this being reached out for a greeting and again began hearing a voice in his head saying, Hello. Nothing much else happened that night as my husband was frightened. All he remembered at the time was that the last thing he heard from it in his mind was, I'll see you again soon. And then he said it felt as if time had started again, not realizing that it ever felt like it stopped until that point. And then he was back in reality, and that's when he woke me. What he thought had only been about a 10 to 15 minute encounter had actually taken over an hour. These visits continued for months, minimum once a week, max three to four times, but my husband got less and less frightened every time. This thing and him built a sort of friendship from what he explained to me. It had a name, but for the life of me, I can't remember what he said it was. It answered any and every question my husband had. I won't go into what those were here, but after a while, it just stopped. He stopped waking me up in the middle of the night or telling me about it the next morning. But the times were always the same. He would be awoken around midnight and they would have discussions about literally anything my husband was curious about. And then he would come back to reality and time would unfreeze again between 1 a.m. and 1.30 a.m., having only felt like the encounter had lasted a short period of time. Once it stopped, though, I can't emphasize enough just how much it stopped. I mean, full stop. It was like for him, it never happened. It's been six years, so I know this is choppy, but it's hard to remember everything with it having been so long ago now. I forgot about it for so long, and I don't know what prompted me to remember it just about a week ago, but now I just can't stop thinking about it and the oddness of it all, and how it just stopped so suddenly. He's literally never made mention of it ever again, and I've never brought it up to him this last week in fear that he may think I'm crazy, which I don't know why that's my fear, but part of me thinks if there's a chance he's completely forgotten it, whether it be on his own or something else, he may think I've gone insane. Anyway, if you have any ideas or similar stories, please let me know. I'm trying to figure this all out and what happened to my husband as it's literally keeping me up at night. This happened probably about two years ago, except my memory of when it happened is really hazy and I struggle to place it on my timeline. I would say I was about 15 years old and it was the middle of the night. I live in a two-story house and the second story is quite high, so I sleep with the curtains wide open as I like to look at the stars. For reference, the window that's in this room takes up almost the whole wall. I woke up one night and my room was completely bright. My bed is in the corner opposite the window and all I could see out in my window was a blinding light taking up the entire window. My bedroom was completely lit up and I could barely look out the window because it was like looking into the sun. I sat there for probably about two minutes absolutely paralyzed with fear before I decided to grab my phone and film it. The second I grabbed my phone, the light went out and my room went back to dark. I couldn't make out anything through the window as my eyes had to adjust since it had been so bright. And once I could see, after about maybe a minute, there was nothing out of the ordinary. I wrote myself a note to look at in the morning because I needed evidence that it hadn't been a dream. I eventually got back into bed and tried to sleep, but the adrenaline and fear kept me up for hours. I managed to fall asleep eventually, and when I woke up, the note was exactly where I left it. I spoke to my family, but they were all adamant that they hadn't seen or heard anything. I have explored every logical possibility including sleep paralysis and night terrors, and even the possibility that I was hallucinating. 
but I've never hallucinated before, and I haven't since. I have no history of mental illness other than depression, which I wasn't struggling with at the time, and the same with night terrors and sleep paralysis. The note I left myself has proved to me that I wasn't asleep when it happened. This was during a time when I had some weird experiences happening while I was asleep. I would wake up with strange bruises and scratches all over my body almost every day. My memories from around that time are very hazy, and I can only remember bits and pieces. That time of my life is almost blurry to me, and I usually have an excellent memory. Any possible explanations? I'm a lucid dreamer, and I can control my dreams and my nightmares. But last night, I had a dream that was very different from anything else. I was working on the floor of my factory job and running the forklift, like normal, until out the bay door there were fireworks, it's more like a plume of light, and an explosion, coming from the other side of the valley. I live in the desert, we don't have valleys where I'm at. We decided to go outside after seeing these lights fly away into the sky to the left of us. Once we get outside of the bay door, the ground is illuminated like a full moon times ten. We were now in the backyard of my childhood house. We look up to the sky trying to find the light source, but it was just a night sky. When we looked to the right, there was a typical looking alien and when it noticed us, it screeched and jumped up toward us, but it dissolved into the brightening light. I woke up in a scream, and I couldn't sleep until daylight. My cat, who's pretty aware as well, stared at the wall behind me for a good 30 minutes. Now I can dream about scary stuff, and when it happens I can usually alter it. I can always control what I'm dreaming about, but this was different, and I haven't dreamed about aliens in over 10 years. What is this supposed to mean? Have they decided to come back? Why me? I will never forget this Wednesday night as long as I live. It was the summer before seventh grade, sometime in July. It was Wednesday night, early Thursday morning. The evening before, my family had watched the old school show Unsolved Mysteries. I awoke in the night, lying on my right side, awake but my eyes still shut, completely silent. None of us ran fans back then to aid in sleep. I was awake and basically waiting to fall back asleep again. However. I decided to open my eyes. On the right side of my bed, right there, was a being, seemingly fixated on a plush bear that I kept in bed with me. And this being fit all of the descriptions that I've always heard or watched on television of an alien. Shorter, pale gray skin, and those awful eyes, huge, black and slanted, staring at my bear, right by my bed. Honestly, I cannot put into words how I felt right at that moment. I was only just about 12. At some point, I pulled my covers over my head and felt an awful rushing through my body of super warm, then cool, then warm again. Only later in my life did I understand that I was most likely feeling shock. I couldn't scream. I felt frozen. Too scared to scream, maybe. What if I did scream? My mother and stepfather and two brothers would hear me. What the heck would they do if they came running into my room and saw this thing? What would it do? Is it going to kill me? Abduct me? What if it already had and it was returning me? 
All of these thoughts, plus a million more, just raced through my young mind. It's awful just recounting it all. Again, how could I ever forget something traumatic like this? So, being such a brave 11-year-old, and after what felt like 12 hours, I decided to try and scare it. I decided that I would thrash my legs up and down from under my covers as hard as I could. I know, horrifying, right? I was so petrified, though. So, I did this, and then remained under my covers, just waiting. Nothing happened. So, I stayed under the covers. This had to be at least close to going on two hours from when I first opened my eyes and saw this thing. As I lay wide awake, I heard a noise. To this day, I still can't explain exactly how it sounded. The sound felt as if it surrounded me and was coming from outside. It was crisp, clean sounding, maybe mechanical, but maybe not, lasting only about two seconds. A sound that I had definitely never heard before and have never heard since. As soon as I heard the sound, something in my mind told me, oh, they're gone. As crazy as it sounds, I firmly believed that the sound was their transportation leaving. Needless to say, I didn't sleep the rest of the night or early morning. It took me so long to confide in my family about this terribly scary incident. Of course, they did not believe me. However, now, from time to time, my mother will mention it and suggest that maybe that's why I suffer from insomnia now. Very well could be. This is the first time that I've shared this story publicly, though, and it would be reassuring to hear any other stories of similar happenings. In my life, I've had three UFO experiences. For context, I am a 40-year-old male living in the southeastern United States. I will focus on the second one, since it's the most unquestionable event of the three. In 2015, I was living in Lexington, South Carolina, which is right outside of Columbia, the state capital. On October 5th of that year, we experienced a thousand-year flood that shut everything down and caused major damage throughout the Lexington, Columbia area. My job requires me to be at work at 3.30 or 4 in the morning, same job I have now as I had then. My job was shut down on account of the flood, but my great and wonderful company decided that I needed to be there the next day to assess the damage, despite the fact that I would have to drive through a flood. Anyway, I woke up at 2, went downstairs, made some coffee, and per my usual morning routine, I stepped outside onto the back porch to have the coffee and enjoy the stillness of the twilight hours in solitude. It was lightly raining, not enough to mind it, and the sky was totally overcast with low clouds. That's important. We were in the suburbs about two blocks off of one of the main drags through town, Sunset Boulevard, 378. We weren't in the sticks, but we weren't metropolitan either. The sky was a slight orange from the streetlights reflecting off of the cloudy sky. Our house was at the end of a cul-de-sac. There were tall, lined trees lining the back and sides of the property. So I'm drinking my coffee, leaning on the banister of the deck, and in front of me in the sky, I can see something moving in my direction. My first thought was, oh, it's an owl, or some kind of large bird, judging by the shape. But slowly, as the shape got bigger and bigger, I realized that it looked smaller because it was far away, and once it was overhead, it came into clear view. It moved slowly, but it all happened so fast at the same time. It was overhead, over the house, over the pine trees, but under the clouds. It was a black triangle with a textured pattern on the bottom, the only side I could see. The texture is difficult to describe. Adidas makes this soccer shoe called the Nemesis. If you Google it, that's kind of how it looked. Embossed lines, 
perfectly black. The trees were probably about 40 to 50 feet tall, so I estimate that this thing was probably 60 to 80 feet off the ground, pretty low. It was about the size of your traditional Walmart parking lot. It made absolutely zero noise whatsoever. There were no lights. It moved as with intention, with no deviation in direction, like an air hockey puck perfectly gliding on a fixed trajectory. It was slow, maybe faster than a bicycle, but slower than a car. I don't know, 20 miles per hour if I had to guess. Once it made it over the house, I chased it through the gate on the side of the house, yelling to myself at 2.30 in the morning, what the F was that? What the F was that? In the front yard, I was just looking at it. It just quietly and discreetly skated off into the darkness, perfectly straight on, totally indifferent. I regret not getting any pictures, it just didn't occur to me. It came and went so quickly. In the moment, I just didn't know what to think. It's like my brain had nothing to reference against what I was seeing. It wasn't a bird. It was definitely not a plane. I thought maybe it was a drone, but it was so big and totally silent. It was difficult to process in the moment, but I know what I saw. There's no question about it. Anything outside of your scope of understanding or knowledge is the definition of alien. If I were to make up a story about seeing a UFO, a black silent triangle is probably the last thing I would have come up with. I wonder if the flood had anything to do with its presence. It seemed too wild for it to not be connected somehow. The third encounter I had in my life was when I was stargazing with my son on the same deck at the same house. We have since moved though. I was playing with the Google Sky app because I'm lame and uh, it took a while to get a smartphone. So I was amazed at all the apps, even though they'd been out forever. Anyway, we were finding stars on a clear night and then identifying them with the app. One particularly bright star stood out to the east of us and I overlaid the phone with the star. The app showed nothing in the sky in that region. We calibrated it as well. As soon as I said, hey, there's no star there, it zoomed across the horizon, stopped, then zoomed up, then blinked out like an old tube TV turning off. Its movements were very smooth and precise if I were to hold up a yardstick in front of my field of vision with my arms extended, this thing went from one end to the other in a second. I couldn't tell you what that is in actual distance, but it must have been an incredible distance to travel that quickly and to stop on a dime and then redirect and disappear. My son was too young at the time to think much of it. I had heard from the wacky world of UFO conspiracies that UFOs can tell if you notice them, and I had always thought that that was baloney. But I have to admit, this thing tore off the second I noticed it and said something out loud. Pretty weird stuff. So call me crazy, and I'm sure some people will, that's okay. But I swear this happened to me when I was 16. What's weirder is that it happened on the same night that I had an alien abduction dream. My mom wasn't home. She worked nights looking after the elderly at a nearby retirement home. I lived a normal teenage night playing video games, messaging friends, and watching TV. I went to my room and went to sleep. I had an extremely intense nightmare that I was abducted by aliens. All I remembered is looking up in my dream and seeing my whole field of vision turn completely white as I simultaneously heard this really loud buzzing or humming sound. I wake up drenched in sweat, heart pounding, and it's around 5.30 in the morning. But what's weirder is that I'm not in my bed. Confused as heck, I look around the room and to my surprise, I'm somehow in my mom's room, frozen in fear and confused. 
I tried to figure out what was going on. After about 20 to 30 minutes, I finally calmed myself down enough to get up. So I get up and when I go downstairs, I can see through the door to our backyard, which is made of glass, and I can clearly see that the gate to our backyard is wide open. It's an old fashioned wooden gate and it hadn't been opened in years because it was covered in vines and was always left locked. I go to investigate and as I go to unlock the back door, the door handle goes down with no resistance at all. And I realize, crap, this door is already unlocked, which only added to how shook up I was to be honest. So hesitantly, I go into the backyard anyway and I look at the gate, which is also open. I look for footprints or boot marks, thinking that somebody must have kicked the gate open. Nothing. I look more closely. The old rusty lock to the gate, which hasn't been opened in years, is still there. Not bent, not damaged, not broken at all. Just a bit rusty, the same as it's always been. I lock that gate back up and look around the yard. Nothing's missing. I go back in the house. I lock the back door and take a real good look around and nothing's missing. I go back to my bedroom and double check that I did get in my bed that night. And yep, I definitely did. The bed's still messy. I thought, did I sleepwalk? Did I go into the yard and then somehow go get in my mom's bed? I checked the carpet and floors in the house which certainly would have been dirty and muddy if I had walked into the yard and then back in. And nothing. I called my mom and explained everything that had happened, and I asked if she had messed with the gate or unlocked it lately. She confirmed that she hadn't, and was just as surprised and confused as I was. To this day, I have no explanation as to what happened that night. Just to confirm, I was very into sports as a teenager, I didn't smoke, I didn't drink, I didn't take substances, and I was completely sober. I also remember feeling oddly terrified of the sky as it began to get dark out that evening. I remember sometimes that if I was playing football or soccer with friends after that, and it started getting dark, instead of walking home like I usually would, I'd kind of hustle. I'd constantly look up at the sky, feeling fear. And I remember a number of times where I decided to just run home instead because I was scared, even months later. All of this still confuses me, even to this day. I wanted to share a scary experience my family had when vacationing at the Caribbean Beach Resort in August of 1995. As a quick side note, I was born in 1992, so I don't remember anything from this trip. This is all coming from my family. Also, I do not know the exact room number at the time. We have family videos from this trip, but I haven't found them yet. If I find them, I can confirm the room number. I want to say that it was on the island of Aruba, but I'm just not sure. A quick setup for the story. This was a big family vacation because it was my aunt's birthday. The first room consisted of my brother and I and my mom and dad. The room directly next door consisted of my three sisters and their friend. Farther down and around the corner was my grandma and my aunts. They did not experience anything that night so they don't matter much at this point in the story. It all started at 2 a.m. on night two of the vacation. My mom shot up awake and ran for the door, screaming about a giant bug. During this time, my dad says that there were a lot of colorful lights shining through the windows. But they said there was a meteor shower that night, which might explain the lights. Eventually, my dad was able to coax her back to bed. She said all she remembers is seeing a huge bug. I asked her recently about this, and she said that she saw the silhouette of a giant bug. It could have been an alien, I guess, but she doesn't know. This is important, because my mom is the one who said it could have been an alien, but she doesn't know. My mom is super religious and never cared for crypto stuff, 
so I can't see her lying about this. After a while, they go back to sleep until around 4 a.m. My dad wakes up in mid-air at the side of the bed and dropped, hitting his head on the nightstand. He even had a large bump on the back of his head. He said he was in the air for a few seconds before falling. He was pretty shaken and spoke to my mom until about 5 a.m. That's when my sister called the hotel phone. My sister called because they had coordinated to get up early that day and my sisters couldn't sleep. My mom said, that's fine. Your father kept me up all night talking about the weird stuff that happened. And my sister yelled, weird stuff happened to you too? We'll be right over to talk about it. Once they came over, they discussed what had happened to them. At the exact time that my mom woke up screaming about the giant bug. At 2 a.m., my sister Christy woke up to my other two sisters, Kim and Trisha, screaming. Kim was on the floor and Trisha was still on the bed. Christy was trying to understand what happened, but neither Kim nor Trisha would calm down enough to speak coherently. Eventually, they calmed down enough to tell her. When Christy asked what happened, Kim said, I don't want to say it. Trisha, you say it. And Trisha said the same. It was as if they both experienced something so traumatic that night that they didn't want to relive it. Finally, Trisha got the courage to try and explain. She would start to explain it and say, it was horrible. We were... And then her mouth would get contorted and her speech would slur. She couldn't get the words out no matter how hard she tried. Same with Kim. Whenever they would try to say what had happened to them, their words would just scramble. So flash forward to the morning. Before going to Magic Kingdom for the day, we all had breakfast at the Hard Rock Cafe. During breakfast and the rest of the day, my mom, Kim, and Trisha would randomly start crying. My mom said it was the weirdest feeling of being so small. She said she felt like a dot. After breakfast, we were in the Magic Kingdom. We were going on rides and such and eventually found a letter in my stroller that definitely wasn't there before. The letter was in French, but they couldn't figure out what it said. They brought it to a few French couples they had met, but every time they were told, sorry, this doesn't make sense, I can't translate it, or I don't want to read this to you, it's too weird. Eventually they lost the letter and it was never translated. And that's really it. Aside from a crack in the ceiling of the hotel that wasn't there the night before, I think that sums up the odd experience. I was three at the time of this occurrence, and my brother was five. We were both untouched and unbothered. If I was old enough to understand, I would probably have that letter to this day. My sisters don't remember anything from that night. They thought about going to see a hypnotist or something, but they were too afraid of what they might find. My main reasoning for posting this is that I wondered if anyone else had a similar experience. I'm sure there is an answer to what happened that night, but it's probably something we'll never know for sure. I have struggled with the idea of sharing my experience. Mostly because I don't even know if it actually happened or if it was just a dream. One night in the summer when I was about 10 or 11, I was awoken in the middle of the night. I could hear the horses running around the pasture as if something had happened to startle them. I decided to get up and go check on things. At that time, my family had a massive old barn and we lived in the middle of nowhere. I walked through the door of the barn and found a very large man as white as snow, climbing into the hayloft. I remember being startled, but not scared. He turned around and looked at me, and slowly lowered himself back down. He took a few steps toward me, before he knelt down and put out his hand, like one would do to a stray animal. As I looked at him, I felt like he looked sad and tired, and not at all like he would do me any harm. I decided to take his hand and walk him toward our kids' hangout space, which was just a space in the barn where we had some old couches, a few toys, and a radio. As soon as he saw the radio, he became more animated, 
ran toward it and started messing around with it. That went on for a little bit, and I kept asking him what he needed the radio for. He never said a word. Not one word. He wouldn't give me a name, so I just started calling him Radio. After some time, he sat the radio down and sat down on the couch. I brought over my favorite horse book, and he started thumbing through the pages. I started showing him all of my favorite horse breeds. Eventually, he gently took the book from me and closed it as if to say, I'm done. I got up to put the book away and he laid down on the couch. I remember him being so large that his head was on the armrest while his legs hung over the other armrest at the knee. He was a giant, pure white, and I don't recall any hair. His eyes were jet black, but they weren't huge or angular. If anything, they slanted downward a bit and were very beady. After he fell asleep, I decided to go back into the house and go to bed. I put a blanket over him before I went in, so he wouldn't get cold. I woke up in the morning and the whole experience came flooding back to me. My feet were dirty, as if I had been outside during the night. I grabbed some snacks and ran out to the barn. I ran to our hangout space and found everything as I would have expected it. The blanket was on the floor, the book was sitting on the table, the radio was out of place, but he was gone. It's important to know that I had a habit of sleepwalking at this time in my life, so I guess it's possible that this was all just an elaborate dream. At first, I thought he was just a very, very strange person, and I hoped that he found safety. The memory never left me, and by the time I was a teen, I had decided that I had dreamed the whole thing and I let it go. Then, Prometheus came out and I agreed to go see it with friends. When the tall white alien came on screen, I nearly jumped out of my seat. It wasn't an exact likeness, but it was like seeing a ghost of someone I had once met. At the time, I knew absolutely nothing about aliens, and the only one I had ever heard of was the classic Little Green Men. Nonetheless, I forced myself to let it go and move on. That memory could not be real, so I must have dreamed it, right? As time passed, I started wondering how I could have imagined a being that I had never heard of or seen any imagery of. Could that have really happened? Could radio be real? This happened three to four years ago, and I've been thinking about it recently. It was late one night, around 11.30 p.m., and I'm driving home from my job at Sonic. I was taking US 64 home, which is a fairly desolate stretch of road with houses and farmland on either side. I was in my 99 Ford Explorer, and I was just driving along at about 65 to 70 miles per hour with the radio on a low volume. As I'm driving, through my sunroof comes a bright green ray of light that envelops the interior of the vehicle. This lasts for about two to three seconds and then disappears without a trace. After it happened, I just sped up and got home as quickly as possible. I was only about five minutes away anyway. That's really about all there is to the story, but I was young and it really freaked me out. I've pondered and pondered, but I have no clue what it could have been. I wasn't tired because I woke up around 5 or 6 that day, and I have no history of illnesses that could have caused that. I wasn't on any medications, nothing like that. I've told a few people and they don't think I'm lying. I've never been the kind to lie about that kind of stuff, but nobody can give me a solid answer either. Some have said maybe it was a laser, but I don't think there's any way that a laser could completely cover my vehicle in green light like that. There was also a farm I was passing by and no street lights. Has anyone had any similar experiences or can anyone offer any insight as to what happened? It would be much appreciated and would ease my mind. A 
few years ago, while visiting Grandma with family from all over, and while eating lunch, we get into normal family talk. Ghosts, aliens, stuff like that. An aunt was explaining to me that as a child, she's the youngest of three, so she's about 60 now, she was walking down the road next to their house. As she was nearing the corner, she noticed a man with his back to her. She said that his skin looked human, but a bit of a gray color. And he turned around and looked right at her. That's when she saw that he had huge yellow eyes, all yellow, that were a bit rectangular in shape. She turned and ran home. She and my father on separate occasions saw what they thought were satellites, but they were traveling the opposite ways that satellites normally travel, and they hit each other and both ricocheted back in the directions they'd come from. They experienced a lot of things in their childhood home. Fast forward to my aunt being married with two kids, they all experienced stuff in their family home. I always think about what my aunt said she saw that day while walking. A hybrid? What was it there for? As a child, and somewhat now still, I'm scared of aliens. I have gotten a bit better with a few of their faces, but I still have night terrors of being abducted, and a lot of times I'll wake up throughout the night and my boyfriend will tell me that I woke up all night long, but I never remember doing so. Also as a kid, and to this day, I see shadow people and hear things. I've been touched by things that I can't explain, mainly because I can't see what's touching me. Long before we started dating even, my boyfriend's mom said that when I would come over to hang out, it would seem as if the ghostly actions in the house would pick up. But still, I think about what my aunt saw. I want answers, but I'm slightly afraid that I'll never get them. I have a story that I want to share to see if anybody has experienced anything similar, or just to find some explanations. I was seven, maybe eight years old. I'm now 22. I was in my bedroom getting ready to sleep. My mother was in the other room, waiting for my dad to come back from work. The door of my bedroom was closed. It was summer, I guess, because I remember having the windows open. The room was dark with no light, except for the moonlight and the light coming from our garden. As soon as I laid in bed, I remembered that I wasn't really tired. I wanted to stay up with my parents. I looked towards the nearest wall, maybe 30 centimeters from the wall. I can see this clear figure slowly standing and looking at me. I started screaming my lungs out and in a couple of seconds, which felt like an eternity for me, my parents got scared by the screaming. They ran in. As soon as they ran in, the figure disappeared and I'm just staring at a wall. I'm terrified and I start crying and I tell them everything. They decided to call the nearest priest to bless the house and me. Anyway, I remember this figure really clearly, even though I was very young. The same night, I described it as an alien with a black coat, like the death. That's a quote. In fact, it was this little figure, maybe one and a half meters tall, dark green or gray, with a black coat on his body and a hood on his head. The eyes were long, oblique, and black. I could see his face thanks to the lights coming from the windows. I remember a small mouth, and that's it. The fact is, why would I ever imagine an alien this way? I mean, I've never seen movies with aliens in my life, I've just never been interested. And, as I remember, if you asked a kid to draw an alien, he would probably draw something really tall without any clothes and big black eyes, you know, the like. But, for some reason, that's what I saw. I know I didn't make it up. I know what I saw. I just don't know what it was.
Newfoundland is an alien hotspot if the stories that I hear are any indication. Almost everyone I know has some story about when they lost huge chunks of time and were missing, usually for about a day, but it can go up to a week. I've never heard of any violent encounters, but a lot of I was frozen and couldn't move for a bit due to a light in the sky kind of stories. It's a pretty good assumption that if aliens do exist, they stalk my family. My dad has stories about being frozen on beaches, being watched in his sleep, and a weird story about the stars changing configuration. My mom has stories about meeting aliens, and she has a few accounts of what they look like. I might tell those stories one day, but I really feel like this is a good introduction to the types of encounters my family has had. For me, it all started when I was about 13. There's nothing overly remarkable about me, other than being in a military family, and I was more precocious than most. At the time, I was living in my dad's hometown, maybe a solid kilometer up the hill. My house was a raised bungalow, meaning that all the first floor windows were about 10 feet off the ground. My window faced the front yard, and was probably the only one that didn't have some kind of bush in front of it. Basically, I had a good solid view of my outside. One night, I remember being woken up fairly abruptly at around one in the morning. Not unusual for a 13-year-old. So I thought, go get a drink, probably pee, go back to bed. Except, when I tried to move, I couldn't. Some people describe the feeling of an overbearing weight that prevents them from moving. This wasn't that. It was like my whole body was asleep, complete with that tingly feeling and an utter lack of ability to move. I wasn't sleeping in a weird position, and aside from having maybe an extra blanket on the bed, I couldn't figure out a reason why this would be happening. The only thing I could move was my head, as my neck felt asleep but not enough to completely prevent movement like the rest of my body. So I flopped my head to one side, and that's when I saw it. In my window, roughly in the middle, was a disc-shaped object. It hovered maybe a foot away from the glass and didn't move. This is remarkable for anyone who's been to Newfoundland, where 40 km per hour winds are the norm basically every day. The disc was maybe three feet in diameter, and the better part of a foot tall. It let off this low-grade, almost LED-like hue. It reminds me of those horrible blue Christmas lights. The thing had three thick, prominent ridges on what I assumed to be the front of it, which was facing me. From the middle one came a red light, and the thing didn't have a lens. It just kind of emanated from this thing. It split into a wide vertical pattern, and it's like it was scanning my body. When I moved my head, the disc was beaming around my belly button area. As soon as my head flopped, with maybe a second or so delay, it moved the scanning laser to my eyes. For maybe five seconds, I stared rather uncomfortably into this horrible red light, and it burned. I wanted to close my eyes desperately, as it felt not dissimilar to staring into the sun. But they wouldn't move. I tried to yell but I couldn't say anything. And, much like staring into the sun, you see little else. After the five or so seconds, the light turned off, and I could just make out the disc object flying off down the road toward the ocean. I was awake for maybe ten more seconds before I fell asleep. For full context, this all happened in about twenty seconds, give or take. I need to point out that this happened in 2003, in rural Newfoundland. At that time, there were no such things as drones. Drones were the terrifying flying machines that the U.S. was sending to bomb the shit out of Iraq. They were something I'd only even seen recently on the TV, as those big, white, plain-looking things. I have no real explanation for this other than possibly aliens. I had tried to talk to my family and classmates about it, but they mostly called me a loony and laughed. Eventually, that night passed from me trying to tell people about it, to thinking nobody will ever believe me, so why bother? A month, maybe two passes, and my life carries on as usual. The only real difference is I become shit at math. I was a top student in my class, 
always pulling best grades for most of my school life until that point, given the math isn't all that hard. But I really started to suck. My grades went from 90s to 60s, often 50s, and sometimes even failing in the math department. Often, I was failing in the math that I was able to do not even four months prior. Nobody was concerned for some reason, but that was a frequent theme in my teen years. So, I was now just the kid that had fallen from grace. Still had amazing grades in everything else, just never again in math. So, one night I remember being woken up. Again, my body felt like it was asleep, and again I had some control over my neck. But I remember this like I remember a dream. But way too many details for it to be normal, but I'll get to that. The first thing that hits me is the blinding white light. It was coming from outside my window, brighter than stadium lights, and coming from who knows where. But I knew it was close to my house. All I heard was a low, growling hum coming from outside. In my room were two of those discs I had seen before, shining a wide red light all over the room, which dampened the sheer brightness of the light outside enough that I could see. Then I see one of them. It walks into my room, and I remember being scared-ish, but largely indifferent. It was easily over 12 feet tall, and was uncomfortably skinny. Its arms and legs were way too long for the tiny torso that it had, about the size of a child. They were multi-jointed in at least seven places that allowed it to fold its arms and legs enough that it could fit into my room. I have no doubt that if it were to fully extend all of its joints, the thing could easily top 20 feet. It had hands which had too many joints on the fingers, way too many fingers, and no thumbs. They were in a half circle around its pretty round palm, and generally unsettling now that I think about it. It had a head, a huge head, but it lacked any real eyes except for maybe tiny pinpoints where a massive socket would otherwise be. It had no nose, no hair, no real chin, and two holes where our cheeks would be. I'm guessing that it might be a mouth, but hell if I know. The head was thin, because of course it was thin, and resembled somewhat of an oblong pancake. The whole thing had white skin with a gray undertone, or what I assumed to be such given the lighting in the room. The creature held out its hand, and instinctively I held it. It walked me out of the room, stark naked, and was leading me to my living room. When I get into my hallway, I see all the doors in my house are open, and there are a dozen of these things just sort of mulling about. I remember one looking into our linen closet, one walking into our basement, and another unscrewing a light bulb. All over the house were the discs that gave everything that faint red tint and the huge stadium lights from outside, making it look like broad daylight, but with a slight red tint. In the dining room was my mother, also stark naked, kind of just standing there, as two of these creatures were in my kitchen doing something. Lying on the couch in the living room was my dad, again naked, with three of the creatures looming over him, with a bunch of weird tools in their hands. I can assume doing some kind of procedure. I remember asking, where is my sister? To which I got the reply, outside, from the creature holding my hand. I'm still unsure if this was telepathic or if the creature said something out of its uncomfortable holes, but I accepted that as good enough of an answer. As I walked by my dad, I could see that the creatures were fiddling with him, poking and prodding him. I remember being concerned, as I know that my dad had just had a surgery, but I again got the feeling that it would be fine. The creature I was with placed me in the corner of the room, facing the wall, and I sat down cross-legged without much issue. The creature then left and I was there for about a minute or so. All I can remember from that time is a few details. Above me was one of the discs, shining its broad red light, but I had the faint blue as well, giving my vision an odd hue. The only other distinguishing feature I remember is the silence. The piercing and utter silence, only broken by that soft, low, growling hum coming from outside. I remember then waking up, back in my bed, no worse for wear. 
All I think is, damn, that was a realistic dream, and went about my day. The only difference is I had, and still have, a small lump on the back of my neck the size of a split pea. It comes and goes. Sometimes I feel it, and sometimes I don't. And a few times I've squeezed it, and some dry, powdery substance came out. I just assumed it was some weird medical thing, but if it ever happens again, I might try to get it looked at. A few years go by, and my dad and I were chatting. We got on the topic of aliens, one of his personal favorites. I tell my dad about the multi-jointed creature thing, and before I can even get to the point in my story where I reach the living room, he goes, Man, I had a dream like that. A bunch of skinny white men with hoods were poking me. Right after that surgery, there was a red hue all over everything. I remember seeing them sit you in a corner and you just sort of stayed there for a bit. Crazy dreams, huh? I asked if it seemed real to him, and he said, Well, yeah. I've had those dreams ever since I was a kid. The white guys in hoods never do anything interesting. This was the only time. Our brains are weird, aren't they? I've brought it up a few times since, but I don't get a whole lot more than what I've already told you. My sister has somewhat of a similar story, but she remembers like three seconds of it. I have maybe two minutes. The best guess I have is aliens, and this is far from the only time that I've encountered these creatures, but I'll save that story for another day. I come from a relatively small island in the southern part of Denmark, with approximately 6,000 inhabitants, which is where all of the following sightings have taken place. Most of the island is covered by fields. I have no doubt that these events are 100% true, and not just made up. One has to understand that in such a small community, if you report seeing UFOs or other such things, you risk being labeled as the crazy guy seeing aliens and stuff and could potentially be publicly ridiculed and made fun of, especially as a younger person. All of these people told me that they kept shut for many years in fear of being called out. Therefore, local people would likely not share such stories if they weren't 100% true. Why risk being publicly made a fool of for a lie? As they've grown older, I guess they begin to care less about what people might think. The first story was my father, Around the mid-80s on a warm summer night, my father was in his 20s and sat outside looking at the night sky. Suddenly, a white orb appeared. Across the night sky, it appeared to be about the size of the moon and moved slowly from north in a straight line directly south. He never talked about it due to the fear of being called crazy. A couple of days later, he was visiting my grandmother's hair salon when an elderly woman started describing the exact same sighting. He then shared his own experience with my grandmother and the lady. It turned out that four or five people had seen this orb moving across the sky. The second event was described to me by a close friend of my father's and is somebody that I know very well. This was around 2005 or 2006. He was standing in his kitchen around midday. The window in his kitchen overlooks a large field. At one point, he looks out his window and sees a large, white, glowing orb, similar to the one described by my father. But it wasn't moving. It just hovered close above the ground. And then, it suddenly shoots up into the sky, and is gone. He also kept shut about it for several years before telling anybody. The last sighting is, to me, the strangest. This happened in around 1990. The person who told me the story is a good friend of one of my own friends. He told me that at the time that he was 11 or 12 years old, he was playing in his room with a friend. He lived on a small farm and from his room, he had a good overlook of some fields. He could see relatively far away from where his room was. At some point, they both looked out the window. Out in the middle of one of the fields stood a large structure shaped like a pyramid. It appeared to have an opening or an entrance. They stared at it as the opening began to close. As the entrance closed, the pyramid suddenly shot up into the sky and was gone. 
He told me if it wasn't that he had had another person see it with him, he never would have told anybody about it, because it just sounded too crazy. Still, they both kept shut about it for several years, and he says that he hasn't told many people about this encounter. What do you think? Maybe somebody has reports of experiencing something similar in Denmark. I'm not really sure what this was, but I vividly remember a situation that happened to me when I was younger. I do remember watching some kind of alien horror story on Animal Planet or something at night about how a lady went to space and then had something in her stomach that was alien-like and it exploded or something. I don't exactly remember everything. I had seen this before I went to bed a couple of nights prior. This was maybe when I was younger than 10 years old and I slept with my mom in my bed, and we lived on the second floor with a window by my head. I remember waking up and all of a sudden seeing green light, and I heard some weird noises. I was so scared. I tried to wake up my mom, but she wouldn't answer. I know we had a light by the back side of the apartment, because we had a porch, but this was like a green color that kept turning on and off, pulsating like every five to 10 seconds. I also heard a whirring sound, but not really. I do remember that the light wasn't like the porch light. It seemed much bigger and more illuminating through my window, but I couldn't check because we had an awning. I don't remember much of it since it's been over 10 years, but I just remember being so scared. I don't know if I imagined it, but I do remember waking and just covering my head with the blanket wishing it would go away. It seemed like it was hours before it stopped, and then I went back to bed and woke up again. Luckily, nothing has ever happened since, and we've moved apartments. I've had sleep paralysis before. I get it like once every two years. But every time that happens, I wake up in the same spot where I'm paralyzed. The first time I slept on the couch after a long day at school and saw a dark figure opening the window and walking toward me. I woke up at the same spot I'd fallen asleep in and nothing happened. The second time I was sleeping in my room, Friday night, and I saw a woman with a knife coming for me and cutting my hand. I woke up in the same spot I'd fallen asleep in and again, nothing happened. But the third time is something that I think is pretty insane. The third time, I don't think it was sleep paralysis at all, but a memory that came back. I was at my girlfriend's house and I was sleeping on my left side. My girl is next to me on the right. She was awake. She tries to wake me up, but I fall asleep again. And then I felt like I was lost in a deep, forgotten memory. My girlfriend and I were messing around with our speaker that we have. It has multiple options like Bluetooth and aux. While trying to change stations, we're engaging with a new sound like space radio or something like that. When you hear a lot of strange single noises of different electronic devices, it's like that. The second that hits, I'm getting kicked back by gravity into the bed, laying down, paralyzed on the right side of the bed, when my girlfriend is sitting on my right at the edge of the bed, looking straight down, with her hand leaning onto the bed, paralyzed as well. When this happens, I hear a loud, deep, mixed voice, not humans, but speaking in English, which is not my native language. It was inside my head, but it was also so loud that I can't think of anything else. All I hear, like it's some really important message, is the world, the will, over and over again. It was like they wanted me to remember this somehow, but chose to bring that experience to me just at that moment. The voice in my head was strong, but I shivered. I felt like somebody was tasering my head. I felt like I wasn't in control. 
I somehow understood that my brain couldn't take it anymore, and I was trying to wake up, but nothing helped. Until I suddenly wake up, stressed out and reaching for my girlfriend, asking her if I was talking in my sleep, or moving, or doing anything that showed signs of a nightmare. But nothing. She says I was sleeping like a baby right next to her. I found nothing about the world the will, but I believe that it was a real encounter. My girlfriend doesn't remember any of it, but it's terrifying just to think about it. After all, it might be a memory of mind control or aliens or something. Or it could just be a really bad sleep paralysis dream, but I don't think so. The red light that was around this whole situation is the fact that I wasn't at the same side of the bed, and I always wake up at the same spot I get paralyzed in when I have sleep paralysis. I have two reasons for sharing this story. One of them is to see if anyone else has encountered this message, the world, the will. Maybe it's something from a movie that I heard once, or maybe it's something else. The other reason, I guess, is just to see if anybody knows what I might have experienced. If you have any ideas, please let me know. A few nights ago, around 5.30 in the morning, I noticed a green light in my room near the wall across from me. I had all of my lights off and was just looking at my laptop, which I closed when I noticed the light. The room was completely dark, no lights on, door closed, blackout blinds, no phone flashlight on. When I saw it, I wasn't scared, but I felt almost hypnotized and placated by its presence but I did want to take some video to make sure that the object or being was real. I saw the light moving around my room for approximately 30 minutes. Sometimes it moved slowly and organically. At other times it flitted away quickly and the movement appeared similar to a drone. And sometimes it stopped in one place for several seconds. At first, it seemed like a single point of light but at points in the video, it splits into two pieces. At some points, a red light flashes very briefly as well. I also didn't notice or see this at the time of the event, but in some of the videos, there appear to be grayish figures around the edges or corners of the frame, or the entire screen will go from black to gray and vice versa. I held the phone still while filming it and just waited for it to come in and out of frame. In the last video that I took, the light flashes insanely quickly, appearing in one place, disappearing, and then reappearing in another spot in less than a second. I don't really remember waiting for it to go away or anything. I just stopped taking video and went to sleep. What do you think? While on vacation in Japan last year, I stayed at an Airbnb near the Daigo Shrine in Kyoto. On my last night in town, I came back to my Airbnb at about 11.40 p.m. on a Monday night. Mind you, I had no alcohol or drugs in my system when this happened, and I was wide awake. There's a shrine that you have to walk past on a walkway that goes to and from the Airbnb to other areas of town. It was three city blocks long by two blocks going both sides. As the layout goes, there were ditches at the foot of the walls, followed by a row of plants alternating all the way down. And then there was a walkway in the middle with a museum on the right, a whole shrine and palace at the fork. I walk into the walkway of the shrine and I ask myself this question. Why are there two kids hopping a wall? As I see these two little figures hop the wall to my right, I pause and watch what's happening. As they both get down, they run across the path and run all the way to the end of the path by the fork and wait there. I was walking single file. They stand there for a few minutes. 
I walk a little closer because that was the way to the Airbnb, and I make eye contact with these things. They were about three to four feet tall, very slim but proportionate, with a bigger head and pointed ears, as white as snow. Their eyes were as big as our eye sockets, but black. Normally you can tell if someone is wearing clothes at a small distance. I was maybe 15 to 20 yards from them, but they had no sign of clothing. After making eye contact, both of them go running around the corner that I had to turn. You could also see their shadows on the walls behind them. But I slowed down to give these things space. I was freaking out a little bit at this point. As I turned the corner, they were gone. I'm walking back to my Airbnb and I sensed that I was being followed, but I couldn't hear or see anything. I have no idea what I saw. Aliens? Something else? I don't know. So, for context, it was pretty late at night, but I don't remember the exact time. It was around 12 a.m. to 2 a.m. I was with my boyfriend in the car. We were just sitting and talking before he went home. But as we were talking, I was sitting in the passenger seat, so my body was directed toward him, and the road that I used to live on was behind him as well. We're in mid-conversation, when I see a figure walk past on the other side of the road, going toward a park I lived near. It was just right around the corner from that road. This figure was pretty tall. Not inhumanly tall, but definitely taller than the average person. And it was completely all white. Not glowing, but was a super bright white that I could see perfectly, even though it was dark. It looked as if it had no clothes on, but honestly it didn't need it. I didn't see any details on the body, or body parts or any muscle definition. The limbs were thick in the sense that they just looked like cylinders, but wasn't thicker than the body itself. The neck wasn't inhumanly skinny, but definitely a bit thinner than I think a normal person has. The head was rather small, but again, not inhumanly small, just oddly proportioned for the height of this thing. The whole time, I was speechless. It wasn't a small glance. I stared at this figure walking for a solid minute or so. My boyfriend didn't realize since we were mid-conversation until he saw the look I had on my face. And by then it had turned the corner. He didn't see it at all since his body was directed toward me. I went to a family member about it who lived with me at the time. And she had a story of her own about weird paranormal experiences at the park that it was walking to. Hers was a bit different. It was the same with plain white figures, but instead it was more than one, and their heads were spinning. She and her friends ran home immediately after seeing them. Obviously I can't confirm her story because I wasn't there, but I thought it might provide context. If you have any idea what this might be, let me know. This happened in Calaveras Big Trees National Park in the Sierra Nevada Mountains of California on Highway 4. There's an overlook that affords a vista of the Stanislaus River Valley. For those familiar with the park, it is where Oak Trees Parkway turns into Big Trees Parkway. As you drive from the park entrance and head down into the valley toward the campgrounds, my father, my little sister, and myself at 12 years old were in my father's truck headed up the hill away from the campgrounds, driving toward the park entrance with the intention of going shopping in nearby Arnold. As we came upon this overlook, I saw at least four or five cars parked on either side of the road. There were a good number of people standing around and looking into the valley at something. The next thing I know, I was gradually coming to consciousness from some sort of stupor or hypnotic state. It was like gradually awakening from anesthesia. I was sitting straight up and my eyes were open. 
I looked around the cab of the truck. My dad was driving and my sister was sitting there. Both were in a kind of trance state, not really saying anything. After about a minute, they also started moving around like normal and talking. We had exited the park and driven down Highway 4 almost to Arnold, a distance of about six miles, and all of us are missing that time. If I remember correctly, half an hour to 45 minutes was missing. I don't know if it's simply missing time or a potential alien abduction, and I don't know what everybody was looking at, but we still can't explain it to this day. When I was little, probably eight years old, my family and I were driving back home from my grandparents' house late at night. They live in the countryside, surrounded by orange groves and corn stalks. I remember being so excited to be out at night. There was no moon though, so looking out the window was a little bit scary since I was looking directly into darkness. I could only see a little bit ahead of me because of the car headlights. When we were passing the corn stalks, I saw a person with black eyes that glowed from the headlights. This person had a weirdly shaped body. They weren't wearing any clothes either, but I don't remember seeing any other body parts besides arms and legs. When I saw it, I got this overwhelming sense of fear. I was so scared that I slid down in the seat to hide from it when we passed by. My parents didn't see it, and I never mentioned it until years later. I'm not sure what it could have been, and I'm still trying to figure that out. Maybe it was a child, maybe it was my imagination, or maybe it was an alien. I've never seen anything like it after that. It was just that one time, but it definitely stuck with me. On two occasions, my friend and I were in separate rooms of our housing complex. This friend lived on the second floor, while I resided on the fourth. The first time the humming started was one night at around 3.35 a.m. This humming noise started to fill the room, and at first I thought it was my roommate snoring. I thought this until the noise kept going and getting louder. It was so loud that my head was hurting and then it slowly went away. I thought I was going crazy, until my friend texted me from the second floor and was like, what the actual hell was that? I thought nothing of it until about a month later when it happened again. This time, it got much louder at a much faster rate. It was so loud that my bed and belongings started to shake. This time, it was around 12.30 on a weekday. I was pretty scared, not gonna lie, and after two minutes of this sound and shaking it quickly went away. The weirdest part is that the first time the sound went from left to right, getting louder and quieter. The second time it was down and up. Anyway, I'm not a big believer in aliens, but I don't really know what to think about this. Maybe it was. As a side note, my social media months before was only alien spam, even though I never talk about them or search for it, not even for space. Once I openly started talking about aliens and researching Orion's belt, all of the alien spam went away, and nothing even related to aliens comes up on my feed anymore. Kind of backwards from how that's supposed to work. Anyway, I just want to hear others' thoughts about it. The mind is a funny place, and it creates a lot of weird, untrue stuff. Here are two related true stories or dreams that have stuck with me for more than a decade, vivid enough that I flip-flop in my mind whether they were even real today. 
My family had a house in a rural part of Massachusetts and a train track into the woods, maybe a half mile from us. One night, I had a dream of a light shining into my wooded bedroom window and figures outside. That same dream appeared to fast forward, and my family and I were all walking in the middle of the night down our rural street. We didn't talk, but I remember feeling the base of the back of my neck was off, felt stiff in the dream. The dream skips forward, and we were at the train tracks. My family and I again say nothing, quietly walking down the tracks. They feel real. I've walked these tracks many times, hanging with friends during the day or sneaking out at night. At the time, I knew them well. We enter the woods some way down, thick, dark brush in the dead of night. My family is with me. We move quietly. I have a grandma who is elderly and a sister who is well able but has Down syndrome. We all traverse hyper-realistic woods arriving at a clearing. Wind rushes in my ears and I hear my grandmother screaming. There are bright lights, so bright. There's a feeling of wind as I open my eyes and I am at the field at the bottom of my parents' home. The sound disappears and I remember feeling like I had wires out of the base of my neck. I rub it, but there's nothing there. My family and I walk up the hill and I wake up. My mom says she didn't sleep very well that night, but that's about it. I chalk it up to a random dream. Two or three years later, my family camps in Lake Placid, New York. We rented a towable pop-up trailer. As I dream one night, I feel the rush of wind. I wake up and see light shining into our trailer. It gets closer and I remember nothing. A loud gust of wind, my mother and I both shoot up from the dead of sleep in our trailer both staring at the door. We look at each other and discuss it. Like, thunder? Maybe? We go outside. It's a clear night. We joke about aliens a little bit and go back to bed. I've been uneasy since then at times over these thoughts. Years and years later, I can still remember the feeling of wires sticking out of my neck. How vivid the dream was of walking down the road. The feeling of missing time. I'll never know if these are dreams, or coincidence, or something else, but it's happier to think that they're just dreams. This happened a few months ago, and it's really been bugging me. I was out hiking and rappelling with a friend in the hills area near Tombstone. I want to mention that I have spent quite a bit of time solo hiking and camping. I'm used to hearing noises and brushing it off. Anyway, it's late afternoon and I'm the first one to rappel down. I got to the bottom and while my partner was getting ready to follow, we heard this noise that I would describe most like a growl or a snarl. It sounded like it was coming from the ridge above both of us. If facing the cliff, it sounded like it was coming from the right side. We both looked around, but didn't see anything. I encouraged him to come down, and I even half joked that it was probably just a bear or a mountain lion. At that point, I wasn't even feeling that nervous. I figured that once the two of us were together again, we would be pretty intimidating to an animal. While he rappelled down, I heard a loud crash to what seemed to be parallel to me on my left. By this point, I'm starting to get pretty scared because this sound was getting closer and closer. Somehow, it had gone from right to left on an exposed cliff face without either of us seeing it. He successfully rappelled down and we both agreed we needed to get out of there. We still had a steep downhill climb to the car. We packed up the gear as fast as we could. As we get our packs back on, we heard what sounded to me like a howler monkey. The noise was close and we still couldn't see what was making it. Of course, it was from the direction that we needed to go. We hauled butt down that mountain and got in the car. I know that it can be pretty easy to let the mind play tricks, but we have the exact same account of what happened. 
both of us are really familiar with what's out there, and we've never heard anything like it. Now this is the part that I hesitate to tell, because I know it sounds even more insane. But we both heard whispering and giggling, like it was right next to us, but we still couldn't see anything. I keep trying to explain to myself that our minds just played a trick. The same trick, but a trick. The first noise I would chalk up to maybe a bear or a mountain lion. Animals are stealthy. They could run in front of us without us noticing, I guess. Something else could have fallen to the right side. What made that monkey noise, though? I don't know. And why do we both say we heard whispering? I don't know. I don't know if anybody else has creepy experiences in Arizona. I want to believe somebody was just pranking us, but there wasn't a single other car in the parking area. My friend believes that we experienced something supernatural. I honestly have no idea what to think. This happened two summers ago. It's short, but confounding. I was with two friends in my truck. I was driving, and it was dark, but not necessarily late, probably about 10 p.m. We were traveling to Page, Arizona, Lake Powell area, from Durango, Colorado, and we had to pass through Cayenta, Arizona, part of the Navajo Reservation. Now, I had been to Cayenta before several years prior with a friend of mine who grew up there. We spent an entire day just having a great time with his people. But as soon as the sun started dropping, his mother and grandmother were insisting that we get off the reservation before dark. I knew it had a reputation for the weird, as many reservations do at night. At least that's what I'm told. Flash forward to this trip, and my two friends and I are in the truck. It's a long, straight, unlit, two-lane road with classic red desert on both sides in the daylight anyway. Not that we could see that at night. There's another vehicle coming the opposite way, and there's no crossroad in that stretch. That's important, because right before we go past each other, something I can only describe as metallic went streaking right between us, perpendicular, like feet away from both of our bumpers. It looked to be about the size of an SUV, no lights or discernible shape, but it seemed smooth. It's a weird comparison, but that speeding bullet in Mario Kart is actually what came to mind when it happened. All three of us saw it, and I think the other people did too, because I saw them hit the brakes in the rear view. It was super weird, and I still don't really know how to explain it. I live in England in a two-story flat, and I've always believed in the paranormal. But my dad does not believe in any type of ghost, or anything paranormal. I never thought that this flat was haunted. However, as I got older, I started to feel uncomfortable by myself, and I would see shadows downstairs, out of the corner of my eye. Now, there is an attic directly above our second floor, but there's no way for us to enter it, as you can't access it from the flat. The only way to access this attic is by having a specific key that can open the attic, as it is Council Flats, which is above all my neighbor's house. However, the attic above my flat is the one which is blocked off, and there's no way to enter it. I have the last flat on the end of these 18 Council Flats. There are no neighbors above us, just the attic that nobody can access without that key and they still wouldn't be able to get above our flat. One night, about two years ago, all of the family was in bed. It was about three o'clock in the morning. All of a sudden, I heard something crash above us. It was so loud that it woke the entire family up, and we all got up and stood on the landing together. 
After the bang, we heard three loud footsteps and the sound of something being dragged behind those footsteps. It was so scary, especially since we knew that nobody could physically get up there. My dad was not convinced that it was a ghost. He thought that somebody, somehow, had gotten up into that attic. So he went outside to check to see if the communal attic door was opened. I followed him outside, and it was completely padlocked shut, with heavy chains around the lock. I tried to explain to him, how can there be anyone up in our part of the attic when it's blocked off and impossible to get to? We came back into the house, and we were all pretty shaken up. My brother was quite young, and was able to get back to sleep, but I was awake all night, and found it very difficult to sleep. After this experience, I started to smell old cigarette smell every time I would enter the toilet area. It smelt so old and gross. After the event, my brother, my mom, and I were going away on holiday, whilst my dad had to stay there and work. He told me that he slept with headphones on every night, as even he felt uncomfortable by himself. I have no idea what those noises were. As a family, we still can't figure it out. And ever since then, we've heard many more strange noises. I went on a trip to Cambodia years ago to visit relatives. I was always a skeptic and a non-believer in anything paranormal. To this day, though, this is the experience that made me a believer. One night, my dad and I decided to stay at my cousin's house. They have a large, multi-level home outside the city of Phnom Penh, in a small village named Svai Rolom. The bedroom I was staying in was upstairs and had its own bathroom and I was excited to get cleaned up before dinner. As I was in the shower, soap in my hair, I heard somebody call my name. I don't respond right away because surely they can hear that I'm occupied and showering. A second later, I heard my name again, this time slightly louder and closer to the bathroom door. Annoyed, I turned off the water, grabbed a towel, and answered back, Yes? When I didn't get a response, I opened the door and looked around the bedroom. The bedroom door was closed and nothing had been moved. I assumed that whoever it was, they must have just left. After I finished my shower, I headed downstairs to the backyard where everybody was, and I asked who had just been looking for me because I heard somebody call my name while I was in the shower. Confused, Everybody said that they had all been sitting right where they were, just talking. I brush it off, thinking that maybe I was just exhausted from the day. It was a warm night, and there was a full moon out. So we enjoyed our dinner outside. The electricity turns off all throughout the village at a certain time, and it doesn't come back on until morning. So I headed to my room when we had 15 minutes left so that I could get ready for bed. I was exhausted, and I quickly fell asleep. In the middle of the night, I woke up to find that I couldn't breathe. I could move, but I couldn't breathe. I was choking for what seemed like a few seconds. Suddenly, I was able to breathe again, and I calmed down. I fell back asleep, only to suddenly wake up choking again. This time it seemed slightly longer than the last. I panicked and sat up in bed, trying to gasp for air. When my breath finally came back, I stood up and walked around the room, wondering what was going on with me. I had never had an episode like that. I was young, in excellent health. What could it be? After about 30 minutes, I was starting to feel sleepy once more, so I laid down. Once again, I woke up and it was happening all over. I'm gasping for air. I sit up in bed and I still can't breathe. I quickly sprung out of bed and I was still choking. My breath hadn't come back. And just as I thought I was going to pass out, I was able to breathe again. 
The moonlight was bright and was coming through the window. As I was standing there, catching my breath, I thought I saw a shadow quickly move across the wall in front of me. I sat in bed, and for the first time in a long time, I said a prayer. When I started to feel calmer, I went back to sleep. Nothing happened for the rest of the night. The next morning, I decided not to tell anybody about what had happened the night before. We had a busy day. There was a Buddhist ceremony at the house and a blessing. I was meeting with friends of family and other relatives, and toward the end of the day, I was talking to my older cousin, who's from the United States. She tells me that the monks are there blessing the house because there might be some restless spirits. She went on, giving me an example of the very room that I was staying in that belongs to my other cousin. He refuses to stay in that room at night because he always hears somebody calling his name and pulling at his legs in the night. That was the last night that I stayed in that house. I've been hearing knocks coming from the attic and from the walls for a while now. Recently, they've been happening coincidentally right under me. I'll move to one area, and it will happen there. And then, on a separate occasion, I'll be in an entirely different room, and still, it will knock above me or below me. I've had a history of sleep deprivation, anxiety, and depression. I've heard my name whispered in my ear, and something whisper, help me. It sounded like some kind of zombie. Recently, I've been having terrifying hallucinations. As I'm about to cross into the first stage of sleep, I always feel or hear something that wakes me up immediately, back and forth from being awake to the entering of the first stage of sleep. I feel something tug at my pillow and the mattress moving as if somebody's trying to lift it. Eventually, I figured all of this was a hallucination for multiple reasons. I've recorded when I felt something push the pillow behind me and there's nothing there. On other occasions, I have felt tremors caused by my body and shaking that felt exactly like what I thought something else was causing. But the noises and seeing things move on their own has been happening for a while now way before my hallucinations. And those happened out of nowhere. I usually only have motion hallucinations, rather than seeing or hearing things. The knocking is really freaking me out. Could it be possible that I'm hallucinating all of this? Or is it actually real? Either way, it doesn't matter. I've told my parents about the experiences I've had, but they keep denying that it's real. I'm tired of living in fear. If anybody has any idea how to ignore it or get rid of it, I'd love to know. I'm from the small country of Bangladesh, and whenever I go to visit, my cousins and family members like telling us stories about all the paranormal things that they've encountered or heard about. They don't have any physical evidence, but they've all claimed to have had experiences with the paranormal. One of the stories I've commonly heard about are old trees, usually willows, sometimes banana trees, around lakes or rivers. It's believed that when a young maiden dies near the tree, their soul resides there. The deaths are usually drowning, unaliving someone else, or unaliving oneself. It is only during dawn when she said that the souls start to bother people. She said that hauntings behave like sirens do. To men who pass by a haunted tree during the dawn hours, they appear as very beautiful women. To women, they appear as a sad, lost little girl. When someone approaches them, they stay in their form. But whenever the person is at arm's length, they become demonic and angry and try to harm the person. 
Some people even claim to be possessed by those souls and get exorcisms performed. A lot of my family members are skeptical about the stories and don't believe them. But if they're outside around dawn, I'll watch them go out of their way to go all the way around an old tree near a lake or a river. So, I don't know how much they really don't believe in. I've never seen or experienced this, but I've had several people tell me the same story, independent of one another. So, I thought it would be interesting to share. I'm from Singapore. I was lying on the living room sofa in the dark, on my own, just flipping through Reddit on my phone. It was connected to the charger and the plug was right below the sofa as I had the extension all the way. Then something got caught on the charger cable and the phone got pulled out of my hand and onto the floor. I couldn't see what was behind my phone while reading due to the light from it and the darkness in the background. At first I thought it might have just been my cat walking past, but she was asleep on my feet. The light that now illuminated the floor showed nothing. I thought I must have just gotten caught on something, so I brushed it off. Not ten seconds later, as I settled back onto the sofa, my phone got yanked right out of my hand again, and this time it flew a little farther away, as far as the USB cable could go. That area was now illuminated, but it too showed nothing. Nothing that could have caused the phone to be pulled that far anyway. Just an empty floor with nobody and nothing around. My family has experienced paranormal activity. We were living abroad in Southeast Asia, where spirituality is an integral part of life. We moved into a building on a hill overlooking the jungle when I was three, in an affluent neighborhood of the country's capital city. The building had many apartments and one big house at the bottom of the hill, which is where we lived. When I was five, we were hosting a dinner party, when all of a sudden we hear a bang. A guest bathroom, with doors on opposite sides of the room, had shut and locked itself on both sides. My dad had to use a screwdriver to open the lock, and there was nobody and nothing to be found inside. Creepy, right? It gets worse. My auntie came to visit shortly after and she claimed to see an old woman every night wandering the top floor of the house. An entity my mom told me a few weeks ago she would often see when we lived there. The spirits were not malevolent, but seemed disturbed apparently. Before we left, we got a monk to come and check the place out. He said that the building had been constructed on top of an old Buddhist burial site, something that is not usually allowed and the spirits were not able to rest peacefully. Furthermore, he indicated that the banana tree outside of our kitchen was a hub for spirits to hang out. My parents confronted the landlord, who confirmed that the place was haunted. I'm not very spiritual at the moment, but some odd stuff has happened. My parents now always practice feng shui in our house. We moved back to said country a few years later, and we went to visit the place. I was 12 at the time. Sure enough, the building was completely abandoned and the landlord had put it up for sale. This is my dad's experience. My dad grew up in Indonesia, and he told me about this time that he and a friend were traveling to another province for work. It took a day or so to get there, 
and after driving their van all day, they needed to spend the night somewhere. They stopped at some kind of local inn and asked how much it would be for the night. The owner said that it was much cheaper that day of the week and asked if they were sure that they wanted to stay there that night. This was because previous guests had said that on that day of the week, they would hear banging on the doors and loud footsteps walking toward the bed they were sleeping in. Well, my dad and his friend didn't believe in ghosts or anything, so they decided to stay the night because it was cheap and better than spending a night in the van. As they started to go to sleep, it was all quiet for a couple of hours until they heard banging on the door, which woke them up. My dad and his friend immediately thought that the staff were playing a prank, so they checked the door, but nobody was there. They were a little bit spooked, but they tried going back to sleep. After about 20 minutes or so, they heard the door handle rattle, and then they heard the locked door open. Both of them were frozen and hid their faces under their sheets. They then heard heavy footsteps, like somebody was wearing boots, walking closer to the bed. Neither of them wanted to look, but my dad decided to rip the sheet off and see what it was. He told me that when he ripped the sheets off, he glanced what was there. It was a figure of a man, maybe in his early 40s, wearing extremely dirty clothing and boots. The man's face was extremely pale, and he just stared at my dad. My dad tried to scream, but he couldn't, and eventually his friend had a look at the figure. They were both just speechless. After a few moments, all they could really do was cover their faces. They went back under their sheets, and when they did, they heard the door slam, but no footsteps leading up to it. After a couple of minutes, they checked to see if it was still there, but it was gone. They immediately grabbed their backpacks and left the place and just kept driving. After that incident, my dad is a very strong believer in ghosts. Back when I was a kid, we used to spend summers on an island called Mindoro. It was an underdeveloped province from the Philippines, and it tended to have folklore around Oswangs. One of the more famous ones was the Nuno Sapunso. It's a dwarf-like creature that lives in a punso, or a termite mound. As a kid growing up near Manila, these folklore weren't something we really believed in. Well, one time, being the kid I was, I pissed on a punso as I was making fun of it, taunting the Nuno. Next day, I had a pretty high fever. A week passed and it never went away. We went to an albulario, a shaman, and he told me that the Nuno got mad and we had to give an offering, so that's what we did. I think my grandma gave it fruit or nuts or something, but I can't remember. After that, my fever eventually died away. It definitely taught me a lesson or two about being respectful. This happened in 2009 during my summer holiday when I was eight years old. As we had done for many years, my family and I went to Cordoba, Argentina and rented a cabin. Strange things often happened at that cabin, like objects moving around, strange noises, or even items that just disappeared. One night, I was sleeping when I suddenly got up in the middle of the night. I looked in front of me and there was an old, creepy woman who was just staring at me. She didn't say a word, so I just closed my eyes and when I opened them, she was gone. I ran to my father's bedroom and told my parents, but of course they didn't believe me. About two years ago, we went to those cabins again. 
One day, I struck up a conversation with the owner, and he was telling me about some strange noises he had heard that night. Surprised, I told him about the creepy vision that I had had. He just answered, You are not the first one that that has happened to. Many people have reported having visions of an old woman or a girl who stares at them in the night. In Southeast Asian culture, there's a particular ghost or demon that has its head detached from its body. It floats around with the intestines floating around below it, and apparently it glows. If you're Cambodian, you would know it by the name of Arb or Op. I believe in Thai it's called Krasue. You can Google it and get a good picture. Anyway, during high school, I was hanging out with a group of my friends who were all Southeast Asians. We were hanging out really late into the night, probably about 1 or 2 a.m., just drinking and overall just talking about random crap in the parking lot of an apartment complex. One of the guys, real tough dude that was physically bigger than us and never afraid to throw it down against others, had to go relieve himself. He went to the side of the apartments where there were no lights. After a minute or so, we just heard this loud yell of, oh shit. Dude literally ran back to us with his pants still unbuttoned and unzipped, with his pants covered in urine. The look on his face was one of sheer terror. We asked him what had happened, and he told us that he saw an op floating around. Feeling pretty uneasy about the whole thing, the other guys pulled out their guns. We waited for not even three minutes before finally just heading back home. When the older folks in the complex heard about it, they mentioned that one of the residents was practicing some kind of black magic and that maybe she had conjured it, but no one's ever really done anything about it. I mean, what can they do, right? Everybody suspected this girl, but no one really knows. The weird thing, though, is that she died later, and nobody ever knew why. My mom is Filipino and this is one of the stories that she told me. In Philippine folklore, the most feared creature is an aswan. More specifically, a mananangal. Think of it like a vampire, but it prefers to eat the unborn. I believe Malaysia and Indonesia have similar creatures, but don't quote me. It's the ones that take on the form of beautiful women then detach their torsos from their lower body and have wings to fly about. Anyway, when my mom was pregnant with my brother, she took the precautions necessary to ward off the aswang, like sleeping with garlic, even though we were staying with my aunt and uncle in Oceanside, California. She woke up during the night and she was bleeding heavily. My dad took her to the hospital on a nearby military base. They treated it and my brother was all right, but the doctors informed my parents that they could find no cause and no source for the bleeding. It gave me shivers. There's more. My grandmother woke up in the morning complaining about how she couldn't sleep because there was some kind of bird being loud outside her window. Hers is the room next to the one that we were staying in. She said that the bird was making a constant wak wak sound. And this is the sound that the men and Gaul are known to make. In 2014, my grandmother turned 86. She lives in Vietnam, and we live in Canada, 
but we decided that that should be the year we finally visited. It was my first time visiting my ancestral homeland. We've never really been able to afford a family trip to Vietnam before, but my mom convinced my dad, since she hadn't seen my grandmother, her mom, since 2006 when she visited us in Canada. We bought tickets in April and scheduled for August. Unfortunately, my grandmother passed away in June. It sucked. Hard. Anyway, the Vietnamese have this superstition that for 49 days after someone dies, their spirit is still hanging around our mortal plane, waiting to be judged or reincarnated or whatever. So maybe three weeks after she died, one of my aunts was just tending to her market stall per usual. This frail old woman, most likely homeless, suddenly walks up to the stall. She starts talking to my aunt, saying something along the lines of, I'm sorry, sweetheart. I didn't want to leave you all so early. Speaking distinctly in a maternal tone, almost on the verge of tears. It was pretty shocking and unexpected, obviously. Right after she said that, the old woman's whole body shook. A couple of seconds later, this lady regained her senses, looked around kind of confused, and walked off. My aunt told us this when we visited in August, and I couldn't sleep that night, so thanks for that, auntie. They also believe that my grandmother chose to speak to my aunt through the old woman, because frail, weak people close to death themselves are believed to be easier to take control of. That's about all I know about that, but I thought I'd share. When my family still lived in Vietnam, my sister was led into the ocean by something. We still don't know what it is. She was neck deep, and people kept calling her frantically, but there was no reaction. Somebody ran into the water and had to pull her out. She remembers nothing. My parents took her to a shaman type person, and they said that my sister and the ocean are not friends, and it would most likely be how she died. My parents are refugees. They came over to New Zealand on a boat with my siblings. My sister and my brother almost died on that boat. They're still alive and healthy today, but it's interesting in context of what that shaman said. It's still one of the scariest things that's ever happened to our family though, just watching her walk into that ocean like she was being called. Growing up, my family seemed to have a knack for picking haunted houses or haunted locations. Being a military kid was part of that. We got sent to old parts of the bases that we lived in all the time. One was the entire section of houses, which was haunted by what the wives and my mom deduced was some kind of civil war general. There was one base in particular that we lived on twice in my life. This was the second time when I had studied more of the paranormal, and it was really interesting. It was a young house, one of the newer ones, which had been built in the span between when we had moved from and back to the base. My old childhood home was long gone, but my mom still thinks the general makes his rounds. This house had something else. Both my mom and I have a knack for telling if a house is haunted. To us, it won't feel empty. A haunting, free house feels more like a vacuum of space. I always get the sense that something will peek around the wall at me when I look through the windows, if something's there. At the house we lived in, I would always get the sensation that something was standing behind me. Like in the horror movies, where you see the ghost behind the character, but then they stand up and it's gone. For fun, I called the ghost Johnny, as in Johnny Rebel, 
seeing as how it was Virginia and probably another Civil War ghost. One night, I was laying in bed, and I heard what sounded like pacing up in the attic area. It was frantic pacing, like someone was unhappy with something or panicked. The activity was ramping up a little, so my mom and I did a mini investigation. We opened up the attic door, and my mom stuck her head up there. Immediately, she called down to my dad, asking if he had put the Christmas decorations up there. He did, and we both shared a knowing look. She took the decorations down, and the activity immediately settled down. When my dad was promoted, we were moved to a new house just a short walk from the old one. My mom came to me one day and said that she had had a dream. In her dream, it was the dining room from the previous house, and a little boy was sitting at the table, dressed in 18th century clothing. She said he looked up and had blood coming from his eyes and mouth. She started yelling at him to leave. She said that he looked startled and said, but I don't want to leave. We both agreed it was an odd dream, and as I thought about it, I looked up yellow fever, knowing that it was a sickness prominent during that time frame that the boy looked to be a part of. I didn't think it would turn up what I found. Not only had there been a yellow fever epidemic in that area in the 1800s, but there were two stages of the disease. If you got the second stage, you would bleed from the eyes and mouth. I told this to my mom, and we came to the conclusion that Johnny was probably not a Civil War soldier, but a little boy who died of a terrible disease and just wanted his space to be left alone. The most commonly known ghostly figure of Southeast Asia is the Pontiana. A Pontiana is basically a woman who has died during childbirth and haunts pregnant women to rip the child out of the womb. Another favorite prey is men. The Pontiana is able to disguise herself as a beautiful woman and will use this disguise to lure men to their deaths by digging into their stomachs with its sharp nails. I don't have any stories on those, but allow me to share a story that my cousins encountered in the mid-1990s. Malaysia is multicultural, so it's not unusual to see whole neighborhoods with a colorful array of different cultures and religious beliefs. During a particular month of every year, Taoists burn hell money for their departed loved ones in line with their practice of ancestor worship. The belief is simply that loved ones linger even after death, and by sending large amounts of hell money to be used in the afterlife, the departed can affect your fortunes. As such, getting in the way of burnt hell money is extremely taboo, even for non-believers. It's akin to taking the Bible out and peeing all over it. It may not mean anything to you, but it's highly disrespectful. People tend to adhere not just out of common decency, but also out of a strong belief that you will be haunted and your fortunes will suffer if you interfere. Burning hell money may be your religious right, but there's also etiquette to follow. Responsible worshippers usually burn the money in burners, but sometimes people want to save a few bucks, so they'll burn the money right in the middle of the sidewalk. I have lost count of the number of times that I've had to take a detour because somebody decided to use up the entire sidewalk for this event. My cousins at the time were Muslim and very young. They were not aware of the customs and cultures of their neighbors who were Taoists. It was at that time of the year again where people were burning hell money. My aunt let her kids outside to play and shortly after was horrified to find her two daughters kicking and playing amongst a pile of burnt hell money. Things went downhill from there. My aunt started feeling that the air in the house was just not quite right, and she would often find my cousins just sitting in the room, in the darkness, staring at the ceiling. 
When asked what they were looking at, the eldest cousin would simply reply, somebody's floating up there. It gradually got worse. One night, she was awoken to find the eldest girl screaming and yelling at something to keep away from her sister. But nothing was there, at least nothing that anyone else could see. Later on, the skin on their legs darkened as if it was bruised. They kept telling my aunt that their legs hurt all the time. It wasn't until my aunt visited a local medium, the encounter stopped. I wasn't there, so I can't vouch for anything, but my aunt is the sweetest lady I've ever known. And she's never lied to me before, at least not on that level. So I believe something happened. All this talk of hell money and the like might sound a little outrageous, but being born in Singapore, stories like these used to scare me as I was exposed to these customs and practices on a daily basis. Even now as a full-on atheist, I'm still very wary of stepping even accidentally on any offering that's meant for the dead. Back when my mom was a teenager, maybe a little younger, she lived in Cambodia around the 1970s. She went on a boat ride with her mom and some others to who knows where, she didn't really tell me. I guess it was a long trip because she said that she fell asleep. She woke up to her mom calling her name. She realized it was nighttime and they were still on the boat ride. Only her mom calls her by a certain nickname. She decided to go look for her mom while the voice continued to call her. Eventually, she did find her mom, but only to realize that her mom had been asleep this whole time. Most people were asleep except the crew. She woke up her mom and told her what had happened. Her mom said that there was a story about people hearing their names being called while they were out on the sea, the lake, or any body of water. If the person answers the call, they'll either be spirited away disappear, or be dragged and drowned in the water. It's a type of evil water spirit. It's a good thing she remained quiet, because neither of us would be here. There are many stories about people's names being called out or whispered. People say that they've been injured. Some say that they've gotten possessed, but bad things happen in general. This happens all over the world, which is kind of wild. Anyway, I've always thought about this story, and I just thought I'd share it. This is my mom's story from when she was a teenager in Malaysia during the 60s. She was the oldest girl in the family, with three older brothers and five younger sisters. All the brothers, my uncles, weren't there the night this happened. She doesn't remember where they went. It was in durian season and a school holiday, so my grandfather took them back home to my great-grandfather's house in the Malacca countryside. His house is located on a hillside, surrounded by forest, and it's the only house up on that hill. Our nearest neighbor is about a half a mile down the road. She and her younger siblings, along with her cousins, were looking for fresh, ripe durians that had fallen from the trees at night in their grandfather's orchard, just down the hill. They don't have any flashlights, so they tie up a bunch of dry coconut leaves together to make a huge torch. There are around 15 durian trees, but the oldest and biggest tree is about 200 meters 650 feet down from the house. It has a long and large horizontal branch that hangs out about six feet from the ground. The orchard was surrounded by palms, tall forest trees, and a huge bamboo forest, so it's quite dark during the daytime, much worse at night. During a full moon, 
The huge tree canopy only lets some of the moonlight pass through. It creates quite an eerie atmosphere, especially when there's fog. Anyway, they started searching for fallen fruits after lighting their huge torch. The fire was quite big and it illuminated a large area around them. Her sisters and cousins being kids, understandably excited about the prospect of finding fresh durians, were giggling and running around, chasing each other while searching for the fruits. They found a few fresh durians, but decided to search for more farther down the orchard, toward that big tree with the horizontal branch. My mother was standing right under that branch, her left hand holding up the huge fiery torch, and her right hand holding a couple of durians. None of them were looking up. They kept looking on the ground and searching. She was holding the torch high above her head, right next to that horizontal branch, when it happens. You know the sound you make when you're trying to blow out a fire on a lighted match or a candle in one strong, quick blow? That's exactly the sound that they heard from right above the horizontal branch on that tree. That's when the torch, with its huge fire, was extinguished. No human could extinguish that large fire in a single breath. And there was no chance that it was caused by a strong wind. The orchards were surrounded by thick forest, and there was no wind that night. Immediately when the torch went out, they all scampered uphill toward the house, dropping all the fruits that they had found behind them. They didn't even have time to cry. This intense feeling of fear and panic overwhelmed all of them, kicking up their adrenaline. They ran with all their might, and everybody squeezed through the kitchen door. My mother then slammed the door closed and immediately locked it. They all fell in a pile on the kitchen floor, hyperventilating, and then they started to cry. The commotion surprised everyone in the house. My great-grandfather, upon learning about what had happened, immediately recited some prayers and burned some incense to purify and shield the house to prevent whatever that thing on the tree was from entering. None of them could sleep that night. My mother told me that that was the last time they ever went out at night to search for durians. And this is also why they never let us go down to the orchard at night. I've lived in Malaysia for quite a while. I spent a significant portion of my childhood there too. Hontiana is a Malay favorite. I remember in 2000 to 2003, an incident occurred in Northern Malaysia that swept the entire nation. It was a Pontiana captured in graphic detail. It's a widely accepted Taoist Buddhist belief that if a loved one dies, in seven days, the spirit will return and say goodbye. In 2001, my great grand died, and seven days later, my aunt's maid claimed to have seen her walking around the house. The dogs reacted the same way that they would whenever she was around, too. Jungle spirits are also widely accepted. There are countless entities, but one I will never forget. In the jungle, one must always ask for permission before relieving oneself. One uncle I had scoffed at the idea, and during a camping trip, he disobeyed this. He died of an illness. Strangely, he was the only one of the group who passed away or got sick at all, and he was the only one who didn't ask permission. My family has experienced paranormal activity for a while. We were living abroad in Southeast Asia, where spirituality is an integral part of life. We moved into a building on a hill overlooking the jungle when I was three. It was an affluent neighborhood of the country's capital city. 
The building had many apartments and one big house at the bottom of the hill, which is where we lived. When I was five, we were hosting a dinner party when all of a sudden we hear a bang. A guest bathroom with doors on opposite sides of the room had shut and locked itself on both sides. My dad uses a screwdriver to open the lock, but there was nobody and nothing to be found inside. Creepy, right? But it gets worse. My auntie came to visit shortly after, and she claimed to see an old woman every night wandering the top floor of the house an entity that my mom told me a few weeks ago she would often see when we lived there. The spirits were not malevolent, but they seemed disturbed, and I would often see many black cats roaming around the outside. They didn't seem to belong to anybody. Before we left, we got a monk to come and check the place out. He said that the building had been constructed on top of an old Buddhist burial site, something that is typically not allowed and that the spirits were not able to rest peacefully. Furthermore, he indicated that the banana tree outside of our kitchen was a hub for spirits to hang out. My parents confronted the landlord, who confirmed that the place was haunted. I'm not very spiritual, but some odd stuff has happened in my life, including that. My parents now always practice feng shui in our house, and for what it's worth, they've had really good luck since then. We moved back to said country a few years later, and we went to visit the place. I was 12 at the time. Sure enough, the building was completely abandoned. The landlord had put it up for sale, and to my knowledge, it never did sell. I'm from Indonesia, and it's 1 a.m. here. My country is an archipelago, almost as big as Europe, with thousands of islands, if you count the small ones. There are many cultures here, and probably as many types of supernatural entities. One of them, though, specifically, is called Akuntilana. Basically, there are three kinds of entities, man-made, ghosts, or X-man, and non-human. Ghosts vary from your average haunting spirit to something more sinister, like a Pontiana or a Kuntilana. Non-humans are different species from the beginning. Man-made are entities created by people having certain supernatural abilities. These can range from non-sentient drones to shape-shifting humans, or humans that have mutated into something else, usually as part of a ritual to gain power. Phenomena happen so often here that it's rarer to find someone who doesn't believe in the supernatural than who does. I mean, many would claim that they don't, but true faith is tested while walking alone at night, right? If you go to a school, there's an 80% chance that it's haunted. My junior high, my high school, my undergraduate and graduate school were all haunted. Grad school was the most vivid, as many people stayed up late for assignments. It's common to spend the night at the hotel and hear the occupants of the next room drag their furniture all night long. I've had it happen to me four or five times. Then you'll ask and nobody was in that room. I've heard footsteps walking up and down the stairs next to my bedroom almost every night without an explanation, for months. Other people have heard it too. I've had many friends who can see things as well. One even had a boyfriend who, over time, gained the ability to sense things. I myself could see silhouettes, even in areas of the room where my eyes couldn't see. Like, behind me. I could still see them. It's hard to explain. It's gone or mostly diminished now anyway. All that to say, it is really haunted here.
When my friend and his brother were kids, they went on a trip to the Philippines to visit family. Their grandfather there had gifted them a slingshot. Boys being boys, they found a nearby tree outside of the house and started firing away. One of their relatives, I think auntie, told them to stop because the tree was inhabited by a duende. In Filipino folklore, duende can be any sprite-like creature, goblins, gnomes, elves. In this case, their family believed that it was a dwarf. Duende live in abandoned houses, mounds, and trees. They can bring good or bad luck depending on how they're treated. It's believed that if you provoke them, they can cause sickness or death. Well, neither of my friends decided to listen to their auntie's warning to stop using the tree as target practice. The next day, the older brother wakes up with a high fever and felt so weak that he couldn't even walk. The younger brother had a cut on his eye that was swollen to the point of where he couldn't even see out of it. Strange thing about the cut though, he said it wasn't painful at all. Their grandpa made an offering I think it was rose oil, and went to the tree to ask for forgiveness, then applied the oil to my friend's foreheads as well. The swelling subsided and the fever was gone almost instantly. And that's their story about the duende in the tree, who did not appreciate its home being used in such a way. This isn't my story, but it's something that happened to my parents just a bit ago. They live in Western New York, upstate, and are really open to all kinds of supernatural stuff. My dad has reason to believe in aliens for reasons other than this encounter, but that's a story for another day. It might be a good time to add here that my parents do not use drugs or alcohol, and they're very sharp as far as memory cognizance and intuition go. I'm going to copy and paste a message that my mom sent me and just read it for you, if that's okay. I just figured I'd put some feelers out there and see if anybody else has experienced something similar or has any sort of explanation. Quote, Last weekend, we were coming back from Jamestown. Dad and I saw a freaking UFO or something. Between Randolph and Steinberg, there was this huge, really bright light blinking on and off in the sky directly in front of us. And it was falling from the sky, except it was shooting directly downward. I thought it was a falling star at first, but after it blinked repeatedly, I thought, that is not a falling star. And even though I thought that it might've been a plane, I knew that it was too bright and going too fast to be one. Plus, as far as I know, planes don't make a habit of going straight down. Then all of a sudden, it was gone, like mid-sky. And I thought, well, it must have gone behind a hill or a mountain or into the trees. So right then I said, did you see that? And dad goes, what the F was that? He said that he was thinking the same things that I was. And at the same time, we both noticed there are no hills. There is no mountain. There's nothing for this thing to go behind. It was just cornfields and open space. This thing just disappeared. Next thing you know, it was directly behind us, mid-sky, and it shot directly upward, back up into the sky. I was looking out my rearview mirror, and it lit up the whole sky, like an aura all around but the brightness of it was still really bright white. Dad was turned around watching it and it started following us. We had that same eerie feeling we had when we saw the Bigfoot that one time and we were saying, what the F is that? All of a sudden, it just disappeared. They have no idea what it was that they experienced. And yes, they do also have a Bigfoot sighting, but that's a story for another day as well. Either way, they've been trying to figure out what in the world they saw, so I thought I'd share their story 
and see if anybody else had any ideas. My mom is very religious and no-nonsense. She grew up brethren, which is basically an old form of Baptist that doesn't really exist anymore. Despite her upbringing, she's always been interested in aliens. I think it's because her dad also had an obsession with them, but I don't know why. Maybe he saw something during his trucking and military days. As a kid, I always caught my mom watching those alien and UFO shows. She really wanted to see a UFO for herself. One night, she was traveling down the Appalachian Mountains in western North Carolina, coming from a festival in eastern Tennessee. It was fall, so the leaves were beginning to become bare, and you could see through them. She was driving along with my sister and my grandmother when she sees what looks like three to five lights in a circular shape. It's getting really close. My sister and grandmother notice it too. Soon, it appears to be behind them, very low to the ground. My mom opens the sunroof and windows, but there's not a sound coming from anywhere. Then, something my mom describes as an opaque white column comes down onto the road behind her car and is following. Like, the distance between the white column and the car never changes. My mom went from curious to freaked and guns it. I think the total time it followed was probably less than a minute. Eventually, it went away without a trace. When my mom finally got home that night and told me about it, I thought she would be excited, but it nearly scared her to death. She said she had always wanted to see a UFO, but that once she did, the experience left her terrified. I remember she complained about being unable to sleep for the next few nights. This was 10 or so years ago, but she still doesn't seem to talk about aliens with such frequency anymore. This Sunday gone, my girlfriend and I, who live in Adelaide, Australia, had just gone on a dinner date. She is a 26-year-old female, and I am a 24-year-old female. We went to her house to drop off her doggy bag. Then we drove back toward my house, southward. About halfway between our houses, I noticed three lights in the sky in a perfect triangle. It was very odd, and the lights were fairly obvious in the dark sky, especially because there were also stars visible, so the lights were very visibly different. They were a lot brighter and bigger, though not by much. I pointed it out to her, and immediately she said, Holy cow, what the heck is that? At first I thought I might be seeing things, but when she reacted, I knew it wasn't just my eyes playing tricks. We quickly noticed that the lights were moving at about the same speed we were, and had started to flash green and red sporadically. We decided to follow it for as long as we feasibly could, it was a bit of a thrill, if I'm being completely honest, following the mystery lights in the sky, but it also didn't last very long. Maybe five minutes past my house, the lights took a turn, sped up, and just disappeared. We pulled over to see if we could find it again, but we didn't have any luck. We kept talking about how strange and cool the whole thing was. I am telling my story here to see if anyone else has seen something like this or has any ideas of what it could have been besides a UFO. Our first thought was a helicopter, but there's no realistic way for a perfect triangle of lights to come off of that, and they moved way too quickly. If anyone has ideas, I'd love to hear them. This happened three to four years ago, 
and I've been thinking about it recently. It was late one night, around 11.30 p.m., and I was driving home from my job at Sonic. I was taking US Route 64 home, which is a fairly desolate stretch of road, with houses and farmland on either side. I was in my 99 Ford Explorer, and I was just driving along around 65 to 70 miles per hour with the radio on low volume. As I'm driving, through the sunroof comes a bright green ray of light that envelops the interior of my vehicle. This lasts for about two to three seconds. Then, it disappears without a trace. After that happened, I just sped up and got home as quickly as possible. I was only about five minutes away. That's really about all there was to it, but I was really freaked out. I have pondered and pondered, but I have no clue what that could have been. I wasn't tired because I woke up at around five or six that day, and I have no history of any illnesses that could have caused this. I wasn't on any medications. I've told a few people, and I don't think that they believe I'm lying. I've never been the kind to lie about that kind of thing, but no one can give me a solid answer either. Some have said maybe it was a laser, but I don't think there's any way a laser could completely cover my vehicle in green light like that. There was a farm that I was passing by, but it wasn't lit and there were no street lights. I have no idea what it was that I encountered. I can't quite understand this one myself, so maybe you guys can help. This was on the 11th of July, 2019. My boyfriend and I, he's now my husband, were camping in the mountains, very high up. This area is so high up and remote that there is virtually no light pollution, so you can see almost every star in the sky when it's a clear night, like this one was. We were just relaxing, staring at the stars, usual romantic things you do in the mountains, when we started noticing the stars acting very differently. They appeared to zigzag and go upward, almost like they were playing with one another, weaving near each other and away again in circular motions. We were just amazed by it all and couldn't take our eyes off the sky. This went on for about two to three solid hours. That wasn't the strangest part though. Where we were camping, there was a clear view of an opening between two other mountains. At around 2 a.m., maybe three, I noticed this bright light between the two mountains. It was really bright, so I nudged my partner to look over too. We were staring at this massive white yellow looking star go upward quickly, then noticed it was going toward us. My partner is a man that isn't easily scared and this really scared him to the point that he nearly broke my nose trying to hide fully in the tent with both of us screaming as this star just stopped right above us. When it was above us, right before we both panicked, it seemed to have a diamond type shape and it was super bright. But that isn't the strangest part. When we were in the tent, the light didn't shine through the tent. This thing didn't make a single noise. So it wasn't a drone or anything like that. It was far too big. And what seemed like seconds later, we were both calm looking at the stars again, like nothing happened until sunrise. If both of us hadn't experienced this, if it was just one of us, I could try to make an excuse for it. But we both confirm each other's stories and saw the same exact thing, and I can't explain it. To top it all off, when I'm talking about it, or in this case typing, it feels like I'm lying and my partner feels the same way, like it never happened. It feels like I'm making it up. And the more I try to remember about that night, the more I can't remember. And he feels the same way too. It's like whenever I go to tell my story, 
Something is actively trying to get me to believe that I didn't see what I saw or to stop talking about it. Has anyone else ever experienced anything like this? Does anyone have some answers? I'd love to know. I'll start out by saying that I've seen my fair share of strange things in the skies, but one memory will always stand out amongst the others. I've done the math, and I believe it was fall of 2005. I was in sixth grade, outside on the phone with my first boyfriend. I'd say it was between six to eight o'clock Eastern time at night. It was dark outside, and only our back porch light was on. I was talking up a storm, and I was watching my two dogs roam the backyard. Out of nowhere, it was like somebody turned on a blue light above us, the dogs and I. It was a bright, beautiful electric blue. I immediately looked up and saw what I can best describe as the shape of an eye, but perfectly symmetrical in the same blue color. It was lined with an almost holographic looking light a constantly changing rainbow of colors. I stared for maybe two seconds before it closed up, leaving only the colorful outline. It immediately shot to the left like a shooting star and disappeared. In shock, I told my boyfriend I would call him back and I immediately ran to my parents who were folding clothes in the bedroom. I shouted at them, I just saw aliens. They laughed at first and told me to stop joking, but my father knows my eyes. He saw my panic and quickly changed the subject. I've never forgotten this moment. I can still see it so clearly, even to this day. What did I see? Why did I see it? Can anyone help? On the evening of September 7th, 2006, my friend Jen and I were driving home from a friend's house near to where the Big Ear Radio Observatory used to be. It was somewhere around 10 p.m. near the corner of Cheshire Road and Route 23 between Delaware, Ohio and Lewis Center, Ohio. We were driving down Route 23, heading south toward Lewis Center, when Jen saw a bright light very distant in the sky. We both jokingly said, it's probably a UFO. So we keep driving and we eventually lose sight and forget about the distant object in the sky. Then as we're coming over the precipice of a hill, just beyond where the golf course is now, where the telescope once stood there, was an enormous glowing football shaped UFO hanging right above our heads, steadily moving over top of Route 23, heading toward Lewis Center. It was the most frightening and awe-inspiring thing I have ever witnessed. We stopped on the side of the highway and got out of the car. It was the largest thing I've ever seen. I felt like an ant beneath the giant glowing boot. The object looked like it was engulfed in some orangish reddish plasma, almost like what the surface of the sun looks like close up from space. It looked as though it had flames bubbling and churning within it. I tried to take a video with my Motorola Razor, but the phone just would not pick it up at all, even though it had been working just fine and had nearly a full charge. It slowly begins to back away from us a bit and begins floating toward the town of Lewis Center. We follow it back to Lewis Center, where my friends and I watch it for nearly an hour, and eventually it begins to gain altitude in a dizzying display of lights. Then it flashes and blasted away in the blink of an eye, leaving behind a wispy blue teal vapor trail. I found out later on that the Big Ear Radio Observatory in Delaware, Ohio, was where they had received the wow signal in 1977. 
This object took up a large portion of the visible sky as we came upon it. I'm an airman. I have been trained to observe and identify aircraft. I would estimate the object to be the size of an NFL football stadium, just floating above the tree line highway and houses and buildings. The object was witnessed by at least five people other than myself. As it was gaining altitude, glowing bluish purplish orbs began to cascade out of the main shaped object, one after the other. Each time they would appear, they would revolve around the main object, intensify until all I could see was a spinning blue glow around that main football stadium object. And then in the blink of an eye, it shot off into a flash of light in front of it, like the Enterprise going to warp speed leaving only a bluish trailing haze behind. The whole experience was the most profound thing to have ever happened to me in my lifetime up till that point. Thank you for hearing my account of what occurred. I was 10 years old. My brother and I were the last ones off the bus from school every day. We were nearing my house, which is in the Midwest countryside. Lots of cows and trees and fields, stuff like that. Anyway, about a mile away from my house, I look out the window and I see an orange blimp in the sky. Standard American football shaped blimp. Surprisingly, I didn't think anything of it. Because a day or so before that, a bunch of kids and I at recess saw a blue blimp in the sky. I watched it, thought it was cool to see a blimp this far outside of town, especially near my house, and wasn't about to think another thing of it. After a few seconds, the blimp shifted from a football shape to a star, literally just shrunk before my eyes into a tiny shiny dot that resembled a star in the night sky. Except it wasn't a star. It was just a blimp a second ago. Not even two seconds after it shifted, it launched even farther into the sky, shot down to its original height, and then shot completely off into space. It was the most bizarre thing I had ever experienced. I was a quiet kid, but being the last kid on the bus besides my brother, I shouted about it. When I got off the bus, I ran to my mother to tell her, like a crazy old man yelling about the end times. My mother said that I was crazy, naturally, and I never told my dad, because my mom shut me down pretty hard and it killed my mood. Fast forward years later, shortly after I turned 22, my dad and I took a short road trip to go pick up a car he bought halfway across the state. We talked about a lot and somehow got on the topic of UFOs. He told me that when he was 12 or 13, he and his brothers were playing down by a creek near their house, which by the way, was only a few miles away from our house. They saw an orange football shaped object in the sky. I was absolutely blown away when he said that. My father is skeptical and doesn't believe in this kind of stuff, ever. But when I shared my story, he paused and said that it was very odd to have seen the exact same thing behave the exact same way more than 30 years apart. The year was 1976. We were living in the Middle East. My father was in the secret police called Sabak. It was common that a helicopter would land in our backyard and pick my dad up for a mission or something like that. One night, I saw a bright light and it got my attention. I thought it was my dad returning home on the helicopter landing in the backyard, but I guess it wasn't. But I don't remember anything after the light got really close. I woke up in bed the next day well, I thought it was the next day, but I found out that a few days had actually passed. My father was standing next to my bed with two well-dressed men, 
One was American, I think, and the other was a translator. He introduced one of them as Mr. John and told me they wanted to talk to me. I was confused and they asked a lot of weird questions. Soon after my dad took me, my brother and sister moved us to the UK. We lived there for three years until my next strange encounter. Once again, one of the original two men, Mr. John, with a new guy, questioned me once more. A few months later, on the 4th of July, 1979, we moved to the US and we have lived here ever since. As time went by, I asked my dad questions about the moving and the men questioning me, but he would never talk about it until recently when he was diagnosed with dementia. The things he said were incredible, too incredible to be true. I thought it was the drugs or the disease. I thought that's pretty cool if it was true, but there's no way. Well, he's in a nursing home here in Laguna Hills, California, and I went to go visit him. When I walked into his room, to my surprise, he had a visitor, a man, not just any man, but the one that had met with me twice before, a face that I'll always remember. The only problem was that the last time I saw him was 35 to 40 years prior, and he hadn't aged a day. I was older than him. He saw me, pulled his cap down to cover his face, and left without a word. I asked my dad who he was, and he said to me, that's Mr. John, and remember, by safe moon. I can't make heads or tails of it to this day. So recently, I've been having really weird things happen at my house. Not only somewhat ghost related, but also UFO sightings at the same time. I just wanted to tell a couple of stories about my first ever UFO encounter. So I was lying in bed. It was around 1130 at night and I'm leaning to the side of the patio door from my bedroom. I'm thinking for a while when I look through the blinds to see what looked to be a glowing object hovering above my neighbor's house. On the rim of this craft, there seemed to be a color changing rainbow and then a few lights around it blinking. My neighbor has this really rich friend that sometimes comes to visit in his helicopter. And that's what I thought it was at first, but I swear there was absolutely no sound. I also suspected that maybe it could be a star that flashes, but it was way too close. If it was a drone, it would have made some sound, especially that close. I was amazed at this craft and I didn't know what to think. Once I got back in bed, I heard what sounded like a plane circling my house. I didn't see it, but I heard it. I thought it could be a plane, but it sounded almost fake. I'm guessing if it was the UFO, they were trying to mask the sound of it or make themselves appear like something normal. When I took a look back at my neighbor's property, the craft was gone. Another story happened about the same time that I saw this other thing. Again, it was around 1130 at night. And again, I was lying in bed, looking out the window and just sort of daydreaming. Again, I could see a light. It was glowing really white and almost pulsating. I didn't want to go see what it was in fear that it could be ETs. From these experiences, I've decided to see what it is and investigate it. I really want to go confront them. I really want to go see what they are. In my life, I think I have seen a UFO twice. I just want to know what everybody thinks. Number one, I was 14 and I was in Spain. I was looking up at the night sky 
when suddenly this kind of round thing flew low overhead. From what I remember, it was round with yellow and small white lights around the underside. It was really odd. I remember seeing it, but my family says it never happened. But I know what I saw. Number two. This one originally looked like a star, sitting outside the back of our house one night we were all looking up, and we saw this star moving across the sky. We were all like, oh look, a satellite. We were tracking it going west. But then, things got strange. It stopped and started going west. You might say, oh well, perhaps it was a plane. Planes don't move like that. It stopped again then went north, and then it just disappeared. Just blinked out. Did I see a UFO? Back in 2011, on a family vacation in Jamaica, my siblings and I were sitting on the beach stargazing. That is, until we noticed this one point of light that was moving unnaturally and without sound. It had the brightest color and it looked kind of like a dim star, except that it was moving in circular and figure eight type patterns. For perspective, the patterns were no bigger in diameter than the little dipper's cup. It was moving with the pattern and speed reminiscent of when one uses a laser pointer to get a cat's attention. 15 to 20 minutes after noticing it, it just faded away. Could this have been a weather balloon? It definitely wasn't a plane, a helicopter, or a satellite. At least none like the ones I've ever seen. I'm trying to find images of weather balloons from the ground at night, but every image is too close up or simply doesn't look at all like what I saw. A few years ago, I temporarily lived in a cabin out in the woods with my friend due to some unexpected life circumstances. One night, we had another friend over, and all three of us had a smoke session in the backyard at about 3 a.m. That was when we started to hear a strange noise in the woods. It kind of sounded like a humming engine coming closer to us. Suddenly, my friend shouts in confusion as he explains that he briefly got blinded by a distant light. A few seconds later, my other friend notices a flying object near the treetops about 40 meters away. When he points out that the object is see-through and that you can actually see the outlines of the treetops behind it, we are all just stunned and we just look in awe, in complete silence, until the object spirals away super fast up toward the sky in a manner that is certainly not possible with any known technology we have. Then it disappeared. We rushed inside and my friend had the brilliant idea to have everybody draw what they had seen simultaneously without looking at each other's to confirm what we saw. We all showed our pictures at the same time and we all drew the exact same thing. We kicked ourselves over not recording the event for proof, but later realized that all of us had left our phones inside while going out to smoke. We joked about the light scanning us to see if we had any recording devices on us. We all went to bed, with both of them sleeping upstairs, and with myself being downstairs, alone. As I lay down, pondering over the experience and feeling a bit uneasy, I suddenly see two orbs floating around the room. One was red, and one was blue. I get a bit freaked out and pretend to be asleep while I watch these orbs float around for about five minutes, then they disappeared. Eventually, I fell asleep, and when I woke up the next day, I was eager to share my experience. They informed me that when they woke up and went outside, the door handle crumbled in their hands, like all of the components of the door handle had been dismantled. 
It was a very surreal experience overall. Aliens, advanced technology not known to the public, I don't know. But it certainly gives me this childlike hope that there's more to this life than the dull reality we live in. One night while driving home, I saw a huge bright light, probably a little larger than a full moon, straight ahead of me in the sky. It changed colors from green to yellow, red, blue, and then two other similar lights showed up next to it. They changed colors for about 10 to 15 seconds. Then they all became one big white light and completely disappeared. Then they all came back, changed colors more, and then disappeared for good. I've just never seen anything like this, but I was wondering if anyone else had similar sightings. About two months ago, I was driving home from my parents' house late at night on a route that connects New York to Connecticut. My town in Connecticut directly borders New York State. The town has some serious hills bordering on small mountains. At one point on the route, the trees thin out to the left, revealing a large hill or small mountain, which can be seen pretty clearly from different perspectives for about two minutes. As I was driving on this particular night, I noticed two large, slow blinking and slow moving rectangular lights low in the sky. I couldn't see any specific features of any craft surrounding these lights, so my perspective could be off, but it seemed to me to be only about 20 meters higher than the top of the hill. I'm guessing the distance or height by how fuzzy the edges of the lights seem to be and by how large they appear to be in addition to the multiple perspectives provided by my consistent 40 miles per hour speed on the road. When I spotted it, it was nearly directly forward in my line of sight, off to the left just a bit. In the two minutes that I watched it, it moved maybe a half a mile farther to my left. For reference, the top of the hill that I mentioned is about a mile from that road in the same direction to the left. That would mean a speed of about 15 miles per hour. The lights were blinking too slowly to be standard aircraft strobes, on for about two seconds, off for another two, in a regular rhythm. They were moving and blinking in unison, which implies that they were both part of one larger thing. They seemed to be set about 30 to 40 yards apart from one another. There was no noticeable sound, and no witnesses aside from myself that I know of. I had always thought that if I saw a UFO, I would love to follow it, but I was too freaked out and I didn't do that. I felt like an instinctive horror. I couldn't bring myself to deliberately get closer. If there is a next time, I will try harder to overcome that. In order to really convey how scared I was when this happened, I'm gonna have to back up and give you a little context. For starters, I've told the whole story to maybe a handful of my closest friends, and the only family I've ever told is my twin sister. Even then, it only came up because they initiated conversations about similar topics regarding the paranormal. If I can help it, I'd rather not talk about it in real life. But here, on the wilds of the internet though, I guess I feel a little bit safer. It's also worth noting that I've included several instances that may or may not be related. Whether or not they truly are is a matter of personal speculation, but they are all paranormal nonetheless. If I had to pinpoint where it all began, I would say it was 2008, 
when I stayed home alone pretty much all summer. My sisters attended the boys and girls club, and my parents worked all day. I was just a 13-year-old boy then, so staying home alone was pretty much the greatest thing I could think of. All I had on the agenda every day was eating junk food, playing video games, and doing whatever small chores I was assigned. Not a bad way to spend a summer. And it wasn't. For a few weeks, anyhow. When things started, though, they started small. Every couple of days, my mom would come home pissed off when she saw both of our dogs outside. We lived in North Alabama, so summer was hot and swampy. Because of that, we tended to keep the dogs inside until they needed to be let out to do their business, but it would never be any more than about 10 minutes. I loved those dogs, so I adhered to the 10 minute rule very strictly. It was also why I was so confused to see them outside on those days. I definitely did not let them out. Sure, I can be forgetful sometimes, Maybe one or two of those times I really did just have a brain fart, but I was 100% sure that most of those times I never let those dogs out. When I told that to my mom, she looked kind of concerned. Then I started hearing things. With freshly installed hardwood floors, I was familiar with the sound of them settling when the AC kicked on. It would be one or two popping sounds, then it would stop until the AC turned off again. Rinse and repeat. Nothing crazy about that. One day, while I was binge playing old Nintendo games, I heard the board settling again. But this time, it wasn't because of the AC. And instead of one or two pops, there were several dozen moving around. They went up and down the hallway, like somebody was pacing around. I paused my game and I listened to them. Thinking maybe my mom or my stepdad were back early from work, I went out to see them and make sure the dogs were back inside so I wouldn't get chewed out again. But nobody was home. I shrugged it off as the floorboards just being particularly active that day, and I went back to playing my game once more. About an hour passed before the sounds repeated. The same quiet little footsteps. I paused my game again, and I listened harder this time. Another sound surfaced on top of the steps. It was kind of like trying to hear somebody else's phone call from across the room. You know there's a conversation going on, but you can't quite make out what it's about. I went to look again, this time going all the way across the house and into my parents' room. Still nobody. Then I thought, well, maybe the conversation was coming from outside in the neighborhood. I brought the dogs out back with me and they went and did their business while I waited on the porch. From what I could tell, it was just another stiff, silent summer day. This particular thing happened a few more times, and it always made me feel really uneasy. It was even worse when I told my mom about it. She replied, Oh good, you hear it too. Then she went on to tell me not to tell my stepdad, because he was very religious and for some reason didn't believe in any of this stuff. Things settled down after summer was over and they stayed that way for a while. I had school to keep me occupied, and other than a few small instances, we had two quiet years. 2010 was the year things picked up a lot more. While my twin and my girlfriend at the time were hanging out in her room, they started messing around taking dumb pictures with digital cameras. Now my twin's room was the coldest in the house and nobody could ever figure out why. It also used to belong to my older sister. Both times either of them moved into the room, their demeanor would change over the course of a few months. Where my older sister became more manic, throwing tantrums with growing frequency, my twin was starting to get depressed, sleeping all the time and always being fairly disconnected. While all three women in the house suffered from manic depression, bipolar disorder, and sometimes both, there was a very noticeable difference when my sisters occupied the room. And that digital camera my twin was playing around with? There was a picture on it that we didn't find for weeks after the fact that showed my girlfriend at the time and a really weird, smoky, veil-like presence in the room with them. Neither of them smoked, and the room never smelled like anything, so... 
we weren't allowed to have candles in our room either. I'm still kicking myself for not saving that photo somewhere, because I think it might have been a good piece of evidence. On top of the apparition caught on my camera, my mother told me of an instance where footsteps walked from the kitchen and into the study where she worked on some stuff for her job. When the steps entered the room, she heard a voice whisper, ouch, very clearly into her ear. The next few experiences were things only I witnessed. They are, by and large, the more extreme parts of what I now guess to be a haunting, and they started in the summer of the same year, with my first episode of sleep paralysis. I had known about the phenomenon before it happened to me. My mom was a sufferer of frequent night terrors and the occasional paralysis. I also had a friend with narcolepsy that told me about it at school. The first time it happened to me, I wasn't too unsettled. It was on a weekend, and I drifted off watching Netflix. The next thing I knew, I was wide awake, and a few episodes of the show had gone by. I reached for a bottle of water by my bed, but I found that I couldn't move at all. It was strange, and almost calm. I just kind of accepted what was happening, and I let it run its course. It eventually did. I got up, had a drink of water, went to the bathroom, and then went back to bed. A few days after the paralysis, things started moving around on their own. Another day spent home alone, I was once again playing video games and avoiding any responsibilities. As I had tried giving up soda that year, I almost always had a cup on my desk, filled either with orange juice or empty. There was rarely an in-between. This cup, however, just fell over in front of my eyes. There was no slant on the desk or anything like that. Nothing other than the cup was on it. It just tipped over, like someone had smacked it over. While I thought it was odd, I set it back upright and went on with my gaming. I had settled that it was some kind of trick of gravity, which in hindsight sounds way more ridiculous than a poltergeist. This was immediately followed by the sound of a bird hitting my window, my light bulb exploding overhead, and the cup once again tipping over. Unable to rationalize it this time, I scrambled out of my room and into the kitchen, where my stepdad was eating. As I said earlier, my mom asked me not to talk to him about anything paranormal, but I was pretty shook up by what I had just seen. He asked me if I was alright. I told him that a bird had flown into my window and kind of scared the crap out of me, to which he laughed. I didn't sleep very well that night. The last and most extreme incident I had at that house happened just about a week later. My second episode of sleep paralysis. It was a Sunday morning and I could hear my family moving about the house to get ready. It didn't take me long to prepare myself, so I tended to sleep in an extra 15 minutes. As I fell back to sleep, a familiar feeling came over me. Unable to speak, I couldn't call for help. The weight on my chest made it difficult to breathe. I was incapable of moving. Thinking it would pass like last time, I just waited. It became evident very quickly that this was not going to be like last time. What little daylight there was coming in through the curtains turned blood red. Instead of the calm I had during the first episode, I grew very unsettled. It was dark now, and the room looked like one of those photo development rooms in terms of color. My door opened on its own. A figure stood there, just looked like a silhouette, all dark and shrouded. It wore what appeared to be a robe made of thick fur and kept its hood drawn over. Even though my room was normally comfortable, I felt the temperature drop. I could see my own breath and the breath of this figure. It just kept staring at me. Something about it felt evil like it was waiting to do something awful to me. I tried to yell and make it go away. I even attempted to invoke the name of Christ, but I couldn't speak or breathe enough to do so. The blood red changed to pitch black. The figure disappeared into it, but a pair of dark red eyes pierced through me from where it stood. I then saw two numbers sort of fly at me. Thirteen and three. That's when the paralysis ended, I got up, and I went to church. 
I've since lost my faith and I'm no longer religious. Just what I saw that morning is still a mystery to me. But I did follow up on those two numbers that same morning in church. Psalm chapter 13, verse 3, reads in the King James Version, quote, Consider and hear me, O Lord my God. Lighten my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Needless to say, I got chills, and I still do every time I tell the story. Back when I was a child, I had a weird UFO experience. My dad had bought a new Ford truck after his beloved Bronco had to go. We went on a visit to my grandma's place on the reservation. We picked her up and we all went fishing together and had a really nice picnic. I remember that I had this really cool Disney swimming pool. Anyway, we were all driving home when this huge aircraft of some kind appeared on the way to San Carlos, Arizona. It was not on some secluded dirt or back road. It was on Interstate 70, between Globe and Paradox. It was huge. It was like the size of a Zeppelin. It had lights all along its length, which flashed blue, red, yellow, and green in about one second. We were stunned. It sat there for quite a long time in one spot, we passed an ambulance coming the other way, and also a police officer who pulled over in our lane looking up at this thing. I was very young, but I was there with my parents and my grandma. My grandma has since passed on, but my parents still remember it. My mom calls the lights on the side of the UFO windows, but to me they just looked like a row of extremely bright lights. It stayed stationary for a long while, before suddenly moving south to the top of Mount Turnbull. Then it went straight upwards and disappeared into the sky. The moon was out and the only clouds were above the summit. I think about this experience from time to time and sometimes I doubt myself as to whether or not any of it happened. But there were three adults in the truck who saw it and the police officer on the side of the road too. I wish I could find the other people who saw it and ask if they remember it too. I'm going to try to make this short by stating just the simple facts of what I witnessed during two separate incidents. Incident number one. This is going back to the late summer of either 1989 or 1990. I was at work with two co-workers near Rhinebeck, New York. One of my co-workers was outside smoking when he called to me and another co-worker to come outside and see something. When we exited the front door, we saw the classic V-shaped craft hovering above a tree in the front yard. It was directly above the tree, which was just about the height of the building, two stories, so maybe 30 feet. I ran up to the tree, which put the craft those same 30 feet above me. It had five to seven white lights with the largest at the bottom center of the V with the others running up from it. It made no noise. And even though whatever it was blocked out the sky, I couldn't make out a structure or body. It very slowly and silently started heading across the street and over a hill. My two co-workers went inside, but I remained in case it came back. It did. When it reappeared from behind the hill, the shape had changed. The lights were now in a straight line and were more of an orange color. It headed back toward my location changing shape as it moved. The light formations just kept shifting. It took on the shape of a diamond, then an X, then back to a V, before it moved directly over the building. It kept going in that direction and then headed south and out of sight. Incident number two. 
I was at home. Having recently moved into a new apartment, things weren't all organized and my new bed had not arrived, so I fell asleep on the floor. I should also mention here that I am an incredibly heavy sleeper. During the night, I woke up from a sound sleep and sat straight up. This was something that I had never done. Anyway, the corner of the room was lit up with what looked like dozens of very pale, multicolored lights. Staring at them, I noticed a shadow of a figure out of the corner of my right eye. It looked as though it was moving closer, and then, well, that's all I remember. The next day I woke up not immediately remembering what I had seen. All of the clocks in the house were either stopped at or flashing at 3 a.m. Even the VCR flashed that time and was also playing even though there was no tape in it. I had to unplug everything that had an electronic clock in the apartment in order to reset and fix things. It wasn't until I was doing that that I remembered what had taken place. I've been told that I should try hypnosis regarding the second incident, but I'm not really sure that I trust the practice. One of my friends is actually a licensed hypnotherapist, or whatever you call them, but I still don't know. In all honesty, I don't know if I want to know. I thought I'd share a few stories that I heard from my ex-boyfriend's mom that I thought were pretty fascinating. We're all from the same reservation, so I can explain the setting pretty well. Basically, there's this one bush road that takes you from the reserve deep into the woods until you get to another town. But that stretch of dirt road goes on for about 45 minutes. I think it was an old logging road once, but now we just call it the limit. And we use that area of the forest for camping, fishing, ski-doo riding, and four-wheeler riding. Stuff like that. It's also just a chill road to drive down with your friends. If you're from a small town, you know how it is. Anyway, she had two paranormal experiences on this particular road, which isn't entirely out of the ordinary. My dad has even had an experience on this road too. It's kind of known for all sorts of strange things happening, but it's fine. Nobody's scared of it. I still go drive down it to watch pretty sunsets. It's just chill like that. The first story is about a weird time loop. She and her cousin were driving down this road to go get some water, since there was also a natural spring around there. On their way back, their car stalls out and just won't start up again. This happened back in the 80s, so there weren't any cell phones you could use to call for help. So they started walking. They weren't too far and they had plenty of daylight left, so it was fine. But as they're walking, they see another car stopped in the distance. They think, oh cool, we can get a ride from these guys. But as they get closer, they see that it's the same make and model of their car. They get even closer and they realize that no, it's the same car. They're confused as heck, but can completely verify that it is their car by looking in the windows. The sweater she left in the back seat, the empty pop can her cousin was drinking out of. Everything inside was exactly as they had left it. And honestly, they just didn't know what to do. They hadn't turned off that dirt road at all. They hadn't even walked far enough to make it to another trail that they could turn off on. They thought it was weird, but figured they should just keep walking, as it's all they could do. They keep going, and sure enough, up ahead, down the road, there's a parked car. The same as before. This time, they are tripping out, and they run up to it, and yep, it is 100% their car again. Her cousin gets a stick from the woods, and leaves it on the hood of the car saying that if they keep walking and the same things happen, at least they can see if the stick would have been moved. They take off walking and it happens again. This time, the stick is gone. She described the feeling of being afraid that the time loop would just go on forever, 
but it didn't. The next time they walked down the road, they realized they were able to walk farther, and eventually they made it back to the reservation. They got help and towed the car, but never got an explanation or figured out what happened with the car and the time loop. She has no idea why the stick that they left on the hood of the car disappeared, and I don't have any idea either. The second story is about a UFO sighting she had with some friends on that same road. This happened years later, after the first incident, maybe in the early 90s, and it was during the summertime. She and her friends were riding around in a car, having a few beers, not the driver obviously, and listening to music. One of their friends commented that there must be a four-wheeler in the woods, but that it's weird since there were no trails there. They look over to see what he's talking about, and all they can see are these white lights emanating from deep in the woods. They could see that there's a source of light, but they couldn't see the object itself through the trees. The driver slows down and turns down the music. She says that there wasn't anything too alarming about what they were seeing at that point but that there was just this feeling that something wasn't right. And she said that everyone felt it because all of them got quiet as they looked out the windows, which were wide open. When things got quiet, they were able to hear a low humming. She had a hard time describing the humming, just that it was very low, but that it almost felt like ringing in the ears. They all heard it. They were silent looking at the lights, but then, Whatever it was shot up directly into the sky, and they saw a UFO. This was so long ago that she told me about it and that it happened, that I wish I could describe more about how it looked. But she did say that the second it shot into the sky, it changed into all sorts of colors that seemed to rotate around the craft. It paused right above the tree line for a few seconds, and then it just took off right into the horizon lights changing again when it moved. Those are her experiences. It's weird, too, that everyone's experiences on this road are so vastly different. There are some sightings of creatures from our Algonquin folklore. There's Bigfoot sightings, UFO sightings, time loops. And then I have other friends who just heard really creepy singing that got closer and closer with no source. We also just found out that our entire reservation is sitting atop a huge uranium deposit. Apparently it's the largest in our province, but I'm not sure. Nuclear mining companies keep trying to build mines and we keep refusing. I'm wondering if that has something to do with it, because the amount of paranormal things that happened around here is pretty wild. Ever since I was 13, in 2008, I've developed an interest in aliens and UFOs. I've grown enough of an interest to actually create a scrapbook of pictures of UFOs, declassified government documents, newspaper clippings, and things like that. All of these things were available from Google. I even recorded my own UFO sightings here and there, but I eventually threw them out because I was worried that I was sticking my nose where it didn't belong. In any case, this is one of my UFO experiences. It was somewhere between 2009 and 2011. I was around 14 to 16. It was around 8 or 9 p.m., and I was looking into the sky to see if I might get lucky and find a UFO. I noticed a large triangular-shaped silhouette facing west into my backyard. It was huge and it had a red light at the center. Parts of the craft warped into a boomerang shape. One part was invisible at times and the other part wasn't. It was as if it had some invisible shield that was on and then off. It was able to change its shape from a boomerang and then into a triangle and then just disappear. In the past, I've had other UFO experiences but this one was the most convincing one of my whole life. Does anyone else have any UFO experiences? 
If you do, I'd love to hear them. Tonight, August 4th of 2019, at around 10.15, my aunt and I were on the porch when my aunt saw something in the sky. It was like an outline of a circle, and part of it was gone, kind of like how an eclipsed moon would look at first. We noted that this was not where the moon usually is. Usually it's behind our house. So eclipse and moon were ruled out. The thing was bright yellow, and had an orange-red tint to it. It almost looked like a fireball. It's night, and the sun is on the other side of the planet at this minute, so wasn't that either. We thought it was a shooting star at first, but it wasn't moving anywhere. It started, like, flattening out, like spreading. Then it started to shrink into a smaller form, and kind of looked like a star. Then all of a sudden, it disappeared. A few minutes later, it suddenly reappeared and got bigger and bigger. It looked as if the moon would have been over the sun and coming off of it, moving toward the way it came in the first time. The light around it kind of spread out again. Then suddenly, it started getting smaller, like the dark part of the eclipse was going back over. Then it split into two and completely disappeared. We waited to see if it would come back but it didn't come back for the third time. I started doing some research and found nothing for solar or lunar eclipses that described what we saw. No meteor showers, no eclipses even happened in our area, no comets, nothing of the sort for that night. After doing some more searching, two other people saw almost the same thing three days ago around the same time. My aunt stepped back outside and called me over, fast. There was what looked to be a pretty low plane flying with two large wings. My aunt says it looked like it had four wings, two on either side, and I'm telling you this thing was big. One side was bright red and the other was bright green. Planes in our area normally have a small light that flickers on both sides. It wasn't like this at all. This plane was coming from the same area that we had seen these mystery light things in. And when the plane got behind our house, I ran to look at it and I couldn't see it at all. It was big, like I said. It shouldn't have been out of view already. My aunt and I have been trying to come up with a logical explanation, but nothing makes any sense. I don't want to claim aliens, but I don't know what else it could have been. I've had over a week to think about this, and I can't come up with a satisfactory, rational explanation. I live in the north coast of Northern Ireland, not far from the Giant's Causeway, just to give some reference that people might know. Just over a week ago, I was sitting watching television with my wife. I sit by one of the windows sometimes because there's a plug-in for my laptop there. My wife was sitting on the other sofa, so she couldn't see out of this particular window. It was around 8.30 and perfectly dark outside. If I looked out, I could see the lights of our local town, Ballymoney. It's tiny, more of a village, really. Just us at the scene, we're about three miles out, surrounded by farmland. Anyway, I'm watching TV and occasionally glancing out the window, when suddenly I see this bright light just over the fields. It's multicolored, and it kind of blooms, growing larger. At first I thought it was a firework, which would have been bizarre enough in late March, in the middle of the lockdown. Except it's too slow, if that makes sense. It brightened into maybe three different colors. It was hard to judge distances in the dark, but if I had to guess, I'd say that it was two acres or more away and larger than a family car, hanging maybe 80 to 100 feet up, pretty low. 
Eventually, it faded and disappeared again, not behaving anything like a firework and far too large to be a flare. I said at the time that I thought I had seen somebody letting off fireworks. A few minutes later, I glanced out again and there's a smaller light roving around in the same spot, but it vanished almost the moment I looked at it. This light was maybe a third of the size of the original and was moving left to right. I've thought about it ever since. The annual Ballet Money Town firework display is much further away and we can always hear it from home. Yet this was soundless. Helicopters and drones don't have lights like that. And again, if there had been a chopper out there so low and so close, we'd have heard it. A drone still strikes me as most likely. We wouldn't have heard it inside the house. And I guess it might have been rigged with powerful lights, but they would have had to have been incredibly powerful. So I don't know. I've never ever seen or heard a drone over that area in the daytime. And I'm out there all the time. Honestly, I think maybe I saw a UFO. No lights in the sky were reported in local news or on social media though, and I haven't seen anything since, so who knows? I will start by saying I was a devout skeptic before this experience. It has changed me. It was the summer of 2016, a few months after my sister was born, and my family and I had some old family friends over at our house. We'd been hanging out nearly all day, and it was getting to be around the time of sunset. My friend and I, who I'll refer to as Adam, went on a walk to the ponds in my neighborhood and stayed there for what I remember being about 30 to 45 minutes, just enough time for it to become dark enough to see the stars. At this point, we begin the short walk back to my house when I noticed a star in the sky, which appeared to be moving. I tell Adam this, and he says that he too can see it. At this point, we're standing at the end of my driveway, looking up at the sky. We watched the star for roughly five minutes when we noticed two other stars, all of which are moving toward each other at around the same speed. Now this is where it begins to get really weird. Adam pulls out his phone and attempts to record it, but it ends up being too dimly lit for his phone's camera to see, sadly. Nearly immediately after Adam had put his phone away, all of the stars had stopped in a blank patch of sky, devoid of all other lights and stars, and formed a large triangle. These lights then began moving as one unit and turning clockwise in the sky. They remained in this formation and movement for nearly five minutes before stopping, then proceeded to move at a speed which I've never seen before, away from each other and disappeared into the night. Based on the reactions of people back at the house, both Adam and I were visibly shaken up. When we tried to explain what had happened, they shrugged it off, as us just not knowing what we saw. I know what I saw, and so does Adam. Green Cove Springs has a history of military and government establishments and compounds, none of which are currently active. However, there is a significant amount of military infrastructure still in use as housing and places of business. It makes me wonder if this had something to do with some sort of test flight. Either way, we saw what we saw, even if we don't know what it is. Before I begin, let me give you some background. I was about 13 at the time, not under the influence of any narcotics or medications, nor have I taken any mind-altering substances since then. I had just come back from a class trip to Washington, DC. It was late, 
maybe around seven or eight at night. My father picked me up at the airport and we began driving home on the highway. And that's when I saw it. It was an unknown distance away and looked close and far at the same time. It was a gray steel color and had, well, it was honestly very stereotypical for the most part. It was in the shape of like ravioli. It was a round, perfectly circular ravioli shape with a bulge on both sides of the middle and a ring of lights around it. The lights were all large and gave off a light that was very hard to describe. They were blue, yellow, and white all at the same time. And yet they didn't give off any kind of flare or beam. And when the craft moved, they didn't give a typical trail that you would get when looking at a light moving out of a car window. Now, the craft moved so perfectly, it looked as if it wasn't moving at all. It matched the exact speed of our car, which if you've ever driven down I-95 is really quite an impressive task. I tried to get my father's attention because I needed some confirmation that I was indeed seeing what I was seeing. In those days, things were a bit strained between us due to some issues at home. So he grumpily brushed me off and kept driving. It felt like this went on for a while, but after the event, I realized it couldn't have been more than a few minutes due to the time on the dashboard clock. Things got very odd very quickly. The craft, while keeping perfectly matched with our car, started moving on its side where it was nearly impossible to see except for the bulges. It then did something that I will truly never forget. It split in half, but in a way that was so mechanically perfect, I knew right then it wasn't man-made. The way it split was as it was moving, and there was no jittering or stalling or any evidence of anything mechanical that could have allowed it to separate, let alone be held together in the first place. After it split for a few moments, it kept pace with the car, then each half, while still on its side, shot across the sky at blinding speeds in separate directions. And that's the story. Make of it what you will, but I swear by this sighting. It was an amazing experience that showed me we truly understand nothing about our universe. I saw a UFO, and I just want to know if there's some kind of explanation for what I saw. I didn't have my phone with me, so I don't have any evidence. But I did see a UFO. At first I thought it was a glare, but the moon was behind me and I was seeing Orion's belt and some other stars in front of me. The first one I saw was on the left. Then I realized it was moving in one direction, so it couldn't be a glare. It was going northward. I also don't think that it was a plane because of the lockdown. Planes weren't really allowed to fly, and if they were, it was really limited. I definitely know what a plane looks and sounds like, and this was not it. The thing that I saw was just silently cruising in the sky. Seconds later, I saw one to the right. I saw small dots emitting light. It was as small as what stars look like at night, but they weren't twinkling, and the lighted dots were aligned in a constant position. I also saw that it changed its angle a bit after I saw the lighted dots. I asked myself if they could have been birds, migrating or passing by, because sometimes flocks of birds fly in a V-shape, but that doesn't explain the glow. I'm not sure how high it was exactly in the sky, but it was definitely in the zone where a plane might fly, but it was way too big to be a plane. It was cruising for a good few seconds until it literally just vanished. Would there be any other explanation? Is that what a stealth bomber looks like at night? It was definitely a UFO because it was an object flying in the sky and I didn't know what it was. So it was an unidentified flying object. 
I just want to know if it was alien or not. I wanted to share a few UFO encounters that I've had. The first was when I was about 11. I was riding home with my dad in the car. I looked out the window and saw a ship. It was shaped more like a small city, black with multiple spires. I told my dad and he saw it as well and gunned it home. The odd part was his reaction, which is connected to the next encounter. I asked about the ship and he went ape shit, started screaming about nothing being there and that we never saw anything, even though he described it when I pointed it out. Fast forward to about four years ago, which makes me around 34 years old at the time. I was at work at the hotel and the housekeeper calls me over. It's Veterans Day, so I figure she wants me to check out the parade. Instead, she points out a white sphere in the sky. We stare at it, and it moves at an insane speed, then splits into six smaller spheres. I tell her, congratulations on your first UFO sighting. It keeps moving around the parade, and I tell her not to worry. It's probably just observing. The thing is, when I asked her later if any more weird stuff came out, I got the same reaction. Total freak out screaming about not seeing anything and it not being real. It was like the mind couldn't handle the situation and completely melted down. This final one is a bit more interesting. I had let my dogs out at night for a potty break, then a head count as they came back inside. Before I went in, I noticed a star bigger than the others. Not being a runner, I stayed put. It got closer and I got a better look. It was a four-pointed star with mini points about the size of a pressure cooker, all pulsating different colors. I decided to try some telepathy. I mean, I didn't do anything fancy like cross my legs and say om. I just thought in my head, like you do when you have a grocery list. I asked it if it meant any harm. Give me red for no and green for yes. I got a red for no. I asked if it came from the stars. It turned green. I asked if it was just here for recon. Again, green. Finally, I thought, okay, you can be on your way. And it flew higher and farther. My point on the last one is to try to stay calm. It might scare you, but it's the best way to remember what you saw. I didn't get any missing time or the usual stuff like strange markings. It was just an odd encounter. So I'm currently 16 and this happened when I was three. I'm from New Zealand. We have this RNZAF Air Force base called Ohakia. Apparently, a lot of really mysterious things happen around Air Force bases, so I'm not sure if this is common or what. But it may be 2.30 in the morning. My dad and mom and I are in the car driving back from Wellington. I have family there. And we're maybe 10 seconds past the base of this tree. Well, it's a tree-like thing those big, tall bush tree things that farms use for privacy. All of a sudden, there's a light slowly moving along the tree line. My dad thought it could have been a farmer out trimming hedges, but my mom says, not at nearly three in the morning. So we pull off to this rest area and watch this light. It's completely stopped moving and it's just spinning when another light joins it and spins in a counterclockwise triangle. Maybe two minutes later, another comes from literally thin air and joins the triangle, now having three points, and they just spin and spin and spin. Then they stop, then they start again. After about five minutes, which seems like 10 years, they stop again, 
and stay still for maybe five seconds. Then one flies straight up into the sky and disappears at warp speed. The other two lights just keep spinning when another flies off to the right and disappears. So now it's back to just one light spinning, it starts to move along the tree line again, and then it just flies off to the left and disappears also, never to be seen again. All this started and ended within 15 minutes. After that, we just drove back, but we're all looking around, amazed and terrified. To this day, we've never seen anything else like it. I live outside of Melbourne, Australia. This is the crazy experience that I just had recently. I was outside on my deck having a smoke and I looked up at the sky. Suddenly, two stars appeared directly on top of each other, evenly spaced. Then a third star appeared directly under the second star, again evenly spaced. Another star appeared blinking and moving toward the first star, then went down toward the second, then down to the third, and then away. It was moving very slowly, and each star was blinking in a pattern. I called my partner outside to verify what I saw, and he confirmed that I wasn't crazy and witnessed the moving stars slowly move in patterns that normal craft or satellites couldn't move in. It was going up and down and away and then back at a consistent slow speed. Something clearly had control over it. It was remarkable. We checked again a little bit later and all three stars were gone. I chatted to my housemate about it. Sadly, he was in his room at the time and didn't witness it. He said that my friend and her partner that live about 15 minutes away witnessed the exact same thing months ago. I called my friend and she confirmed that they saw the exact same thing. And then her partner confirmed it as well. They even confirmed the direction they had seen it in from local landmarks and buildings, which completely matched the direction that we had seen it in. So four people have witnessed something similar in a space of like three months in our small town. Super weird. It started on my commute home from work. I got about halfway through the 20 minute walk and at roughly 10.10, I saw these two flying objects that were blinking red and white. I didn't think much of it, being as I live near an airport. That is, until I saw them fly toward each other, hover for a moment, and then depart in opposite directions. It's something that I've never seen drones or planes do before, and it got me really suspicious. I began following one of them, and it kept variating between moving very quickly, slowing down, and hovering in midair. I kept on the trail of that one up until I saw two more on the opposite end of the horizon. I began chasing them down, one by one, trying to get videos and keeping notes on what I'd seen. The main thing that spooked me, aside from the weird movements, was the oblong shape of them. They were just far enough visually that I could only really see the shape through the horizontal row of blinking lights, of which there were three on each flying object. Each one would blink the same pattern, the red lights flashing one after another, and then a white flash at the end, occurring uniformly every few seconds. I only saw them do bizarre movements a handful of times, otherwise I was just chasing them as they sped by. There were at least five of them throughout my entire voyage all around the town. I would truly love to believe that they were just regular aircraft, but every single thing about them was weird. I took a couple of videos, but they didn't really come out. My camera can't shoot that well in the dark. If anybody can point me in the direction of what these things might be, or what the light patterns might mean, or really anything at all, let me know. 
It's been haunting me all night. It was the year 1995, and I was a 20-year-old woman. I worked as a dining room manager at a popular breakfast restaurant. All of the employees would meet once a week at a local bar to hang out. I had to use my older sister's ID because I had just turned 20. I was excited this particular night because the manager that I had a huge crush on was coming. That night, I had decided not to drink too much, and that would probably be the main factor in my survival. The guy that I had a crush on chose not to drink either. When closing time came, we all decided to go over to another coworker's house because we were still having fun. As I was leaving to get in my car, the guy that I had a crush on asked me if I wanted to ride with him. He said that he would bring me back to get my car in the morning. I happily agreed and I jumped in the car. As we were pulling out, he decided to do a huge burnout to show off. We got about two miles down the road when we saw police lights behind us. He pulls over and the police officer makes him do the whole, are you drunk dance. He wasn't drunk, but the police officer searched him and found a single pill that was not in its prescribed bottle. They decided to arrest him and take his car. I had told them that I was only 20, but they didn't seem to care. They told me to walk to the gas station and call somebody to pick me up. This gas station was the only place open being that it was the middle of the night. I didn't want to wake my family up, so I decided to walk the two miles back to get my car. I was afraid though, because I was aware that there was nothing open in between that gas station and the bar parking lot that my car was in. I started walking, keeping my eyes open for anything creepy. It wasn't too long before the typical abductor's vehicle pulled up. It was a big, black, windowless van. I was walking northbound, which made the passenger side closest to me. A man who was about 30 asked me if I needed a ride. I, of course, said no and continued on. He continued to ask a few more times, but he realized that I was not budging. I had that gut feeling you get when you know that something is just wrong. He just continues driving at my walking pace. He's looking around nervously. I had no doubt that he was trying to figure out how to get me. I was thinking of what I would do if he tried. I decided that if his car stopped, I was going to run to the other side of the road back towards the gas station. At this point, I was about halfway back to my car. After keeping at my pace for a while, he drove off. For a minute, I thought he had given up but he just went down a little bit and then turned around and drove past me. I watched him turn around again and head back toward me. He pulls up to me again and asks me to get in. I said, no, I don't need a ride. He just drove at my pace again. He would pull off every time another car drove by, but would come back after. Then, as we were getting close to where my car was, I was trying to decide how I could get to my car safely. The bar was in the corner of an L-shaped small shopping strip. There were about five stores on each side of the bar, with the bar being in the corner. My car was right in front of the bar, which was pretty far back from the street that I was walking on. He pulled off again, but this time, he pulled a little past the area that my car was in and parked turning his lights off. If I had to keep walking straight, it would have been hard for me to get by where he was parked. I decided to count to three and run toward my car with everything I had. I had my keys in hand, pushing the unlock button as I ran. I kept my eye on what he was doing as well. He pulled toward me, slowly, but I think he was wondering what in the world I was doing running into a closed, dark parking lot. As I reached my car and jumped in, he pulled right in front of it. As I was locking the door, we made eye contact. He looked shocked that I had a car. I backed out and took off. I watched behind me, making sure that he wasn't following me. 
After I got home, I debated on calling the cops, but I thought nothing would come of it, so, regrettably, I didn't. It was about a year later, while watching the news, that I saw him and his van again. He had kidnapped and murdered a young woman. They actually believe he killed more than just her, though. I was devastated. I'm not sure if I had called the police if anything would have changed, but at least it would have been on record. I learned that people looking for victims will often drive around to bars at closing time, hoping to find a drunk woman walking home alone. I really do believe that not drinking that night saved my life. One night, my sister's friend, who we'll just call Sally, was still at our house after my sister had fallen asleep at about 10 p.m. She asked me if I would walk her halfway home, and I said yes. It was just down a hill, and then you just walked one street, and then there was like a cut to over to her street from there. But mind you, it's the middle of December, and it's really cold. So we walked to the stop sign, and we were both like, nope, and turned around, because it was freezing cold. We could easily beg my aunt to give her a ride, because it wasn't that far. So as we're walking back, we stopped at my next door neighbor's house, which isn't actually occupied. It's completely rusted out. It's actually owned by a sheriff that comes by like once a week to work on it. It's been like that for about the last three years but my old neighbor lived there for about 20 years before he finally sold it to the sheriff for like $5,000. Anyway, we stopped at the house because we kept hearing weird noises from the side of the house. It almost sounded like cats, so we started calling them. Then they started hissing in a weird way. And then we saw their legs. They were long and skinny and super pale. I don't know what it was, but we just ran to my house and we told my cousin's dad to go look. And he didn't, of course. Maybe it was just a weird cat, but those legs were so abnormal. I've never seen anything like it. And their sound changed when we became aware of it and started calling it. It was like as soon as whatever those things were knew that we knew they were there, their whole demeanor just changed. It was so weird. An Aswang is a monster in Filipino mythology that preys on pregnant women. Unlike the grisly attacks usually shown in horror movies, however, these monsters apparently just prey on the life essence of the unborn baby until it dies and the mother miscarries. The scary part is that these monsters are also part human, meaning that during the day, they could literally be anyone. This happened in Metro Manila in around 2011. My cousin told me the old man with the new neighbors asked me if he were pregnant. I was shocked. I never even told my family yet. I was 21 and worked nights in a call center. I never go outside when I'm home and I was only a few weeks along, so I know I wasn't showing yet. How did this nosy old man know? She said the neighbors were new in town, coming from one of the more popular provinces in the Philippines, where witchcraft and aswangs are still the norm. They were friendly enough though, so no one really had anything bad to say about them other than the nasty rumors that they knew about aswang. When I was about eight months along, I was watching late night TV with my brother at around 2 a.m. Something big landed on our tin roof, strong enough to rattle the windows. My brother and I looked at each other with wide eyes as we listened to the footsteps. Yes, footsteps. Stop right above me. I was never a prayerful person, but at that moment I called on gods and saints and angels and anything to protect my baby. Then I remembered my grandmother's story about how she escaped an Aswang attack by placing a pillow between her legs to mask the baby's scent. 
So I did just that. We had no idea how long we waited. Seconds, minutes, but then we heard another jump and silence. Until this very day, I'm glad that my brother was with me to vouch for me. I still couldn't believe that it happened and that it happened to me. Then I remembered the nosy old man. Could it have been him? Was he really an Oswang? Something weird and mysterious and unfinished, I suppose, but all's well that ends well, right? I've always had an open mind when it comes to spirits, ghosts, specters, whatever you want to call them. I'd never personally experienced anything until the night that I'm about to describe. A little background. I was about 23 years old and I had been in the US Air Force for about five years. I had moved from Texas, where I was raised, to Alaska. I had been deployed a couple of times and had been halfway around the world at least twice. While traveling, I had seen the dance clubs in the Philippines and seen the party scene in the areas just off base in South Korea. I was married to my first wife, and we had since moved to a base called K.I. Sawyer Air Force Base in Michigan, the Upper Peninsula of Michigan to be exact, about three and a half hours northeast of Green Bay, Wisconsin. For some reason or another, the first wife and I had several of our friends come over and we were having some kind of movie or game night. In our base house living room, we had two TVs running. One had a movie, another had a game system, and we were all just playing some games and having fun. We were one seat short for the number of folks we had over, and we would take turns standing as somebody would get up for some reason or another. Move your meat, lose your seat rule was in full effect. I was sitting in the middle seat of our couch, and a friend, Fox, was standing near some windows behind me to the right. I thought I heard somebody whisper my name from the kitchen area that was behind me and to the left. I craned my neck over to see if there was someone in there that I wasn't aware of, but nope. I figured I was just imagining things, and I got up to check the kitchen and head to the bathroom. The bathroom was right near there. When I came out, Fox had taken my seat, so I started standing where he had been. From where I was, I could see our whole living room and kitchen area, just watching the movie and people gaming. Then I heard it again. Somebody whispered my name, but louder. Fox craned his head around to look into the kitchen, just as I spun my head over to look in there. Fox, did you hear that too? Yeah, he said. Someone said your name. From where I was, I could see everybody that was in my house at once, and nobody was in the kitchen. Fox could see everybody except me. I trotted into the kitchen and turned on the light, and that's when I saw a shape outside of the kitchen window on the little porch where the door was. The best way to describe what I saw next is this shape was something that looked like The Undertaker from WWE. Big, broad-brimmed hat and all dark colors. The shape turned and stepped down the steps and turned out of the little bit of light that was coming from my window. I was a young buck and I was thinking, ain't no way someone's gonna peek into my windows. So I beat feet to the door and out into the night, but there was no one. When I came out of the door, I had a clear view for about 75 to 100 feet in all directions and there was nothing moving out there. Most of my neighbors had dogs and none of them were barking. It was silent. No barking dogs, no insects, no engines, nothing. A couple of my friends had joined me outside and none of us saw or heard anything. Now I've been six feet tall since I was 18 years old and I went back in and had my ex-wife hold her finger where the shoulder of the shape was. I went outside and the shoulder of this thing was around four inches higher than my shoulder. So this thing was at least six four. No one in the house other than Fox heard my name called, and nobody saw the shape except me. The fact that Fox did hear my name is the only reason I don't think I imagined it. 
That was the night that I became a true believer in the supernatural. We used to live in a house in Nairobi, Kenya, in Karichwa Road. It was an old estate and had been there since like 1936. The owner was super old. My brother had come from university and like he did every single time that he came, he stayed downstairs in the living room. He would always watch horror movies until really late and catch up with me while my big sister and other brother were always jet-lagged and sleeping. So one night we decided that we would watch IT, the movie. I got some crazy nightmares. I even shouted my brother's name for him to come and open the door for me so I could go and use the bathroom. When I went back to sleep, he and I were sleeping in the same place. And that's when I froze for a second. I saw a girl, dressed in all white, just lying on my roof, back flat, looking at my brother and I. I was shocked and in utter disbelief. I rubbed my eyes and she disappeared. The same occurrences started happening pretty regularly. I told my brother and he thought it was just banter, until one night he saw it for himself. We told our parents and our siblings, and they got so skeptical that we moved out right away. After a while, our old estate became completely deserted, and I've never bothered to go back there again. Who knows what ghosts might be lurking around the house, waiting for their next victim. I should lead by saying that I tend to lean towards skepticism when it comes to the paranormal. I 100% believe that paranormal entities exist. However, more often than not, I think people psych themselves out rather than have a genuine paranormal experience. In fact, that's why it's taken me so long to follow up on my situation. I'm reconsidering the weight of the situation now based on the behaviors of people that have been around this artifact that I have, as well as some of the things that have happened to me while I was looking into it. About two years ago, I found myself volunteering at an orphanage in Uganda for six months. I decided to go out there as a way to recover from my alcoholism and move forward with my life. While I was in Uganda, I also ended up being involved with getting a primary school started and I assisted in getting a nonprofit off the ground. I was actually offered the position of operations manager at the nonprofit when I left the country, and the school was named after my friend and I in our honor. The point is, I was working really hard to have a good future, and I had succeeded in my recovery. In my last month in Uganda, a fellow volunteer gave me a gift. It was a Coptic cross that he had picked up in Ethiopia while he was on his way back into Uganda. I thought it was super cool and unique, so I got some string and fashioned it into a necklace to bring back to the States. I think it's important to note that the guy who gave it to me came from Trinidad and Tobago and outspokenly hated Americans. We clashed occasionally but we both understood that we came from different places and ideas and just agreed to disagree. To be clear though, 90% of the time we were friends and on good terms. The very first peculiar experience happened to me about six months after I had gotten back home. I was in line to check out in a grocery store when I saw a man who looked like he was from Africa. It's hard to explain, but when you've been in a place long enough, you can pick up on their demeanor and their clothing and things like that. The man was just walking by when he looked at me, then at my necklace, and then back at me, but this time with a look of absolute terror. At the time, I didn't think much of it, but still, it stuck with me. 
Before my second experience, I had some friends comment on my necklace. I was told that it had some sort of weight to it, and that something about it felt weird. I ended up asking some co-workers about it since I knew some of them were heavy believers in the spirit realm. After I took it out and showed them, nobody was comfortable standing any closer than five feet from me. They prayed for me and sent me home with a prayer book, which they claimed would keep me protected. At this point, I began to get paranoid, and I began recounting weird occurrences in my apartment. One example is that my two-week-long writer's block with my music production suddenly ceased when I moved the necklace out of my studio and into another room. I kept thinking of similar circumstances. The only problem here was that I couldn't quite convince myself that I wasn't just falling victim to my own placebo. I also remember the very distinct feeling of being watched, and I never really felt alone after that. One night, after overcoming my usual nightly restlessness, I fell into the comforts of sleep. The next thing I know, I had started a business in my hometown. A car wash, actually. I was showing a friend the place, and I let us all into the office. Everything in my office was neatly placed in its spot, just as it should have been. Suddenly, a man appeared walking past the doorway that exited from the side of the office into a car wash bay. Everything about the man's appearance was average. What was unsettling, though, was that I could tell that he knew I was watching him, even though he wasn't looking at me. It was just a gut feeling. The man disappeared as soon as I got a good look at him. I walked out the door in an attempt to see where he went. The man was nowhere to be seen. I walked back inside the side door of the office, and everything was trashed. I looked over at my friend and said that we needed to get the hell out of there. I led the way out of the front door, and laying on the ground in front of my feet was a horse. The horse was barely alive and was quite clearly in excruciating pain. I noticed it was missing two legs, one in the front and one in the rear. It was at that moment I realized I was in a dream and I felt my subconscious start to panic. When I finally woke up, I was sweating and terrified. Needless to say, that sleep was not something I was going to attempt again that night. I was seriously freaked out and decided to look into the possibility of a haunting. A week later, I found myself in the home of a spiritualist. I had made sure to leave the necklace outside to see if she could sense it as a sort of vetting process. I also made a point to be aware not to make any hints toward my experience, and more importantly, that necklace. She had told me that she felt the presence of a demon about me, and that it was not from the necklace that I had left outside. Since I made sure not to mention anything that could lead her to know about that necklace, I trusted her reading. However, I politely left after she gave me an estimate for $200 to solve my problem. I know she needs to pay her bills, too. I just didn't quite have that much money at the time. A week and a half later, I went to the office of my friend's pastor's friend. She was a Christian counselor who just so happened to have some expertise in the subject. I'm not a Christian, but I figured that it wasn't really a big deal since not everybody in counseling is a Christian. So, the appointment moved forward and I told her everything that had happened. She responded by doing some forearm muscle tests, which revealed that there were seven demons in me. She was able to relinquish six of them, and then things quickly escalated. Apparently the seventh demon was a tier above most, and can't be renounced with spiritual faith. I admitted that I wasn't a Christian, but leaned toward agnosticism. I didn't think it was a problem because I answered that question in the introduction packet she gave me when I first walked in. Long story short, she berated me for 20 minutes, told me I was going to be stuck with this demon until the day that I'm a devout man of God, shamed me for coming to a Christian counselor without being a Christian, and charged me more than we initially agreed on. I think it's important to note that I don't think this is normal behavior for her. I obviously didn't know her very well but the shift in her demeanor was huge. I honestly couldn't even recognize her when she got angry. 
Apparently she's been in business for years, and I can't imagine she would be remotely successful if she went off on every client that was simply looking for help, but didn't align with her point of view. I suspect it might have been induced, but nonetheless, I left her office hurt and angry. A week or two later, I decided to go out to Haiti to volunteer for disaster relief. I'm in my motel in Miami overnight, with a flight out to Port-au-Prince the next day. That night, I woke up with sleep paralysis. I've read stories about it, and realized it was important to stay calm and wait for the rest of my body to wake up. Suddenly, my legs were thrown out from under me, across the bed. My torso felt like it was being pushed around. The next minute consisted of my body being thrown helplessly around the bed while I quietly prayed with all of my might. When I did, it ended abruptly, and I waited until the sun rose to relax. I ended up missing my first flight the next morning by a fluke. I booked another ticket the following day, but I was given the wrong time of my flight, and I missed that one as well. In the last six months, I have lost my jobs, isolated myself from friends, I am practically homeless, and I have had to file for bankruptcy. My ever-so-promising career in music is now gone, and I am ashamed of myself because I never made it out to Haiti. I don't know if there is any merit to paranormal interference. I can chalk up the nightmare to my subconscious thoughts, the sleep paralysis to muscle spasms, and everything else to paranoia. But the unexplainable portions are, well, unexplained. Edit. Yesterday, I drove up to a spot on the mountain that I know pretty well. I crossed two creeks and walked a mile into the forest until I found a spot that I could easily recognize. I had the cross wrapped in a cloth that I had drenched in boiled salt water and let dry. I had also cleansed it myself before I left. I dug a small hole by the base of a tree and dropped the cloth-covered cross into the ground. I took out my Bible and read a select verse, prayed for it to leave me alone, and then addressed it directly. I demanded in the name of God that it will not follow me home or bother me anymore, and that it would be staying there. I've come back home, and I've only felt better since. Granted, it's only been a few days, but I've been acting more like myself. My productivity has improved vastly. And most importantly, I don't feel burdened by that feeling of constantly being watched. It looks like that did the trick. Although, if I ever do need to get back the cross, I have the exact coordinates memorized. This story happened in 2001. I was 14 years old at the time. I live in Madagascar, and a lot of strange things happen in everyday life here. One day, the mother of my friend lost her expensive handbag with valuables also inside of it. She really loved that handbag. It was a gift, and she desperately wanted to find it. So one person told her that Solware, an old lady, could find everything you had lost. She had some kind of supernatural sense to find everything, especially when the item was stolen. So my friend and his mom and I went to this lady. Her house was like 10 kilometers from my friend's house, and none of us had ever seen this old woman. My friend and I stayed in the car while his mom went inside the lady's house. When she came back, she told us that the lady gave her an exact description of where the bag was. She said, you lost your bag at home. The day you lost it, there were three people in the house. A young kid, an older kid, and you, or the mom. The younger kid stole the bag. Close to your house, there is a house where an old man lives. The young kid often stays in that house. There is a dog on the property. The bag is inside of the doghouse. The old lady even gave a physical description of my friend and his young cousin who were in the house that day when the bag disappeared. 
The house she was talking about was the house of the kid's grandfather. We went directly to that house immediately after seeing the lady, and the bag was exactly where she said it was. It was really crazy. The bag was right there inside the dog's house, with everything in it except for the money, like the lady said. It was unbelievable. That old lady was living 10 kilometers away from that neighborhood. Neither my friend, his mom, or I had ever heard about her, let alone met her. It was a very old lady who could barely walk, so it was completely impossible for her to know the face of my friend and his cousin, especially to know what happened that day. His cousin was like 10 or 11 years old, and neither him or his family could have known the existence of that woman. I don't know how that lady could know all this stuff. And when we were at the lady's house, there was a queue to see her. There were like 15 people waiting outside, asking her to find their lost things. The funny thing is, she didn't even ask for money for it. You just gave her what you wanted or what you could. Some people gave money and others gave gifts. Others gave nothing. It was the most insane and unexplainable thing I have ever experienced. I'm a pretty rational person. I need to experience things myself to believe them. But I'm still interested in the paranormal because I keep experiencing weird things. It all started when I was a child. I used to have a lot of weird nightmares, but a few stood out more than others, especially this one. A weird looking figure is following me through the city at night, trying to kill me. But for some reason, I can't seem to come near my apartment until a moment when I look at the sky and see a little guy lying and sitting on a half moon, looking and smiling at me. After that, I'm finally able to come home. One of my other experiences is in a Catholic church or parish that I often went to with my aunt. I can't remember why. My mom is Protestant, so I grew up in this part of Christianity. I was still a kid, not older than eight years old, and I grew bored because I had no interest in religion and I'm a hyperactive kid. So I go to the confessional booth. I enter a first time. The other side is empty. Then I go out and re-enter it, and there's a beautiful woman smiling at me in a very caring way. I smile back and go out again to get in again, and it's empty. The doors of the booth made a sound when opening and closing, so I would have heard her when she came in and out. Those experiences do not seem scary. On the contrary, they were kind of peaceful. Then everything changed for the worse. In 2010, I moved to another country, and it had been rough on me. I had trouble making friends, and I was self-conscious because of my weight. So I would always make the most of my vacations when I was back in my native country. In 2013, one night, I went to the cinema to watch a horror movie with my friend. Then we got back at my house to sleep. It's midsummer, so it's really warm. Thus, I kept my window wide open. We're fast asleep until we hear a big boom, like something crashed into the boxes that I have over my wardrobe. I just scream for my dad because I think that it's a bird or a bat, and I'm scared. But my dad says there's nothing but by the loud sound and the fact that the box had moved and that it was a heavy box, the bird or bat would have been unconscious. But anyway, we go back to sleep and the next morning when we wake up, I have bruises and scratches all over my body. This has never happened before. I don't move very much at all when I'm asleep. Neither does my friend. And both of our nails were really short. She even tried to scratch me again, but it didn't leave the marks. At this point, we were both uncomfortable, so we decided to go sleep at her grandma's house. When we were there, we slept in her great-grandmother's bedroom, and just between the two beds, there was a cross. 
So again, we fall asleep, and when we wake up, the cross is inclined, and I have even more bruises on my body. Then I go back to my mom in the country that I had moved to. The bruises disappeared maybe two to three weeks after I arrived. It was from that moment on that my life took another turn for the worse. 2014. As I said, my mom is really religious, so she wanted me to take my communion. I truly didn't want to, and every time I was near a religious place, I would feel discomfort. But I went through my Bible study, so we decided that I would have my communion in Cameroon, where my mom is from. Weird things started to happen to me there. I had to visit a priest prior to the ceremony, and he kept saying that something was following me, and that it didn't seem to want my well-being. But I'm thinking, whatever, I don't believe in any of this. I'm just doing this to make my mom happy. So fast forward to the ceremony, not even two minutes in, I get bored, so my eyes keep on scanning the church, and they keep moving up, so I'm actually looking over the priest's head. I see something that looks like an LED tinsel catching fire, so I started pointing at it. Luckily, they extinguished it quickly. As for the rest of the ceremony, I felt kind of disconnected. Then we came back to Europe, but my anxiety kept getting worse. I couldn't even go to school properly, but nothing too severe. In 2015, I went on a summer vacation at my dad's. Again, I came home with a lot of unexplained bruises. My mom kept thinking that it must be some result of the fact that I was turning vegetarian and I had lost a lot of weight. But the blood tests showed no signs of anything that could explain it. In the summer of 2016, I got my first real boyfriend, and it was in the beginning of my first year of high school. It was pretty calm, but I kept feeling more and more anxious, and I kept distancing myself from others. But it's weird because I should have been happy. I had everything I wanted at that moment. Two years later, my mental health got worse. I was diagnosed with severe depression. I had a lot of dark thoughts and the bruises on my body were back. In July of 2018 is when I decided to move back to my native country and try to get healthier. I got into a high school where I made a lot of great friends and my mental health began to improve. But weird things happened at that house. The first year was okay, but from 2019 on, things just kept happening. In my dad's house, we have two bathrooms, one upstairs and one downstairs. I would use the latter while my dad and stepmom would use the one upstairs. I'm used to waking up at odd times, especially around 3 a.m. So I got downstairs to drink some water, go to the toilet and then to the bathroom to wash my hands. I made sure to shut off the water correctly and go back to sleep. I'm the first one to wake up and I go to take a shower, but I see that the water is running, which is weird because I know that I shut it off. But at the time I was like, okay, I was tired. Maybe I didn't shut it off correctly. But it happened a few more times. The one experience that really got to me was this year. I was home alone and I brushed my teeth and I made sure to shut the water off. I even double checked it. I went back to my room, was minding my own business, and that's when I heard the staircase creak. It can't creak without somebody stepping on it, at least not like that. I heard footsteps going downstairs, and the water starts running. Again, I'm home alone, but I was like, screw it, and I went downstairs to shut it off. I was on my way upstairs again when the water starts again. I shut it off again, and I hear footsteps going upstairs. I felt watched the entire night. I almost always had the feeling that I was being watched in that house, especially when I woke up during the night, or when I was downstairs at night. I also had a lot of nightmares where somebody that I knew, but also somebody who scared me when I was younger, or a stranger, depending on the night, were trying to kill me or me and my friends. 
Another common dream was that the house next to mine was burning. Then I came back to live with my mom in July of 2020. I had the scariest nightmare of my life, although it felt like more than a nightmare. I was attending a wake, something that I would never do, for an uncle from my mom's side that I didn't recognize. But again, there's many people from her side of the family that I don't know with a cousin. Many people were there remembering good times with him, until an aunt brought up that his teeth were rotten. And then many people started bringing that up. And another uncle and the cousin that I came with said that they knew why, because he told them just before passing away. My cousin said, and I quote, the reason his teeth were rotten is because he was a cannibal. And that's when I woke up. What's special about this one is that I could actually see myself in this nightmare. I was conscious that it wasn't real. I could feel the tension and uncomfortableness. So I kept telling myself to try to wake up. The night after that, I had another nightmare where somebody was trying to kill me again. There are two other nightmares that I have all the time. One, I'm in a car with my friends and the car breaks down and suddenly there's a car that stops and a man suggests his help, but he ends up killing us. Well, I wake up before he really does it, but it's obvious what he's going to do. The second time I had that nightmare, I was aware that I had already had it, but there were different friends in the car. I could remember what was going to happen from the last time I had the dream, so I forced myself to wake up. The second dream, it was with a kidnapped little boy that I had tried to help, but instead I became a hostage myself and was almost killed. Again, the second time and onward that I had this nightmare, I remembered that it was a nightmare, and I was trying to wake myself up. When I close my eyes to fall asleep, I see faces. Most of them are very scary, and it makes me uncomfortable. I often see a clown staring at me. I happen to have a phobia of clowns, and it's always the same clown, but there are many faces. Am I just getting myself worked up? Is there something wrong with me? I have no idea what the meaning of any of this is. This was not my only experience with the paranormal, but it certainly is the most memorable. I was living in rural Ghana at the time, working for a non-profit organization based in a small farming town of about 4,000 people. It was very poor and undeveloped. Few houses had electricity or running water. I lived with my colleague in a guest house on the organization's compound. This town, like many rural communities in West Africa, was home to a substantial number of people who practiced juju. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the term, juju is a traditional form of West African witchcraft. Many times throughout the year I lived there, I would wake up in the middle of the night to the sound of a local coven off in the bush somewhere, beating drums and chanting. They were practicing their rituals and performing spells, as the locals had explained to me. This always occurred in the middle of the night, during the witching hour. Oftentimes, when this was happening, parishioners from various local churches, mostly Anglican and Catholics, would meet up on a hill and start their own drum circles, chanting prayers and singing hymns, in an effort to defend against the black magic being performed across town. As often as this spiritual battle happened during my stay there, I never got used to it. Not only was it completely unnerving, the noise would keep me up for hours and I would be exhausted at work the next day. One night during a torrential downpour, the power went out. This happened every few days during the rainy season, so we weren't concerned. We took out the flashlights and lit some candles in our shared space and went about our evening routine. But something felt very different about that night. The air had a certain feel to it, 
a strange tension that both my roommate and I sensed, but neither acknowledged in the moment. Without much else to do, we both went to bed early to read. I remember feeling really uneasy going to bed, as if there was some kind of presence in the room. I kept shining my flashlight into the corners and around the room. Eventually, I drifted off to sleep. I woke up hearing the faint sound of drums off in the distance. I got up to go to the latrines, and walking outside, I could hear the muffled sound of chanting. Although I had heard it dozens of times already by that point, the sound of their rituals sent a shiver down my spine. After using the restroom, I went back to bed, doing my best to ignore the sounds emanating from the woods. Just as I was falling asleep, I heard a bizarre sound coming from my acoustic guitar in the corner of the room. It sounded as though something was slowly dragging an edge down along the underside of the steel string while stretching it outwards at the same time. I came out of my half-sleep, my heart in my throat. The slow scraping of the string continued for a second, then paused. The guitar creaked in the dark, the string sounding completely stretched, and then, thwang. The string slapped back against the neck of the guitar, ringing throughout the house. It honestly sounded as if the string had broken. I was terrified. I couldn't bring myself to move, or even to shine my flashlight toward the corner to see what might have struck the string. I laid there in bed, too fearful to move or sleep for about an hour. I started wondering if it was all in my head. Eventually, I started to fall asleep again. Without any buildup, the guitar made the same stretching sound on another string and then released, slapping against the fretboard and ringing out as loud as the first time. I jumped out of bed with my flashlight looking around the room, wondering if I'd lost my mind. There was no falling asleep after that. When morning broke, I checked the guitar in the light. I could have sworn that the two strings had broken, judging by the awful sounds they made, but they were all intact. Two of the strings, the low and high E strings, were way out of tune and felt loose while the others were all still taut and in tune. I asked my roommate over breakfast if she had heard it, and she had. She had heard the first note ring out before falling asleep, and the second had woken her up. We were both understandably rattled. We told the story to our colleague at work that morning, and he said it was probably the wind blowing against the guitar strings. That satisfied my roommate, but not me. How could the wind pull and strike a single string at a time? If the change in temperature or air pressure was warping the neck of the guitar and affecting string tension, wouldn't all of the strings be way out of tune? To this day, I have no explanation for how my guitar rang out on its own in the middle of the night, and I will never forget that sound. This happened in around 1954, in Hilbro, Johannesburg, South Africa. My grandparents lived in Hilbro at the time after my grandfather returned from the Korean War, flying for the SAAF and finding work in the mines. He loved being a pilot, but with a growing family, he took a job with the mines, paying much, much more. From the beginning, the house they lived in just didn't seem right. Strange things would happen, like blankets being pulled off at night, with nobody there. Movement could be seen from the corner of the eye, and my aunt, who was around three at the time, would talk to someone standing in the door when my grandmother gave her a bath, someone that only she could see. One morning, everybody was either at school, kindergarten, or at work when my grandmother was getting dressed to go to the shops. She was in her underwear, when she saw a nun standing in her room. Her blood froze in her veins when she saw this old nun. Suddenly, at a fast pace, the nun walked toward my grandmother, shouting, Hurry up! Go! Go! 
They need you. Go now. As quickly as she appeared, she was gone. My grandmother was out of her mind with fear and ran outside, struggling to open the locked front door. She managed to run outside and scream in the street. It wasn't until an elderly lady from next door ran outside and covered my grandmother with a jacket that she realized she was still in her underwear. After going back inside the house with the elderly lady accompanying her, she explained what had happened. The neighbor explained to my grandmother that this was foreboding and that something bad was probably going to happen. Her words weren't even out of her mouth before the telephone rang. It was the mines, informing her that my grandfather had been injured in a rock fall underground. He was okay, but taken to the hospital with a broken leg. A lot of strange things would happen to them in the future, especially after they moved to the new-founded gold mining town of Welcome in 1957, my hometown. I was in a class, and we had a special guest speaker from Guinea. He brought a balafone with him. I had read in the book for the class that there were a lot of superstitions and paranormal beliefs in some cultures in Africa. So during the Q&A time, I asked him if he had ever experienced anything paranormal. He then told this story about his family's balafone. He said that his family, as well as other musical families in his village, would place curses on their instruments in order to protect them for generations. His family's balafone had been around for many generations, and had a powerful spell put on it. He said the military came one day to take his family's balafone away. He gave a reason for this, but I forgot what it was. He said they loaded it onto their truck and went to start the engine, but the engine wouldn't start. They tried many things to get the engine to start, until finally they took the instrument out of the truck. They then went to start the engine again, and this time, it started with no problem. Then they decided to put the balafone back into the truck while the engine was running. As soon as they put it in, the engine gave out. At this point, the military guys got spooked, and they left the balafone behind with the family. Another story that I heard was from one of my Uber drivers. I believe he said he was from Nigeria and I had the nerve to ask him if he had ever had any supernatural experiences while living in Africa. I figured there was a good chance, because it seems like there's a strong and ancient magic in Africa, at least based on what I've read in that book I mentioned. He then told me this story about how his family would throw objects into the stream by their house if they wanted to curse another family in their village. He said that these spells would always work, and the other family would always have some misfortune or become ill. I don't know if these guys were just pulling my leg or not because I'm a silly American, but they seemed very serious when they told their stories. I particularly don't think the balafone player would have told that elaborate story if it had been made up, since that would have been a giant waste of time for the class. It's possible that the balafone story could be explained by some kind of weight capacity issue with the truck, I suppose. Also, the water curse might be explained because they used water as a drinking source and the stuff they threw in might have poisoned people downstream. But something tells me that there's more to it. I kind of hope there is. I often have strange things happen to me. This time, it was on my recent trip to Tanzania for a midwifery internship. One weekend that I was there, I went on safari in Ruaha National Park. On the safari itself, it was only the guide and I. However, afterwards I was staying at the hilltop lodge in a small hut-like room. It was a peaceful lodge overlooking Ruaha Valley. One particular night I was there, I fell asleep as usual, but I was awakened to the sound of clicking from heels on a hardwood floor. They were coming toward me. 
As soon as I opened my eyes, I heard a woman say, How can you sleep here? I turned to look to my right because that's where the voice came from. I couldn't see much, but I did see a black shadow right next to me on the edge of the bed. The shadow then fell into my stomach or hip area, at least that's what I felt. I felt the shadow go through me, and I felt the bed compress next to me. Keep in mind, I was alone. I checked the time, and of course, it's 3am. I was in Africa, by myself. There wasn't anyone to talk to about what just happened. So I thought, stupidly, that I would reach down where there was an indentation in the bed. I don't really know what I was trying to accomplish. Maybe something was there. Nothing. I was pretty scared. I wanted to turn on the lamp that I had next to the bed, but that didn't happen. All these events happened fairly quickly, within five minutes. After I felt around, the strangest thing happened, and all of a sudden my head was back and my eyes had shut. I knew that I was falling asleep. I also knew that I wasn't purposefully trying to get back to sleep. My body began to go numb in a systematic kind of way. First my head, then my chest, and so on. I tried to scream because I thought maybe the lodge owners would hear me and would be able to help. I was in sheer panic. I managed to whisper scream. That's all I could get out. I screamed three times and I realized that it wasn't going to work. I gave up and was propelled into a dream. A nightmare, rather. The black shadow had possessed me and was in my mind, speaking to me. She told me that I could do things with my mind when she was there. I found I could open doors and start fires just by thinking about it. It was cool, but really terrifying. I had to find a way to get her out. She wanted me to do terrible things, and she wanted to consume my soul. I spent a majority of the time trying to figure out what I could do to make this demonic being leave. I knew I could have an exorcism, but I couldn't find a priest to do it. I pleaded with her, begging for my soul, screaming that my life was of value and that there were things that I was meant to accomplish. I would be incapable of said things with this demon possessing me, but it wasn't working. She didn't care. My body was her vessel now. The end half was an endless search in a sanitarium-type hospital, looking for a different vessel. I thought that maybe, if I could find somebody who was brain dead, it would be the best idea, if you can call it that. I don't know how the dream ended because my alarm went off. It was so realistic, and I do believe in the paranormal. It was so real, I had to make sure that I couldn't still do things with my mind once I woke up. I will never forget this experience. So this all started at the age of eight. My family moved a lot due to my father's job. So we had just arrived in South Africa. And about a month after arriving there, my parents found a beautiful house, big and magnificent. However, three weeks after moving in, I wake up at three in the morning. Next thing I knew, I was hearing a man singing. I open my window to hear him better, and through the leaves, because of course there was a tree so I couldn't see anything, I see an African man wearing a purple boo-boo. He kind of looks like my grandfather, so he didn't scare me at first. However, at one point he stops singing, and I can feel his eyes piercing through the leaves. I quickly close my window and put myself under the sheets force field, I guess. Right after that, he starts singing again. The melody, I've tried to look for it for years now. It's like it's tattooed on my brain. Anyway, it only happened once whilst in South Africa. 
I had a lot of other spooky shit happen to me there too, but it's unrelated to this story. This was in 2008. Fast forward to 2015. I'm out at one in the morning in my town, just walking and appreciating the silence of the night. At one point, I hear a faint whisper. At first, I thought it was the wind. Nope. The melody starts again, and it seemed like he was singing, standing a couple of meters from me. Except I was on a road, and one side of it had a river. The other side just had an empty space, just dirt and some grass for about an acre. I remember looking around and could kind of spot him in the corner of my eye, still rocking his purple boo-boo. I panic and I yell at him to stop, but it goes on. I start running to my house. It was about two kilometers away. I'm no runner, and I have practically no endurance due to anemia, but believe me when I tell you, I sprinted for a good 10 minutes. I stopped at about 200 meters from my house, completely exhausted and spitting my lungs out. I felt weird for a moment because I was basically crouching, taking a breath, and it's like everything stopped. I heard him sing again. I took whatever energy I had left to get back to my house. I slept with the lights on for about two weeks. Now I'm 19, and I kind of forgot about all of this until three weeks ago. It was about 8 o'clock. I went out early to buy some cigarettes, and I was walking back home. As I did, I passed through a park. Lo and behold, he sings again. This time I start thinking that I must have episodes or something, but cars are passing literally a couple of meters from the fence of the park. So this time I keep my cool and tape recorded on my phone. Then I try something. I take my headphones and put them on, without music. Although the sound from the outside world is muffled, I can still hear him singing, but muffled just like the sound of my environment. So it's not from my head. I take them off and head back home, checking behind me every so often. Once home, I take my phone and listen to the recording. Blank. Absolutely nothing on the tape. So I just go on with my business. At this point, I didn't give a damn anymore. In and of himself, he doesn't really scare me. Like I said, he reminds me of my grandpa. I'm half French and half African. However, it's just so startling each time. And this damn melody. Sometimes, I catch myself singing it. I know that he will come again at some point in the future. But next time, I want to be ready. I don't know how I'm going to do that. But I will. I have had a number of experiences in a house in Cape Town, South Africa, in a certain section in Belleville, to be more precise. I'm trying to find some sort of online archive where I could research the experiences that I had. If anybody knows anything about this or could help, that would be great. Alternatively, if you work somewhere and I could give you some information, let me know if anything comes of it. I would appreciate that too. As for a bit of backstory, I've had many unexplained happenings in a certain house in Belleville. I think I experienced pretty much all of my paranormal experiences there. Extremely uncomfortable feelings in certain parts of the house. Noises of children playing. Sightings of a girl, probably around 9 or 10, being hit by items that were thrown at me. Doors and toilet seats slam all the time. And younger children have nightmares while living there. They'll wake up in the middle of the night and have dreams of blood coming out of the walls and the flowers. I'm not too sure, but I do believe that I heard that another couple who lived in this house before us moved out after less than a year with no reason given. If anybody can help me find something out about what's going on, I would appreciate it.
This happened to my late grandmother when she was a child during the early 1930s. She grew up on a farm on the Orange River in a small town called Prisca in the northern Cape of South Africa. Their farmhouse was built in such a way that the front door and back door were aligned across from each other. As such, you could walk through the house from the front to the back with only the dinner table in your path. One summer's evening, just after sunset, her parents and her seven brothers and sisters sat down at the dinner table, and my great-grandfather started to pray, giving thanks for the food that they were about to eat. As all kids do, she opened her eyes during the prayer, looking around the table. Suddenly in the front door, she saw a little man covered in hair, no taller than two or three feet. In his hand, he had a little shambok and a cap on his head. He looked directly at my grandmother and started to run toward the table. She started to scream with fear. Everybody at the table was bewildered because of her scream and jumped up. At the same moment, everyone saw this little man run toward them, dive under the table, and run out the back door. Everybody was pretty shaken, and nobody slept that evening. Many strange happenings have gone on on that farm, from Tokoloshi to a pitch black dog with an extremely long tongue that's only ever seen at night. But being Christians and very religious, my grandparents didn't let that get them down. They never gave up on their farm. Tokoloshi is African folklore, but I tell you, my grandmother and her family, they saw the Tokoloshi, and I believe that he's real. I've been in Africa volunteering and teaching English to students for quite a while. I've been back home in America for about two months now. I don't know if this is a dream or real or both, but the following is 100% true. For the past week, I've been having this recurring dream about a creature at least two to three times. It's tall, about seven feet. It has long, pointy hands and claws, and its body is wet. Not like dripping wet, but just wet. Its feet are large, and it makes loud stomping noises with each step. Every single dream is the same. I look out my living room window, and it's there. It's facing away from me, toward the middle of the street. But somehow, it senses me and it turns its head all the way around to stare at me. Its whole body doesn't turn, just the head. It sees me and it lets out this loud screech and runs toward my house. It doesn't run like a normal person or humanoid does. Its body jerks about in an odd, creepy way as it runs toward my home. I run away from the window and I jump in bed. I hear it climbing up my house. I can hear its claws scraping at the house, and then it reaches my living room window. It climbs in without opening the window. I never hear the window sliding open, but somehow it's in my house. My husband is asleep next to me and I'm trying to wake him up, but he doesn't budge. The clock says 3 a.m. That's when I hear the loud thud of its footsteps. It's taking slow steps toward my room. I feel like I can't breathe. I can't move. I'm literally frozen solid in my bed. Then it makes its final steps to the bedroom. I can see this creature standing there looking at me. And then all of a sudden, the clock hits 3.01 and I wake up. When I wake up, I am actually awake in real life and my heart is pounding. I don't know what I'm experiencing. Is this just some creepy dream? Sleep paralysis? I haven't experienced anything like this often, only once that I know of in my life. I don't know if this is a real creature from lore, maybe something that followed me back home from Africa, 
I don't know if it's trying to hurt me or if it's just my brain being weird. Any input would help though. I need to figure this out because I am terrified. In a small town in South Africa named Pilgrim's Rest, ghost stories are ever prominent amongst the locals. One school holiday, I went to visit some family who had an old gable house on the outskirts of town. Being gifted with the ability to speak with the dead, I loved going there. I would sit in the fields or near the old railway as they would show me flashbacks of the town's early days. But that holiday, Something terrible was shown to me, terrible to the point that I have never returned to the town. Not because I don't want to, but more because I'm not wanted. I discovered a dark secret of that town, and what I saw left a scar. I was out on my usual night walk through the old children's cemetery, which was established during a plague. Most of the graves remain unmarked but all the years of deaths, say 1886. I loved watching the kids play under the full moon, but then I saw them, the miners. They were walking from a part of the forest that I had been told was off limits, but they looked sad, like they were forgotten. The next day, I went to that part of the forest, and eventually, after about a two hour hike, I found the miners again. Approaching slowly, I made them aware that I could see them, and that's when they told me the story of their gruesome death. See, back in those days, witchcraft and curses still scared people, and the founding families had been brainwashed into believing that the reason the plague hit town so hard was because they were mining on sacred ground. But instead of following the right procedures to stop the mining, they just collapsed the mine on top of all 50 miners, claiming that it was an accident, and then proceeding to leave the miners buried under the rubble and erased from history. After I discovered this, things weren't so friendly for me there anymore. And like I said before, I've never been back. Not because I don't want to go, but because I am no longer wanted. This happened about four years ago in South Africa. To start, I must mention that I am a serious skeptic when it comes to ghosts or the paranormal. I almost always resort to a practical answer, but in this case, I could find no excuse for what happened. We moved into a new house. The previous tenants were apparently drug addicts and you could see that some really bad shit happened there. One of the doors had a hole in the middle, with a piece of hair sticking to it, like someone's head had been bashed through. Anyway, one afternoon I was home alone watching TV. There was no wind outside. The fan and the air conditioning were off. My hair flicked forward, and then flicked me in the face hard. I looked for my cats, assuming that they were playing with my hair. But they were both outside. Like I said, there was no fan, nothing at all that could have caused that. Two nights later, my husband and I were watching TV, and we heard what sounded like a shower come on. We both went to have a look, and it turned out it was coming from outside. The front garden was pretty much flooded, with absolutely no water source. No rain, no tap, no water hole, house pipe, gutter, nothing and only in one patch. A few weeks later again, we were watching TV at night. We heard three loud bangs on a window from the back of the house. Being South Africa, we thought, oh shit, an intruder. My husband ran to have a look, 
and there was no one there. There's no access to the back except for a padlock gate. The walls are very high with electric fencing on top, and my husband was there within a few seconds. There's absolutely no way that someone could have knocked and gotten away over the walls or the gate that quickly. I should also mention that while living in this house, my husband and I fought constantly. We never used to fight before, and we haven't since. Again, a few weeks later, our doorbell rang. We lived in a complex, so I thought maybe some kids were messing around because there was no one there. It rang again, and again, no one there. I went outside, and the complex is in a circle shape, so you can see pretty far down both sides of the road, and there was nobody. The same night, a little later, it went off yet again, and the tune of the bell had changed from a normal ding-dong sound to that of an actual melody of some kind. It was one of the preset songs on the bell, sure, but not the one that we had chosen. I thought, okay, don't panic, it must have a short or something. But it never happened again. We got hold of a lady from our church and had a meeting with her, not at the house. She said without a doubt she could sense that something was going on at home without me even really getting into it. We then had a priest bless the house, and ever since that day, we didn't experience anything else. Not one thing. Like I said before, I always look for obvious answers, always, but I couldn't explain why these things happened. I promise you, this is 100% true. My family and I always led a pretty exhausting life. I was busy with school, they were busy with work and bills, so we barely ever got breaks. However, during the holiday school break in around December, my father decided that it would be best if my half-sister and I went to a secluded cabin in Alaska. His mother had bought it when they were fleeing the war in their country in order to relieve some stress she has three kids who are already married and have children of their own, so she was supposed to take care of me. Everything went fine when we arrived there, and we slept in the same upstairs room, except my bed was in front of the class doors leading to the balcony, and hers was right by the door. It was around 2 a.m., and I was still awake, using up all of my mobile data to chat with friends who also had trouble sleeping. We were on Instagram. Suddenly, I heard a loud thud that jolted me to my senses. My half-sister only rolled over in the bed and complained about the sound, but then she fell back asleep. Once I made sure that she wasn't awake, I quickly abandoned my bed and opened the glass doors, and then went out onto the balcony. It had a small wooden chair with a mug that my sister was drinking coffee from earlier. At first, I saw the other cabin, where an elderly couple was staying with their grandchildren and two big German Shepherd dogs that slept outside. So I thought they may have knocked something over because the couple had big barrels outside of their house for some reason. But something else caught my attention and it wasn't anything ordinary. It was a figure of a woman who walked calmly out of the forest surrounding the trail that led to the small bundle of cabins there. When I noticed her, she looked straight up at me, and I immediately bolted back inside. I forced myself to sleep quickly that night. I woke up at around 4 a.m., and I had to go to the bathroom, but I was too lazy to stand up for a while. So, I rolled over, and the first thing I see is a woman with all gray features, despite there being a light outside, tapping on the glass. I just ran quietly toward the bathroom because I was still feeling sleepy, and when I came back, I noticed that she wasn't there. I got creeped out, so I woke up my sister, who checked everything, including downstairs, but there wasn't anything there. I remember that the dogs barked a lot that night. The next morning, I told her about that, and she asked me if I was sure that it wasn't just a bad dream. 
and then promised to call the police if the woman kept showing up. It was two days later, and we heard a lot of barking, but never saw a woman. My sister invited the couple over for coffee. I remember that the old man also mentioned seeing a woman outside who was digging in the snow and dirt with her hands in the middle of the night. When he yelled, what are you doing here, loudly at her, she just ran off into the forest. Nothing really happened later except the power going off and on constantly, the couple's dogs acting really strangely, and footsteps in the snow that weren't there before showing up in front of our cabin. We wrote that off as other people staying at the cabin looking at ours when we went out grocery shopping though. What I remember clear as day, however, is that when I was upstairs playing with the old couple's grandchildren once, the mug that was still on the balcony, because my sister had forgotten it there, just flew off and shattered despite nobody being there to do it. Afterward, the dog started barking again. It scared me so badly that I took the kids downstairs. When we returned home, though, my mother jokingly said that maybe the place is haunted. And that seriously has me thinking that it really is. Is there something paranormal about this? Or is there just some creepy robber lady going around the cabins and scaring people? I still can't explain the mug, though. I just wish I knew what this was. So, I don't even know where to begin. I've always considered sharing my stories, my family's stories, sharing things about that house. But I was always scared. We didn't talk about the house, in the house, or on the property. We didn't talk about it after my brother and I moved into our own places, so writing this makes me nervous. We didn't really tell friends or family, we just didn't have people over that often. And if they did come, they usually didn't come back. But the papers are supposed to be signed in the morning and the house might actually be gone. I'm still hesitating about jinxing it though. I guess I'll start with some background and a story. We live in Alaska and this house was built before Alaska was actually even a part of the United States. There are several buildings and the house has just been continuously built onto. It's now just a large three-bedroom house. There's really nothing from the outside that would make you consider what might be happening within the walls. It's actually kind of alluring. It has a nice big front lawn and big pretty trees. Just kind of cozy looking. I think I'll share the one that bothers me the most. Although it's by far not the scariest thing, it still really haunts me. My dad started having heart attacks really young. He was 36 when he had his first one. By his third one, the doctors had to have him flown to another city to perform the surgery. I was around 15 and my brother was 17, so we just stayed at home while mom and dad were at the hospital. My dad died on the table that day. He was dead for a long while before they managed to bring him back. He was in a coma for about two weeks and then came home to make a full recovery, no less. But the weirdest thing ever started happening when he got home. I didn't know until a few months later, but it actually started the night that he died for a while. That night at around two in the morning, I woke up in a panic attack. I couldn't move a muscle. I could hardly breathe. I thought I was dying. And that happened every single night until they got home. My parents came home and my dad started to make his recovery. I was able to start stressing less, and I hoped that that would help my sleep issue. It didn't. For a couple of months after they got home, I had panic attacks every night. I tried just not sleeping, but I could never stay awake. I couldn't tell my parents, my dad being out of work and so sick. My mom was working to cover both of their checks. With all of the extra stress she was under, I didn't want my bad dreams or whatever they were to cause any more stress. But obviously, my caring father did eventually notice that I was tired all the time, and so he asked me about it. And I told him it was nothing, that he didn't need any more things to worry about. 
One night during a panic attack, I heard someone coming down the stairs, which my parents didn't do during the night. When I finally calmed down and caught my breath, and was finally able to move my limbs again, I went to see who it was. My dad was sitting in the recliner in almost complete darkness. He looked so beat down and tired. He saw me and asked me why I was up, and I finally told him what was happening. And that's when he told me his story. The day he died, he saw someone, something. He told me that every night he would wake up paralyzed knowing that this being was near. Sometimes it would be standing there. Sometimes it would pop into a dream. Sometimes it would just be like shadows in the darkness. For a couple of weeks after, it kept happening to us. But it was happening at the exact same time. It wasn't always, say, 2.15 in the morning, like that. But it was always in sync with his. If he woke up knowing that thing was around, I would wake up with a panic attack. Every single time. We would meet in the living room, confirm that we had the same problem as the night before, and try to go back to sleep. It had to be about four or five months of this, and one night, we were done. We were exhausted. Why us? Why isn't my brother waking up? Why doesn't my mom feel it in the same room? My dad was so frustrated. Finally, he literally screamed, Leave me the fuck alone. You can't have me. I'm not ready to die. He said that about four more times. And as crazy and Hollywood and bullshit as it sounds, it left us alone. We could sleep. Neither of us have ever experienced it afterward. We experienced some other truly insane shit at that house, but never again have I woken up in a panic attack. I work in an elementary school in a fairly rural part of Alaska. Like everywhere else, we have a work-from-home order for all the teachers. I'm working in an administrative-type position right now, though, and I was supposed to record which stacks of paperwork teachers left for students that still needed to be delivered, and then call the parents to arrange a drop-off. Because of the time of day, and because of social distancing, I was alone in the building. Even the janitor was gone. Now, this isn't the first time I've been alone in the gym. I was a long-term sub for the PE teacher and spent maybe four months in the role. But it was the first time that I was the only person in the entire building. Today, I was moving stacks in the gym, sorting by family, when the door to the PE equipment closet started to shake. It sounded like somebody was leaning against it and trying to push it open. I thought at first that air pressure from a vent or something was to blame but I've worked in the gym a lot and that's never happened before. I walked over to investigate and then the door popped open. It was a bit weird, but I figured maybe some kind of airflow issue was to blame and maybe the door hadn't been latched the whole way. I checked to make sure that nobody was hiding in the closet and I re-secured it, taking my time to lock it so that it couldn't pop back open. I got back to work, picked up a stack to move and the door flew open again, this time more violently. It banged against the wall. I'll admit I was getting a little creeped out. The door has never caused me trouble like that before, and I cannot stress enough, I have been the PE sub a lot. I even coached an after-school sport in the gym. I checked to make sure that nothing was leaning on it, that it was fully latched, that there was nothing in the hinges, and then I secured it again. I finished my task and started walking to turn off the lights and re-secure the building. Right as I reached for the light switch, the door flew open again. I admit it, I fled. Instead of staying to make phone calls in the office, I locked down the building and left. After I got home and was telling my mother, a former teacher in the building, about the experience, she laughed. She said, that's just Mr. Chris. He's an old PE teacher who used to work in the building. Apparently, when he was alive, he would sometimes hide in the closet and startle her when she was working as a track coach. 
He was a bit of a prankster, but everybody loved him. She thinks that our resemblance just caused her old friend to want to say hello. Recently, my friend died suddenly. His last text to me was, sorry, but we've got no word from toxicology yet. All we know is that he didn't drink enough to kill him, he wasn't sick, and there were no signs of a struggle. I didn't find out on the day that it happened. I have no clue what I did that day. I know it was a full moon. I remember coming home and looking for it. I have no texts or posts or screenshots from that day. I have a total gap in time. My friend and I had a rare spiritual connection and talked often of quantum cosmology. We could always tell when the other one was feeling off. I had always joked with him that if he died before me, I would want him to come to my apartment, flicker my lights, and give me some kind of a sign that he was still there. Four nights ago, I'm finally passing out after having been awake the majority of the time since this happened. I'm going mental at this point, looking through all of his posts, and realizing that a lot of the content had common themes. Swallowing someone else's demons. Being swallowed by your own demons. Being stuck in a labyrinth. A tired soul seeking escape from the maze. My grandma calls before bed to tell me that she's saying a prayer that I'll get a sign because everybody knows I'm a disaster. Soon after, my lights start going mental. I have the dimmer light and all three were flickering out of sync. I freaked out for a while, but at this point I'm beat, so finally I just pass out. I dream that Jordan, my friend, is telling me to go walk downtown to the highest hill I can find and calm down. Not just a dream. He's in my room, I swear it in a gray sweater I've never seen before, and he's sitting down laughing at me, telling me that the answer I'm looking for is so obvious, and to just go take my walk and I'll figure it all out. It was like a sleep paralysis, but I was totally calm when I saw him. I get up and I walk calmly downtown. I know there's a spot here that people go to to pray and follow some sacred walk, but the last time I went, it was all unfinished. I text my friend and I say that for some reason I need to go there. I head up the hill figuring I'll find some meaningful passage or stone or something. And I find a giant labyrinth. There's this huge labyrinth at the top. For those that don't know, the labyrinth walk symbolizes your quest as a spirit on a human journey rather than a human on a spiritual journey. Oddly, that was one of the last quotes he had sent me. He was also obsessed with the book Looking for Alaska, which I didn't bother reading until this happened. But holy hell. It's about a guy who gives up on searching for answers when a friend dies suddenly to escape the labyrinth and realizes that forgiving his friend for dying is the only way out of the labyrinth of suffering. Side note, when I told his girlfriend about what I had seen and experienced, she said that he died wearing the gray hoodie I described. I will try and give as much detail as possible and keep this from going on for too long. This happened back in the summer of 2015, when I was serving in the United States Army Reserves. I was stationed in southern Alabama in a transportation company. Sometimes, my girlfriend would come with me on drill weekends, and we would crash at a friend of hers apartment, which is where this incident took place. This particular weekend, we were in a large convoy in the middle of nowhere, on some back road out in the sticks, well over a hundred miles from the city. That was when I got the most confusing, bizarre, and downright creepy phone call of my young life. She was in utter hysterics. She was crying and screaming, wondering why I would frighten her so badly, what my problem was, and asking me how I even pulled it off. After I was finally able to calm her down, 
This is the story that she relayed to me. Sometime that afternoon, her friend was at work and she was at the apartment by herself. Suddenly, there was a loud bang on the door. Not a knock, several loud, violent bangs. After looking through the peephole, she saw me, but there was something off. She says that I was wearing my army uniform and it looked like me, but I had this very angry, aggravated look on my face. She opened the door wondering why I was home so early and apparently without saying a word, I angrily blew past her, shoulder checking her into the wall and quickly walked down the hall, taking a left into the bedroom, slamming the door behind me so hard that the whole place shook. She was, of course, very alarmed and confused about why I was home so early and in such an agitated state. I mean, that is so out of character for me. I'm not a violent guy at all. On top of that, if something did happen to set me off, she would have been the first to hear about it. So she's walking behind me, trying to get some information out of me. She opens the bedroom door behind me and sees the closet door slam shut. So she proceeds to run over to see what I was doing in her friend's closet and claims that when she opened the door, it was completely empty. That's when she had a panic attack and called me. Imagine my shock and confusion hearing that story, knowing that I was well over 100 miles away at the time. She finally believed me after I sent her a photo with my current GPS location, which only served to freak her out more. I thought that there must be some kind of rational explanation for what she saw. I'll be honest and save it, she did smoke a little weed here and there, but at the time I know she was sober and it doesn't usually cause stuff like that. She didn't mess around with hard drugs or drink and she had no mental illnesses of any kind. Over the years since that happened, I came to learn about doppelgangers. I don't know what they mean, what they represent or why they come around. All I know is that they're creepy as shit and a girl I dated for several years came face to face with mine and it put the fear of God into the poor girl. Take this story for what you will and I honestly don't care if you believe it or not. I just wanted to get it off my chest. So I was talking to my buddy today and he told me a story that happened to him around September of last year. He was driving around 9.30 to 10 o'clock at night on a kind of secluded road in a suburb of the city of Huntsville. There are woods on both sides of this road. As he was driving, he thinks he sees a deer heading toward him. As he sees it more clearly, it turns out that this deer is on two legs, has antlers, and is running toward him. He said that it was mostly dark in color and was running pretty fast from the side so he slammed on his brakes to try to avoid it. As soon as it got close to his headlights, it disappeared. Your guess as to what happened is as good as mine. My theory was that it jumped over the car while my buddy was swerving to avoid it. He said he still has nightmares about it and that he also isn't a big ghost person, but whatever it was, he swears he's never been that afraid. I have no idea what this could be. I don't know any of the legends around North Alabama that match his description. We've started to refer to it as Antler Man, but beyond that, we have no idea. I have no history of sleepwalking or sleep paralysis. I do, however, have a history of seeing strange objects in the sky, usually near my home. This goes back to my childhood. It's a deep hole to dive into. So I'm just going to share my most recent experience. This occurred in 2017. I live in Northwest Alabama surrounded by fields and wooded forests. I went to bed rather late on this particular night. If I recall, it was about one o'clock in the morning. My wife was still watching a TV show in another room. A few moments after lying down, 
I began to see a red light illuminating my bedroom window. I stared at it, trying to think of what it could be. Next, I heard a sound in what I thought was the kitchen. It sounded like a pan hitting the floor and wobbling on its edge. The strange thing was, the sound would not stop. Aggravated by this noise, I started to go investigate. I assumed that my wife was struggling with something in the kitchen. I raised up, and then immediately I was lifted above the bed. I can't recall how high above the bed I was, but I can vividly remember the pain I was in. My back was arched in a very painful way. I was attempting to scream for my wife, but I had no voice. I don't know how long it lasted, but I was eventually back on my bed, still in pain. When approaching my wife, I was disoriented. I struggled to walk and maintain my balance. Given my childhood, I immediately thought, they found me. It had been years since anything had happened. Obviously, I'm scared that it will happen again. That was five years ago, so I'm terrified that it's coming soon. I'm not really sure what to do about it. It took moving 1,000 miles away to finally feel comfortable enough to tell you this story. This happened just before my senior year of high school, over a period of three weeks in the summer. I was 17 years old, drug-free and sober. At the most, I took Advil for headaches every now and again. I just want to assure you, I was not on any mind-altering substances or long-term medication that could affect my cognitive ability. During the summer, my curfew was 11 p.m., and this occurred while driving home from my boyfriend's house at the time, which took roughly 15 minutes, so let's say about 10.45 at night. I was full of energy at this age, and a night owl, so I was not even remotely tired. In fact, I was hyped up with the warm summer nighttime breeze, car windows down, singing along to the radio. I took a shortcut through the back roads to avoid going into the tiny city with its cops. They could be jerks. Also, one of the roads I took was super straight and flat, so I could really speed and that feels great when you're a teenager. But right before that road, I had to take two very close turns to get onto it. First, I would take a right turn, which was more than 90 degrees, almost back the way I had come from. Then, in exactly a half a mile, I would turn left onto the long, straight road, where I could really put the gas pedal down. Since it was only half a mile, I normally didn't speed up that much, because the small stretch of road was more like packed gravel, and it would have been a waste as I would have just had to slow down again to turn left onto the much better road where I could let loose. The tiny property on the inside corner of the left turn is where this all went down. A house had recently been built there, two stories with a detached garage, and it seemed odd how quickly it had been erected. We built our family house and it took us a year to finish it. I'll start at the beginning because I believe that this is all related. Week one. I am positively jamming to my music. The wind whipping through my car feels great and I'm relaxed in my very familiar drive home. I slow down to make my right turn onto the rough rural road, just be bopping along when my lights illuminate something stunning sitting on the corner of the road. It's a wolf. A real wolf. A solid white real wolf. I know the difference in my dog breeds and a wolf. I love watching dog competitions, wildlife documentaries, and I've even met a quarter wolf in person. 
they look different from domestic dogs. This was a wolf, and it was amazing and just blowing my mind. I slow down even more while I turn down my music. I'm getting close to it. And I notice that it's not minding me at all. It's sitting perfectly still on the corner of the road, staring at the house. Almost unblinking, its ears didn't even flick toward me. All its attention was focused on this house. I was so close I could have reached out my window and brushed the fur on the back of its head. I was smiling and amazed, but my mind was already churning. It made no sense for a wolf to behave like that, even less for there to be a white wolf in rural North Alabama in the summer. I came to a complete stop behind it, marveling at its fur and presence. I felt euphoric like I had seen something rare and blessed. My mind made a jump to the local Native American stories of animal spirit guardians, and I started to wonder. I couldn't stay though. Mom would never believe me if I told her I was late because of a spirit wolf. With a sigh, I said goodbye to the wolf and drove home in a better mood than ever. I had gotten to see something special and it filled me with emotions of joy and peace. Week two, I was driving home again, and I had been taking extra care to keep an eye out for my wolf buddy, hoping to see him again around that area. So I drove extra slowly with my window down and my radio off. That was a horrible mistake. I should have realized what the presence of a guardian meant. It meant danger. Alas, I was on the short road approaching the new little house. Then I saw the, the thing that to this very day makes me question my sanity, my reality, and the possibility of eldritch terrors as Lovecraft described. It was crouched right before their mailbox, its limbs folded and pulled in tight with its hunched posture, yet its head was still taller than the box. It was mottled green and black with undertones of blue, and it looked wet and slimy all over. Its head was elongated, allowing for an extended maw full of razor sharp teeth. The upper half of its body looked emaciated with barely more than frog-like thin skin pulled over angular long bones ropey muscles to hold it upright. And at the end of its grossly stretched arms were equally terrible long fingers. While its legs had bulk to them and looked equipped for running with the back facing knees for sprinting and tipped in raptor-like curved claws, it also looked emaciated. It looked tall, maybe seven feet or more, just folded up into this predator's posture waiting for prey. Then there were its eyes, solid black and sunken. I still want to vomit thinking about its eyes looking at me. I knew it was going to happen. I knew that it was going to look at me. It was going to see me and there was nothing I could do to avoid it. Panic and a terror unique to this alien thing swallowed me instantly feeling like I was tilting off the world. The world that I had always known and into an abyss where monsters like this exist. I couldn't breathe, but I had to get my window up. I had to get my window up or I would be ripped by those teeth and torn with those claws. Blood would adorn the cabin of my car and I would become an unsolved mystery. I knew it in the core of my being. I had a manual crank window. Why, you might ask? Because I was scared of crashing into water and not being able to get out of my car. But at that moment, I realized that there were far worse things in the world than crashing into water. Its head was turning toward me, and I had to let off the gas, but I was still getting closer to it. It made me want to scream, but I just knew I had to get that window up first. I was cranking it as hard as I could. I started to cry, 
as I finally got the window closed. And then I put my gas pedal to the floor, gravel road be damned. I thought to myself, I must not look at it as I pass. I must not look at it or make any direct eye contact. I just shouldn't. It's not good to connect with these things. I had already seen too much. My tires had found grip and I started to launch forward, passing it. In my peripheral vision, I could see it starting to unfold its limbs and it sent a terrible chill down my spine. I'm screwed, I'm really screwed. I was mumbling through my tears as I slid around the turn, fishtailing for a moment before I rocketed down the road. I felt sick, my heart was hammering, I had snot and tears rolling down my face and my hands were shaking. I glanced in my rear view mirror and could only see the darkness as there were no street lamps out there. I used a trick that I had learned before to tap my brakes softly enough that the light came on, but not so hard that I actually slowed down. It's a way to see behind you in the dark. Red lit up the dust that was billowing my way, but amidst the swirling chaos, I thought I saw a darker shadow than the rest, a tall, thin shadow. I had had enough and decided that I was going to drive straight to the lighted roads and not let off the gas again the rest of the way. No more looking back. I was going to drive 109 miles per hour, which is fast as I can go before my governor kicks in. I even ran a stop sign at the end of the road because I was not going to get caught by this thing if I could help it. I took a ride onto the highway and flew home. I might have even been relieved to get pulled over, but I did not. When I got home, nobody was awake. I was pretty trusted to come home on time. So I called my boyfriend and cried to him for a long time before I was able to explain it. He was dismissive and thought that I was pulling a joke on him. And when he realized I wasn't, he thought that I was crazy or seeing things. There are many reasons we didn't stay together, but his insensitivity contributed. Week three. I absolutely refused to take my shortcut anymore. For that reason, I would have had to leave my boyfriend's house a little early, and he'd been making fun of me about it all week. One of the days that we went to a park to walk around, he decided that on the way back, he wanted to drive by that house where I'd seen the thing. I was hysterical, begging him not to drive there, but he would not be dissuaded. So as we got closer, and I realized I couldn't stop him, I leaned my passenger side seat all the way back and pulled myself down, cowering in panic. I hid below the window and covered my eyes while panting heavily, reliving the traumatic night. At one point he stopped the car and said, you have to see this. I said, no and resisted him pulling at my arm. No, you really have to see this, look, he said in a changed tone of astonishment. Tears in my eyes, I uncurled and slowly peeked over the rim of the window. The house was gone, burnt clear down to the foundation with only a handful of framing beams still standing. The ground around the house was blackened in a perfect large circle. My boyfriend started to get out of the car. I shouted, no, no, let's get out of here. I grabbed for his arm, but he easily avoided me and got out. He walked around the ashy piles of the ruins for a bit, using a stick to poke at this and that. When he finally came back, he had an intense look of thinking on his face. There was no evidence of any personal belongings, he said. No furniture, no power wiring, no interior walls. It doesn't seem like other burnt houses. Something's weird. When we got to his house, he searched for news articles about any house fires in the area. There weren't any. 
He called the closest fire station and was quickly brushed off by the person that answered, as they didn't know about a fire there and didn't have time to find out before quickly hanging up on him. I never wanted to see that place again. I went out of my way to avoid the roads in that area. Talking about it still makes my chest tighten. It makes my skin crawl and my eyes water. My brain still has trouble because I know I saw it. A thing that's nothing like any creature known to humans. But I saw it. But still, the other part of me says it can't exist. If you've heard of something that matches this description, let me know. I'd love to find some answers. This all happened near Moulton, Alabama, so if you live in the area and you know what this thing might be, I'd love to hear about it. My mom and stepdad were on their way back home from Texas to South Carolina. My stepdad's mother had passed away. They made it to Texas in time to say their goodbyes, though. My stepdad, a pastor, conducted the funeral. It was a long trip, emotionally draining, but my folks were glad that they were able to see her before she passed. They stopped at a Hampton Inn and Suites in Walden or Walton, Alabama. I can't remember which. It was room 325. My parents had been bickering in their exhaustion, and they were more than ready to call it a night. My mom, who is visually impaired, laid down in bed and then felt a kiss on her left cheek. She figured it was my stepdad and smiled. My stepdad turned off the light, snuggled into bed, and starts to feel pressure on his legs. This sensation went on for several minutes before he sat up and turned the light on. Initially, he thought some kind of critter might have been in the bed. He's sitting up watching and waiting for the pressure to begin again, but it never does. I think it could have been his mom, but who knows. My parents are in their 70s and pretty religious. They rarely ever talked about ghosts or anything paranormal. So hearing this story from them was really surprising. What ended up being even creepier is that my stepdad had not kissed my mom on her cheek that night. They still don't know what did. This story was told to me by my grandfather and told to him by his friend while he served in the Vietnam War. This is going to be told from the point of view of my grandfather's friend. Before I was drafted, I was working on a farm in Alabama. All of my life I've been working on a farm with family and friends. We never had much money, so about 20 of us had to live in an old plantation house. On the property, there was an old barn that we kept the workhorses, one mule, and a few hogs in. Next to the woods, there were some old houses that used to be slave houses that some of our friends lived in. Every morning, as the sun rose, we rose. For breakfast, we ate whatever was for dinner the night before. We didn't have time to sit and wait for food to be cooked. Us kids had to work with the women, so, we mostly just picked whatever was being harvested that year. Basically, all I'm telling you is that it was hard work. We always had strange things happening to us. We were pretty much in the middle of nowhere, and the only time we ever saw new faces were when we went to town in our wagon to sell our vegetables. We couldn't just call 911 because we didn't have a single telephone on our property. We didn't even have lights. We used candles and lanterns. The little bit of money we did have would not pay for electricity. One winter night, we were all settled down after a day of harvesting hay. 
the men were sitting around the fireplace, smoking pipes, chewing tobacco, and talking. The women were either talking to each other or reading some of the magazines that we had brought from town. The other children and I were laying in our beds, whispering to each other, playing little games while trying not to be heard by the adults downstairs. At about this time of night, one of the men had walked outside to the outhouse, which was behind the main house, next to the forest. As he was reaching it, he heard an owl hooting from the trees. He didn't think that was too weird. Owls were common. But the thing that made him stop walking was how the owl hoot changed to a coyote howl mid-sound. After that, it became a donkey braying. And after that, it was just a high-pitched whistle. The man yelled into the woods, thinking and hoping that it was just somebody playing a trick. He walked back to the main house and peed beside the porch, even though the women told him not to do that. At that moment, he didn't care about what they said. He just did not want to be in that outhouse. About a half hour later, the dog started barking. The men shrugged it off, thinking that it was just barking at a deer or something. But the barking got worse, almost sounded like the dog was barking at an intruder. And then, just as suddenly as the dog started barking, it stopped. The men knew something was up, and the women knew too. So a few of the men went outside to check on the dog. When they found the dog behind the barn, it was in a gruesome state. Suffice it to say, they knew that a coyote or a bobcat or any of the animals around there could not have done this. One of the men picked up the corpse of the dog and they all walked back into the main house to get a rifle and to bury the dog. As they were burying the dog, the horses inside the barn started raising hell. The men knew whatever it was that killed the dog was now trying to do the same to the horses. So they ran to the barn and opened the door. They calmed the horses and searched the barn for the animal. As they were searching, one of the men pointed out that all of the horses' tails were braided. At about that time, they heard footsteps up in the hayloft. Two of the men rushed to climb the ladder, but when they got to the top, they found no one. Everyone knew what had visited the farm that night. They called it a witch. Whatever creature it was, it was known to braid the tails of horses, and it's known for them to make weird sounds to draw in their prey. It's a story that I'll never forget, and something that always makes my skin crawl when I think of it. As I write this, I'm a 41-year-old man, married with four children, but my story is from when I was eight years old. It was so vivid and real that I still feel like it was yesterday. This is my paranormal experience with something that I call the Demon Lady. This story really is about hearing if others have had a similar experience or if someone has some insight. Here is some of the backstory of my life leading up to the demon lady. My parents got divorced when I was eight years old. I originally went to go live with my mom, my older brother, and my mom's boyfriend at the time. Everything appeared to be normal in our house. My brother was a bad seed, and his story could be a whole other post. But while living in this new house that we all moved into, I remember finding a book about how to perform black magic. I was fairly certain that it was my mother's book, and truthfully, being eight years old, I had no idea what I was looking at. It was soon after this time that I went to go live with my dad. One weekend, when I was allowed to see my dad, my mom told me to pack up all my stuff. 
I was under the impression that this was just another weekend trip and nothing more. But it turned out that my mom, brother, and boyfriend were all moving to Colorado this weekend while I was at my dad's house. I didn't know any of this for three years. So I went to my dad's house thinking I was going to be there for the weekend and didn't hear from my mother for three years. Again, another story for another day. So now I'm living with my dad and he's in this small apartment. He decides to move into a house to give us more room. We moved to a house on Sullivan Road in Northwest Huntsville, Alabama. The moment we moved into this house, I only had one word to describe how I felt living there. Dread. Everything about being in that house gave me a feeling of dread. I was a latchkey kid growing up since my dad worked all day, and I remember walking home from school just dreading going home. I also remember that as I was about to put the house key into the lock, I always checked the door. By checking the door, I mean that I was checking for scratch marks, as if something was trying to claw its way in, or I would check to see if the door had been broken into. I just always had this feeling that something was waiting for me on the other side. Once inside, I would run into every room except one and turn on all the lights. The one room light that I did not turn on was my own. I lived in this house for six months and not once did I ever sleep in my own room. I had up until this point never had a problem sleeping by myself, but now I always slept in my dad's room. As a matter of fact, I was so scared to go into my room that I made my dad go in and pick out my clothes for me. A complete and total feeling of dread came over me. There actually was one other place though that I never went as well, and that was the backyard. I hated it in the backyard. I don't know what it was, but it just always felt off. It felt darker. One day after school, I came home and I did what I normally do. I made a snack, watched some TV, and waited until my dad came home. Today was different though. I'm not really sure why, but I decided that I wanted to go into my room and jump on the bed. I don't recall what I was feeling before entering my room, but I do remember being in there jumping on the bed. Everything was fine until I looked out of my bedroom door through an open hallway and into another room. That was the first time that I saw the demon lady. She was floating in the open doorway of the other room. Her skin from head to fingertips was completely pale in color, almost gray. Her hair was long and looked like it had never been combed. I remember her hands because they seemed tense, like when you're trying to palm a basketball, but there was no ball there. I also remember that her fingernails were black. Lastly, her eyes were black, but it felt like I knew she was staring at me. Her mouth was just there on her face. There was no menacing smile, no expression at all. So there she was. I was staring at her and she was staring at me. I was terrified, beyond terrified. I ran out of the room as fast as I could, right past the demon lady and onto my front porch. I sat out there for the next several hours waiting for my dad to get home. For some reason, I never told my dad what I saw. I'm not really sure why. Maybe because I didn't know what I saw. After seeing the demon lady, things got worse for me at the house. I ended up not sleeping well. I missed over 20 days of school for half a semester because I was so terrified to be away from my dad. I was getting to be too much for my dad to handle. He decided to send me to my grandparents in Arkansas to live for a while. I'm sure he just thought I was a kid struggling with a parent's divorce and my mother leaving my life. I was packing up to move to Arkansas, but before I left, I did see the demon lady one last time. It was in our garage. I was in there hanging out, doing whatever kids do. 
There were two doors to the garage, one from the kitchen and one door to the backyard from the garage. I remember being in the garage and that feeling of dread coming over me. I turned toward the door from the kitchen and there she stood, the same as before, same hair, gray skin, and those piercing black eyes. I ran to the backyard as fast as I could. I mean, yeah, I hated the backyard, but I couldn't get out of there fast enough. So I went around to the front porch again and waited for my dad. That was the last time that I ever saw her in that house. I moved to Arkansas and never saw her once while I was there. It was like she'd never been a part of my life. Things all seemed to be normal. I slept in my own room, my grades improved, I played baseball, and girls liked me. Even more awesome was that my dad moved from Alabama to Arkansas to be with me. Things were going great for us, but my dad ended up getting a job in Alabama again, so we were going to move back. Still, at this point, I had never told him about what I saw in the house. Everything started out normal, but eventually, I started seeing the demon lady in my dreams. I would wake up completely terrified, expecting to see her standing at the door. On another occasion, I remember experiencing a form of sleep paralysis twice, with the demon lady being present. In these instances, I was on my stomach, my head to the side. Above me was the demon lady, hovering. She was so close that her hair was gently grazing my face. This was the most terrified I've ever been in my whole life. I couldn't move, and I felt trapped. All I remember is that eventually it was over. Ultimately what happened is that I started to go to church when I was 11. I would mention the demon lady to a youth pastor from time to time. I don't think he knew it was such a serious thing for me in my life. But who really would, though, I guess? One time he joked that the demon lady was standing behind me, and my first reaction was to cower in terror. It was at that moment that he knew that I was serious. He ended up praying for me, and that this demon would leave me alone. Truthfully, it seemed to work. I've never had another issue with her. But regardless of the reason, I'm just glad it's over. Still, though, all these years later, she still haunts me in a way. Because I will never, ever forget that experience. There's a town in Alabama called Helena. The amount of paranormal activity that goes on in this town is frightening. I used to live there, and my house, specifically, was the house that many of the townspeople knew about or had heard about. The history of the town is what makes it so beyond haunted. There were two F5 tornadoes that tore into the entire area and leveled all the buildings plus several trains that derailed and spilled several tons of deadly chemicals. Not to mention the fact that the whole town is built on three ancient burial grounds and four desecrated graveyards. My house was built on what was the rusting place of a chief of some kind, and my house was insanely active. When I lived in that house, I was pushed down the stairs. I had chairs moved in front of me while I was walking knives thrown at me. I was watched while I slept. I heard my name called, screamed, whispered, even written in the steam on the mirror in the bathroom. Yet all of that failed to scare me as much as three different instances did. Number one, the third year I was there, it was Christmas day. My mother and I were sitting on the couch watching a movie. I had just gotten the movie as a present. We both heard the sound of metal being dragged. Immediately, both of us looked toward the dining room, as we had tile floors and iron dining chairs. We could easily see the entire dining room from the couch. 
And after what felt like an hour of waiting, but was probably only moments, we watched a dining room chair move a good five feet as though it had been shoved with extreme aggression. Number two, I had just gotten home from school and all I wanted to do was grab a snack and relax a bit in front of the television. So I grabbed my snack, closed the cabinet and went to sit down. A few seconds later, I started to smell rotten meat. I turned off the television and just then I heard a loud explosion from the kitchen and the sound of things falling on the floor. I jumped up and ran in there Literally every door, cabinet, and drawer were wide open, and all of the knives from the silverware drawer were sticking into the ceiling. Three. The last one is the one that scared me the most. It was about three in the morning when something or someone woke me up. I remember seeing this puff of smoke beside my bedroom door that kept getting bigger and bigger. I remember staring at this smoke puff and just sitting in awe. Suddenly it started to change and an arm began to reach out of it. At that point, I just wanted to get out of there, but this thing was blocking the door. So I just watched as another arm reached out, followed by a head, a neck, and a torso. I couldn't see any identifying features, except the eyes. They were just large balls of glowing red, and I knew that they were fixed on me. Even now, I keep reliving those days. It always felt like I was supposed to understand something, like there was some message I was supposed to be figuring out, but I just never could. I know that this story is a little vague, but it happened about a year and a half ago and I haven't been able to stop thinking about it. I live in Alabama. Behind my house is a hill sloping downward and then up again. It's covered in woods for several acres. One day I heard a crunching sound outside, about 20 yards away from the back porch. I immediately went out and looked it was in the middle of the day, and I saw three almost humanoid figures jumping up the far side of the hill. When I say jumping, they looked exactly like how deer look when they're kind of bounding up hills, but they were definitely not deer. They were all on two legs, going completely vertically up the hill. I couldn't make out any other kind of defining features other than that they were kind of tan and white in color. I ran inside to get my wife, but of course they were gone by the time we got back out there. I haven't seen them since, but I do regularly hear strange sounds outside at night. And we've also had several yard signs and decorations that have ended up being inexplicably broken. I know the woods behind my house, I know what they look like, I know what they sound like, and this has just not been normal. Last October, my family and I were all together at my grandmother's house in Alabama. Since my mom and I live in Florida, visiting Alabama is the only time that our whole family can be together. My grandmother's house is pretty small, but because we only visit for about a week, our immediate family members just stay the night. In my immediate family, there's my grandmother, grandfather, oldest aunt, my mom, my uncle, and my youngest aunt. Then it's me, my two cousins, whose mom is my oldest aunt, and then my uncle's son. One night, it was about three o'clock in the morning. 
My mom, my uncle, my older aunt and I were all asleep in the living room. My youngest aunt had just come in from work. She works a night shift and got in the shower. Now everybody is completely knocked out. All of a sudden, I hear this sound, like three or four knocks. It sounds like it's coming from my head, but also outside of my body. It's hard to explain, and I can't possibly explain to you how loud the knocks were, but it was enough to wake me up out of my sleep, and I can usually sleep through a tornado. As I woke, all three of my other family members in the room were waking up too. My uncle and I looked to the door, and my mom and aunt looked at the dining room. We had all heard these knocks, but we all heard them in different places. We have motion sensor lights all around the house, but none of them were on. I wasn't really scared, but I was definitely disturbed, and I asked my family members what they thought it was. We are a very religious family, so we had the same thoughts, but I guess to keep from getting scared, we just played it off. The next day, I asked my aunt, who had been in the shower when we heard the knocks, if she had heard them too, and she said she did. She thought that she was just hearing things, but she explained to me how loud it was to her while she was in the shower. Fast forward to March of 2016. My granddad had a bad fall off the front porch, and it caused him to have severe brain damage, and eventually after a surgery, end up in a coma that he never woke up from. He passed away on March 15th. That was five months after we heard the knocks. Now, I don't know if that had anything to do with the knocks, but that night definitely disturbed me. Sometimes, even to this day, I wonder if death was knocking. I live in a rural section of a small town in Alabama, so I'm not kidding when I say that I'm only about 30 feet from the woods on three sides of my house. On the side where my bedroom is, there's a clearing for our side yard and septic tank system. The grass, of course, is always bright green here thanks to the tank, but I digress. I was looking for my wallet so that I would be ready for work today. I normally set it on my windowsill or my dresser. So when I went to my window, it was around dusk, still light enough to see. I looked out it as I usually do when I open my curtains and something looked back at me. It wasn't tall like these creatures people say that they see. This one was two feet tall maybe, but I can still see it. It was on four legs, maybe three feet long. But its legs, ugh, its legs were twisted all wrong and gnarled. Its eyes seemed to glow white, and the thing stared right back at me as I stared at it. And then, it slowly smiled. Despite only happening last night, I can't remember its face or its head shape. But when it smiled, it drooled. That I remembered. I just came back from going out to see if it left footprints. It didn't, but the grass where the spit touched is dead. It just died overnight, and everything else around it is bright green. I have no idea what I just saw. This is a story about ghost hunting, although I'm not sure I'm so much of a hunter as I am a magnet. A few years back, my quasi-sometimes boyfriend and I were asked to go ghost hunting by a group of his friends in a really old cemetery here in Alabama. With that being said, I live near one and I frequent it often, so I'm used to the things that happen. I just roll with it, unless it gets bad. 
There were seven of us on a new moon who rode out to the cemetery. We all got out, and everybody but me had a flashlight. I generally find I don't need one for such adventures. I just tend to go where my feet lead me. So five of the seven of them were being terribly disrespectful, yelling, screaming, cursing the powers that be, trying to get a showing. Well, you just do not do that. You would be unappreciative of somebody yelling in your home. Plus, it puts out so much negative energy. One can certainly see why the things that appear might do so. The boyfriend had extinguished his flashlight at my request, because I can't see properly if one is near me. It blinds me. He goes to my left, and I quickly go up a bit and to the right. His friends were deeper in than we were, but they were still hooping and hollering like fools. I stopped very suddenly, took one step forward, and then a voice whispered, Mama, I'm scared. The boyfriend looks over at me and I said, you heard it, right? He nods. I said, I'm standing next to a two-year-old baby girl's marker. He told me, of course, that there was no way. I had no light. I was barefoot, etc. About that time, his friends got quiet because the wind had really come up. The boyfriend says, she has something over here. Y'all may want to confirm it with your lights. His was still off. I told the little one that it was okay and she needed to stay here with her mama as she couldn't go home with me. His friends were hearing me talk and I think they thought I was full of crap until one of them turned on their light. Sure enough, I was standing at her headstone. Her mother was in the ground next to her. I've never seen five people move so fast to get out of a place. We had a good chuckle out of that because he had seen my power ability before and knew it to be true. He even tried to warn them that I wasn't a joke. They never asked us to go hunting with them again. Can't imagine why. Let me start off by saying that Alabama is a weird and wonderful place. Sure, we have a bit of a vibe going on, but the state is actually very beautiful and nice to live in. The state is no stranger to paranormal events, especially in the UFO and alien category. An example of this is the Falkville Metal Man. Interesting story there. Anyway, this experience of mine comes from my sophomore year of high school. At the time, movies like Guardians of the Galaxy and Interstellar sort of put my interest into space. I would periodically lay out in my backyard, listening to music, gazing at the stars, just sitting there and imagining what goes on up there. I found it relaxing. Occasionally, I would see a moving star, but I would always attribute those to planes. Except, this one particular star was far off from the plane. I saw a star, and it was moving, of course, and I, for some reason, just kept my eyes on it. It was going west, when all of a sudden, it instantly changed directions at a 90-degree angle and started going south. I was confused, so I kept staring at it. A few seconds later, it changed directions instantly again, this time going west again. Only after it changed course, it revealed itself to not be a star. Something appeared behind the star. It was oval-shaped, glowing orange, and was absolutely massive. It made no noise and started glowing extremely bright. I sat there in disbelief and kept my gaze on it. It looked like, upon further examination, that the star was the front of this craft. It silently moved across the sky over my house, and then suddenly it just disappeared. The star was there, and still moving. I was sitting there intrigued, hoping that the craft would glow again, but the star soon faded into the night sky. 
I ran inside and asked my family if they saw anything. Assuming that they would have, considering the thing in the sky was glowing extremely brightly. However, none of them saw anything. I wrote this experience down in my journal, which I had used to record all sorts of weird paranormal events that I either researched or experienced. What makes this story even weirder is that an hour later, military aircraft were out all over the sky. It's pretty normal to see one airplane fly over the house, but there were at least a dozen of them, like they were scanning. I've never told anybody what happened. My friends wouldn't believe me anyway, considering that I come from a more conservative environment where most people here would just scoff at the very idea of life elsewhere in the universe besides here on Earth. I still don't know if what I saw that night was actually a UFO, but from the vivid details I remember of it, whatever it was, was not made by humans. This story happened in southern Alabama, where I live. I was taken to a park last night, and honestly, I thought it was a joke. I was informed that there was a witch who haunts the grounds. Cute, let's go. So we get there, and the vibes are already making me uncomfortable. I hop out of my friend's car, and immediately, I start walking toward the woods. It's probably about 100 feet away from the car. There's a very large pavilion type of thing closer to the trees. And for some reason I can't explain, I just kept walking. I wasn't even scared, even though my friend kept saying she was freaked out and that we were going a bit too far. As I get closer, I hear my friend say to me, stop walking, I don't like getting close to the woods. I hadn't realized how far I had already walked. I was so compelled to get close to those woods, and if my friend hadn't spoken up, I would have kept going. When I heard her voice, I turned around to face her, my back now facing the trees. I nodded, and we decided to walk back to the car. She was super uncomfortable at this point, and I could tell she just wanted to leave. I take a few steps, and as I'm going back to the vehicle, I heard something. I thought it might have been a bunny or a squirrel. Who knows? But then there's someone standing at the edge of the woods. A silhouette. But it's clearly a person's shape. The hands are slightly moving. And I turn back around and book it. I'm not scared at this point. I'm just uneasy and I want to get back to the car as fast as possible. I finally make it back and turn around to see if it's still there. It's now about 20 feet away from me, but it seems to have gotten about two feet shorter. I think it's the same entity, but unlike most sightings, this thing just stood there the entire time until we finally drove off. It was about four feet tall and it was swaying. It just never stopped swaying. I stared at it for a good bit and I asked my friend if she could see it. She couldn't. I remembered that she was wearing a protection necklace and I thought maybe that's why she couldn't see it. Or maybe I'm just nuts. I tell her to get in the car and crank it, so we do. And it's still there, just swaying away. My chest started to hurt a bit. I think I was having a little bit of anxiety or something. But then I started hearing words in my head that were not mine. I can't explain it, but something was speaking in my head. Where are you going? Where are you going? It just kept going on like that. Where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? At this point, I literally slapped myself in the head and yelled, shut up. My friend asked me to describe it, and I didn't want to freak her out or seem crazy. We get away from the place, but there's still this steady hum in my head for like 30 seconds. I turn the radio on, it goes away, and we change the subject. 
I don't really know what this thing wanted, or what it was. It apparently couldn't go beyond the woods, or the tree line. I don't know what it was, but all I know is that I won't be going back to that park ever again. I should preface this by saying that I was the least imaginative kid in the world. I hated playing with dolls or pretend games because I couldn't see anything other than what was actually right in front of me. I've also never had an imaginary friend, despite being one of the shyest kids you've ever seen. My mom's parents used to live in a small town in Alabama, a town that we lived in twice. We're a military family, so we moved a lot. So it wasn't out of the ordinary to sleep there whenever we visited. My grandparents only had two rooms for guests to sleep in. One was actually a screened in porch out back that they had put carpeting, a bed and a TV in. The other was a room at the front of the house facing the street. Typically, my two older brothers would take the back room and my mom and I would take the front. The front room was really small and had a full bed, two chairs and a dresser. The bed and one of the chairs were on either side of a window that showed the front yard and the street beyond. The other chair and the dresser were on opposite walls next to the door. On one of our visits, all four of us came and we took our usual sleeping arrangements. I was very young at the time, probably four or five, so my mom and I slept in the full bed together. I was sleeping between the wall and her, and she took the edge. Now, I've been a night owl all my life, and I've never fallen asleep easily, and that night was no different. I was wide awake, tossing and turning, when a car drove by and the lights came through the window. I was facing the chairs, and when the headlights hit the chair nearest to the dresser, I saw a creature sort of shift up and turn to look at me. I can only describe this thing as the offspring of Gollum and a gargoyle. It was small, about the size of a medium-sized dog, but it was squatting on the chair, so it could have been bigger. Its arms were pulled into its body, like you would imagine a Disney witch rubbing her hands together to make an evil plan. It said something to me, but it's been over a decade and a half, so I can't remember. I do remember that it spoke in English. Obviously, I was terrified. I must have blinked, because in an instant, it disappeared. I didn't sleep well the rest of the night. I told my mom about it the next day, but she brushed it off, saying that I just must have been tired and I just saw the print of the chair move when the headlights went by. I wish I could say that that's what it was, but no. Whatever I saw had depth and an entirely different skin color from the chair. I slept in that room maybe three times after that over the course of 10 years until my grandma sold it. And every time I would turn the chairs around to face the corners. Now, I don't feel too strongly one way or the other about the paranormal. I think ghosts and demons and whatever could be real, but that doesn't mean that they 100% are. But I have absolutely no explanation for what this thing was. All I know is that I can remember it to this day, something that I wouldn't be able to do if I had just imagined it. If anyone has any idea what this thing could have been, I would love to hear. To preface this entire post and give complete transparency, I've been a long time lurker of paranormal and ghost related subreddits and websites since I was a little kid with access to the internet. I have always been a believer in the paranormal. However, I have also been a very hard skeptic, 
as I have never dealt with anything paranormal in my entire life until this event. There's a ton of people on subreddits like these that conjure up BS stories to practice their writing, and it bugs me to no end that there are unfortunately no sure ways to tell what's real and what's somebody's fictional narrative writing anymore. It blurs the line between reality and fiction and with people's experiences like mine. With that said, this event messed me up and it still keeps me up at night to this day. I have nothing to gain from retelling this experience here. I was convinced by some of my closest friends to post my experience, even if this did happen a long time ago. This happened almost a year ago. My girlfriend and I visited her parents' house, which was her old home in Alabama, specifically Crenshaw County. For those that don't know, that's basically in the middle of nowhere, the boonies, the sticks. Being from a large city myself in Southern California, I'm completely out of my element. I've already visited her parents once before with her. She's always told me her house was haunted and that the woods were sketchy at night. But when I visited the first time with her, nothing happened whatsoever. So I chalked it up as some tall tale to creep me out, play with the city boy. That is until we visited her parents the second time. Her father works in Montgomery for the weekdays, so he's gone a lot. And her mother had to be in Atlanta for three days due to a job. We were home alone for those three days, unless you want to count her cats as well. The one-story house is in the middle of absolute nowhere, with the nearest house down the road from us aways. One of those nights around 12 a.m., I'm sitting in my bed with her, completely asleep. I'm scrolling through Facebook and Twitter when I began hearing what sounded like my girlfriend's voice coming from her. I turned to look at her to see if she's sleep talking, but nothing. She's quiet. I continue going through my notifications for a bit and I hear her again. This time though, it sounds like it's coming from outside behind the bedroom wall, toward the same direction as my girlfriend and much louder and echoey. I get up and I look around to see if any television is on or if any of the cats are making noises, even though the TVs aren't in the direction I heard the voice from, but nothing. The TVs are off and the cats are asleep or just quietly lazing around. I even checked her phone, which was on the nightstand to my right, just in case it was playing audio or something, but nothing. It was just charging. I go back to bed with her and continue going about my business, but this time I'm looking out for the voice. This time I hear it again, but much clearer and louder. It sounds exactly like my girlfriend's voice, and this time I knew for sure it was coming from outside. I know this because she's sleeping on my left, and toward my left is also the wall, on the other side of which is a clearing and then all dense woods. After this, I shift all of my focus and all of my attention to the loud voice, seeing if I hear it again. This is the part where I internally start saying, no, nah, I'm done. I'm not finding out what you are. I've seen way too many movies and YouTube videos, and I know that I'm not going out there to find out. I heard the voice one more time, yet this time it didn't sound closer, just a little farther which leads me to believe that it's something physically moving around the clearing bordering the woods. The scariest thing about the voice that got me freaked out though, it was still clear enough that I started making out human speech, but it was messed up. Like it was speaking in phrases using my girlfriend's voice, but none of the words made any sense. It's like it was trying to speak English, but it came out reversed or something. At that point, I did one final check around the house to see if all the doors were locked. My rational mind was thinking it was probably just a lost somebody in the woods. Definitely not a windigo or a skinwalker or whatever. I made sure the curtains were closed and I just went to bed. I told my girlfriend the very next morning and she seemed rightfully freaked out, but we ended up cracking jokes about it to cope. I posted this experience to Facebook about a week after, 
and a lot of my friends threw around thoughts that it could very well have been something paranormal. A friend of my girlfriend who studies cryptozoology asked me a ton of questions relating to the incident, and basically flat out said, yeah, that's a wendigo. Yet, I don't know how credible of an opinion that would be. I'm inching into believing it, because what I heard that night was exactly my girlfriend's voice. I swear I could make out my name in the garbled up speech that I was hearing, but I'm not too sure on that much, like it was trying to lure me into the woods. Whatever it was, it had my girlfriend's voice, pitch, tone, and patterns just right enough for me to listen, but not enough to get me out there with it. I haven't been back since, but we are planning to go back in October and to go to Disney World with her family. I'm just hoping that whatever it was, isn't there anymore. My husband's parents live in a tiny town in Alabama. They've lived there for a long time. We went to visit them a few years back and we were excited to get out of town for a bit, see some different scenery. His sister was graduating college and we were going to celebrate. She's also an avid ghost hunter and believer. So when I told her about some of my experiences, she was excited to take me to some of the haunted locations around town. Cemeteries, old abandoned houses, even a hell's gate which we didn't actually end up going to, as I told her I had a bad feeling about it and refused. We drove around almost all night, just looking at different locations and talking about the history of the town. A lot of residual energy and weird feelings were about as we went to the different places. We came to a cemetery in a new portion of town. Fancy houses surrounded it on three sides. On the third side was a small canyon area of land. Nothing really felt off. The cemetery was new and didn't have many headstones yet. It was fenced off with ornate wrought iron fencing. We didn't see anything lurking, no shadows darting from tree to tree or headstone to headstone. It was just there. After walking around to the open side where there were no houses, I asked his sister, let's call her Beth, how come there were no houses on this one side? She shrugged and said that they stopped building months ago, even though this was supposed to be a new subdivision. They had purchased all this land and probably needed to figure out a way to build it up, since it was very canyon-like. We decided to get a closer look at the canyon area, although we couldn't see much since it was dark and our only light came from the street lights. We had walked far enough to be outside of what they could illuminate. Far off in the distance, I saw what looked like a campfire. I pointed it out, but she couldn't see it. Neither could my husband. Beth began to have a sinking feeling, and before she could say anything, I started getting a massive headache, and I heard pounding like drums. I got flashes of images in my head, people dancing around a big fire. The night sky seemed blacker and darker than it had before. Beth grabbed my arm and said we needed to leave. My husband was already halfway to the car. As I turned my back to the canyon, it was almost like I had a twinge of fear run up my spine and a shiver. We ran back to the car. As we drove away, I could feel a black mass following our car as we drove the winding streets back to the main road. It felt big and foreboding, like it was flying behind us. I started to panic, and I felt my throat and chest tighten. Once we crossed the main road, it was almost like it couldn't follow us past that point, but I could feel it, watching us, as we continued back to his parents' house. I asked Beth if she had seen anything, but she refused to talk about it. None of us slept that night, and my headache didn't subside until morning. I did some research on the area the next day, and I found out that it had been home to the Chickasaw Indian tribe back in the day, likely still was in some ways. I have Blackfoot and Choctaw blood, 
and later thought that maybe, since I was a neighboring tribe, they didn't want me there. I still don't really know what happened, but we've never spoken about it since. Back when I was 18 or 19, I had decided to go into a church in Cherokee, Alabama with my once friend, we'll call him Joel, and his family. I had gone in and Joel and I were directed to the basement with all the other people under 20 to do something. I forgot what it was, but maybe five to seven minutes in that basement, I got the most blinding headache I've ever had and excused myself outside to get some air. I waited for everybody to get done, and then we headed back to where Joel and his parents lived. The whole ride, this headache did not go away. I stayed at their house maybe an hour or two while this headache just continued to get worse and worse, so I attempted to drive home to Crooked Oak. As I'm driving, the headache becomes all but blinding, and halfway home, in the night, on this dark road, I stop at this little tiny backwoods church. The pain was so immense that I couldn't focus on anything. At that point, I literally was wishing to be struck dead to escape this. I stumbled out of my Jeep and I landed on the first bit of grass I could find and I almost passed clean out. After a good stretch of time, once the pain had left me, I went to drag myself to the Jeep with my senses returned. And that's when I realized that I was laying on somebody's old grave. I have no idea why it helped, and I didn't do it intentionally, but there it is. To this day though, I refuse to go near that church. So this is a true story that happened to me, which I'm weary to share, as there have been many times where I've opened up only to be met with ridicule. But I hope you take this seriously, because I do. Back in 2008, my girlfriend and I decided to go to an abandoned mental asylum off of Highway 82 in Alabama called Old Bryce. It shut down a few years back due to malpractice, and some of the ghost legends, like the number two ghost, involve murder by staff at the facility. Essentially, this was a dumping ground for people that society didn't know what to do with. Thousands of people were sent there, and died there. The facility consisted of four buildings. Bryce, the residence hall, S.D. Allen, the medical facility, the crematorium, and the guard shack. I have seen two ghosts in the residence hall, the bigger of the two I'll share with you now. My second visit to Old Bryce was strange. It was my first time inside the building, and I came prepared. It was me, my girlfriend, and our friend Chris. I had a flashlight and a DVD camcorder. Through the main entrance is a staircase on the right, which zigzags up to the second floor complete with an anti-side fence at the top. Make a left, then another left, and then a quick right, and you're in the hall that led to the children's corridor. I had the flashlight in my left hand, and my camera in the right, scanning, trying to catch something. On the left at the entrance to that room, there was a bathroom with only a tub in it. I thought I saw something in the bathroom, and shined the light that way. Nothing. I moved the camera and light, thought I saw it again, and shined it back. Nothing. Our night continued and finished without incident. The next day I reviewed the footage. In that bathroom, I shined towards something I thought I saw, and I was right. When the light pans to the right, a bluish-white, illuminated little girl's face peers out from behind the door to follow the light. As the light shines back in her direction over the course of just two frames, she's behind the door halfway, and in the next frame, she's gone. 
My heart felt like ice water had run through it. I was in such shock. I proceeded to show everybody I knew. The girl's appearance was that of a younger one, maybe ten, hair parted in the middle, an unusually large forehead, and was deformed in some way. I made the mistake of leaving the camera at a friend's house overnight, who apparently was not my friend because he stole it. This is where it gets even weirder, though. Two and a half years later, I was living in a different city. One of the legends of old Bryce is that windows grow back, and if you do any damage to them, spirits will follow you home. I broke a window on accident. I was laying in bed one night at about 3 to 4 a.m. I was on the verge of sleep, aware of where I was, and very comfortable. Out of nowhere, this immobilizing, tingling sensation started at the tips of my toes. I was laying on my stomach with my arms under the pillow, completely helpless, as this sensation crept its way slowly up my legs, midsection, and eventually my entire body over the course of maybe 20 seconds. Once it covered me, I heard the whisper of a little girl directly in my ear say, I'm in your room. I cringed tightly, and for some reason I said out loud, I love you. The feeling stopped, and the whole incident left me on the verge of tears. It may or may not have been that little girl from the asylum, but according to legend, it makes sense. 